Welcome, race fans, to GeForce TV, Brighton Speedway, back half of Labor Day Classic Weekend. My name is Greg Kilman. With me, Adam Ross, down trackside, Clinton Jeffrey. As always, Adam, we've got uh, some great racing action on card here tonight. The Stingers are up first with their first qualifying heat of the evening. I should have the lineup because I just spent all sorts of time doing it. Megan Golden on the pole with Robert Jenner alongside. They take the first green flag of the evening. Megan Golden leads the way down through one and two. Robert Jenner with a run to the high side in that 79 to the inside. That's Gavin Rushlow making it three wide into turn three. Come down to complete the first lap of action here on GeForce TV. Glad you could join us for the back half of our double header weekend last night at Flamborough Speedway. Here we are tonight at Brighton as the Stingers underway and down the back stretch. Gavin Rushlow out in front over Megan Golden. And then you've got Robert Jenner back there in the third spot. A full card of action tonight, folks. Greg, what is it, five divisions or six of, of cars? It is endless. The practice sessions were lengthy. Well, the practice sessions were short, but there were so many cars, they did take a little while. Great to be here tonight at Brighton, Ontario. 80% chance of rain and not a cloud in the sky, Greg. No, a beautiful night for racing action here at Brighton, which we couldn't say in our earlier two attempts to get here with GeForce TV. And we are happy to be here as right now, it's all Gavin Rushlow out in front in the 17. Rushlow leading the way by about half a straightaway. Over Megan Golden in that 07. Golden working a higher groove on the racetrack. And we've got that. Singing in our ears here in this first qualifying heat. Greg, we are halfway through this first Stinger qualifying heat. One car off the track, Sean Gibson takes it pit side. As the battle right now for the second spot heating up as we've got right now the 0-7 of Megan Golden holding onto that position. But Robert Jenner looking to the inside down in corner number one. Another good battle on the track is the two of Frank Conlon. Giving it out with Ethan Dory in that number 14. Of course, as I say that, Dory pulls away by a few car lengths. But out in front, it continues to be Gavin Rushlow as the checkered flag flies on heat race number one. Golden comes home second, followed by Jenner, Dory, and Conlon. Then we've got Dawson Beaudry and the number seven of Josh Toon rounding out the field. So three heats in total tonight for the Stinger division. Also on the card tonight, we have the Comp Fours with a few mini stocks mixed in. Thunderstocks are on the card, as well as the late models. And then, of course, the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's and the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series all on the card here tonight. Canadian Modifieds get the night off as we get ready for the second qualifying heat of the night. We are missing some names on some of these drivers, Greg. We'll try to fill in some blanks, but we know the number 12 is Shane Vale. Shane going to start off in the pole position. Starting in the third spot as the inside row is out there, the 93 of Jordan Pickle. The outside of row number one is the 77 machine. We don't have a name on. The outside of row number two, that's Tom Cole in the number six. The 99 machine, another one that we have no name for. Alongside the 99 is the 10 of Michelle Cliveau. The 18 is Carter Rhodes, and rounding out the field is that 4A. So we'll do our best to fill in the blanks and get the names of the drivers that we're missing as the night goes on. But eight cars make the call for this qualifying heat number two for the Stinger division. Great crowd on hand again here tonight. I want to thank all those in attendance and those watching at home on GeForce TV. We apologize to those in the grandstands right now. We are working out some audio bugs. Green flag will fly this time out of turn number four. Shane Vale at a snail's pace through three and four, waiting for that green flag to wave. 
Bit of a ragged start, but we are underway with Vale out in front. Jordan Pickle right on his bumper. Moves to the outside. Pickle looking to the high side through turn number two. Will fall back in line on the back straightaway. It's Vale, your leader, working through three and four. Pickle looks down to the lower lane as Vale works it right out to the wall off of corner number four and down to complete lap number one. Well, when you pay to get in, Greg, you get to use the whole <laughs> racetrack, so why not? Pickle now draws up closer on the back bumper there. As they go into corner number three, good battle going on behind them. Pickle choosing to enter the car pretty sideways into the turn, but get a great run through the center. The 18 at Carter Road started deep in the field. He's working that high group, and he's looking to the outside of Pickle to take on that second spot. Side by side, Rhodes and Pickle as they work off a of corner number four with Vale holding on to the lead. Rhodes out to the wall and now gets a good run to the second spot. We'll make the charge for the top position. Riding that high side all the way to the front is Carter Rhodes after starting all the way back in the seventh spot in this qualifying heat. Looking to take the lead. Contact in turn number four. Give Rhodes the lead over Vale now and Pickle. No harm, no foul. I think that contact actually helped Shane Vale get through the fourth turn. Vale now under attack. From the 93 of Pickle, who's been hot on his heels that entire race, but out in front, it is Carter Rhodes pulling away as the white flag has been displayed. Checkers coming out, heat race number two. The win is going to go to Rhodes. Carter Sec Rhodes. Second place, will it be Pickle or Vale side by side? I believe it was Vale at this stripe by inches over Jordan Pickle. Tom Cole back there in the fifth spot. Again, the 99 in the fourth position. Again, missing a few names here. Heat race number three rolls onto the track now. Josh Whitney going to lead the way in the 67J. Chris Lamel in the 95 will line up second. Third, the 78 of Ethan Dory. Fourth, the 17E of Evan Minnie. Fifth will be 44 of Rayanne Beaudry. Sixth will be the 13 of William Vidito. Seventh will be Bailey Farrell in the number 11. And rounding out the field in the 27 is Kendall Hayes. Third and final heat comes to the green flag. Sixty-seven, Josh Whitney and Chris Lamely door to door down into corner number one. Side by side, they battle off a of turn two and down the back straightaway, still locked to get battle for the lead. Whitney drives it deep into the corner, but Lamley with a great run on the high side, and he'll pinch the race leader down to the inside. Lamley takes over that top spot in turn two. So it's Lamley right now with Whitney. One and two. And oh, close call there for Ethan Dory. Holds on to the 78 off the corner, gathers it back up. Oh, we got fluid coming heavy out of the 44. All down the front straightaway, now into the corners. On the bright side, Greg, that fluid won't come out forever. <laughs> it's not an endless supply. No. In fact, I think it ran out right about there. Yeah, there's a direct correlation with how much a car slows down and how much of its fluids exit. The human body so. is very much the same. <laughs> I had a feeling you were going there. Ray Ann Beaudry, the driver headed into the pit area. 
As we continue on, it's Chris Lamely out in front of the 67 of Josh Whitney. Whoa. And then the 17 E of Evan Minnie. Hang on to it. The 27 of Kendall Hayes doing a lot of steering there through three and four as the white flag flies on this qualifying heat. Kendall Hayes about a half a straightaway in front of our leader, Lamely. Yeah, Lamely about to catch the first lap car, William Vitido in the 13. And the checkers come out for Lamely. Pick up the win over Whitney. Then it's Evan Minnie in the third position. The 78 of Ethan Dory will finish in the fourth spot. And it looks like fifth will go to William Vitido. That'll do it for Stingers qualifying in this one. On to the next, which should be, if I'm not mistaken, Greg, the Action Sprint Tour. The Action Sprint Tour up next as a wild one last night for a few drivers. I got to see the video of Lucas Smith launching off the implement tires down to the infield last night. Wild ride for him. Yeah, that did look like a wild one, but I saw in practice that he was out. Both of the 49 machines were out, so obviously they were able to make repairs. That's always a good thing. So heat race number one getting pushed off from off of corner number one, and looks like it will line up like this. Going from the pole from Thamesford, Ontario, in the Oakwood Transport AV Utility number 14, it'll be Larry Gledhill. Lining up on his outside in the second spot aboard car number 31 out of Bowmanville, it's Dale Curran. Rolling off third from Brampton in the Lifto Limited Toyota Industry Equipment number 70 MM, that will be Dave McKnight. And rolling off from the fourth position in car number MK8 from Oshweek in the Nitro 54 variety ride, that is Matthew Hill. Starting in the fifth spot from St. Thomas in the Oakwood Transport Wells Foundry number four, it's Jesse Costa. And going from position number six in car number 12, DD. Sponsored by MS Road Solutions, DJD Graphics. That'll be Darren Dryden, Darren Dryden from Hamilton. Starting in the seventh position from Ancaster, the Seven Star Express Line, Sheen Renovations, 26X. It's Terry Baker. And rolling off from the eighth position. From Rockwood in the radio shuttle, Neely Auto, number 74, it's Rob Neely. So eight cars make up heat race number one for the Action Sprinter, presented by Pinty's. Four heats in total here tonight. 31 crate sprint cars in total here for this Action Sprint Tour event. Still to come after the Action Sprint Tour, late models, followed by the Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Cars, Thunderstocks, and Comp 4s. Some beautiful... Beautiful looking designs out here in this action sprint tour, Greg. <laughs> Lots of colors in this one. Of course, Darren Dryden, a beautifully designed number 12. All of the Nitro 54 cars look fantastic on the racetrack. Some Steve Lyons influence in those designs, but these teams like take a lot of pride in the presentation of their race cars. Yeah, a number of very nice looking cars here. The Action Sprint Tour. Same with the Pinty's Knights of Thunder. Darren Dryden, he's a he's a vinyl guy as well. That 12DD, always a fantastic looking car. Again, 24 cars will start tonight's A main event. So we will require a B main tonight for the Action Sprint Tour. Always tough just to make a show. And uh, we we noted that back in 2019 at Oshweek and how hard it was to make a crate sprint car feature. And I think we got down to one driver that made every feature. There was only one driver that qualified every night for the feature, and that was Lucas Smith. 
And I don't know why I remember that, Greg, because I don't remember anything. <laughs> I think it's the fact we talked about it so much. No, I talked to my wife about a lot of things, and, and I don't remember a single thing. So white flag being displayed. Next time around, we'll go green flag racing with heat race number one for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's with... Larry Gledhill on that front row with Dale Curran, Dave McKnight, and Matt Hill back in row number two. Jesse Costa and Darren Dryden row number three. And then it's Terry Baker back there with Rob Neely in row number four. Coming to the green flag. Eight laps the distance for the Action Sprint Tour. Slow, even start, just the way Kyle McKenzie wants our race director here tonight. We're under green in the Action Sprint Tour as they pile down into turn number one. Curran with a good run on the outside, but he just ran out of grip at the exit of turn two. Here comes Larry Gledhill working that inside line, trying to get by Curran. Curran gets a good run on the outside, though, and he'll keep the lead as they go down into corner number one. So glad he'll able to pinch that car off and get a decent run on the bottom. Curran using the wider line. He can keep the car wound up, sail it sideways, and Curran's going to ride that line to the lead. Dave McKnight takes a wild excursion off of quarter number four, gathers it back up, stays on track. As we remain green flag racing this time by, it'll be three laps complete with Dale Curran out in front over Larry Gledhill and his teammate Jesse Costa tracking him down. Yeah, a couple of bar motorsports cars running second and third. Costa with a nice move to the inside. He'll pick up that second spot. Darren Dryden hanging on to fourth all by himself. And Terry Baker, after starting at the back, he's come up to fifth. So it's Curran, Costa, Gledhill, and Dryden top four. Baker in the fifth spot. Rob Neely's coming up from the tail there into the sixth position. As this time by, it's five laps complete and three to go. Heavy run obviously favoring the bottom groove right now. In fact, about a lane off the bottom groove. As I say that, Darren Dryden pokes that 12 machine to the outside. He's going to send it down into three and four, trying to make a run to the high side of Gledhill. Here comes Dryden, works around the outside as Gledhill really trying to pedal that car on this blackened racetrack. It's going to be a a night for the drivers to be busy working the feet as much as they are the steering wheel. Yeah, nice run for Darren Dryden. He found the bite on the inside of the track. White flag is out. Glen Hill overdrove, turns one and two. Here comes Dryden. Curran going to take the win in this heat. Second place to Jesse Costa. Darren Dryden third. And it's Glen Hill, Baker, Neely, McKnight. And rounding out the field, it's Matt Hill. Dale Curran picks up the win, the driver out of Bowmanville, Ontario, over Jesse Costa, Darren Dryden. That's your top three. Larry Gledhill, fourth, fifth, will go to Terry Baker, sixth, Rob Neely, seventh, Dave McKnight, and eighth. Matt Hill is heat race number one, is into the record books. Heat race number two. Being set to be pushed off from the pit area. What? Guys, just want to mention, we've seen Dale Curran just win his first ever heat race. Dad, super pumped. We caught his dad on the way in. He was telling us, this youngster come out of go-karts and race road cars go-karts. They had to find out what the next stage was going to be for Dale. They decided to bring him to dirt sprint cars unexpectedly. And now his dad tells us he may be heading off in October to race Formula 4000 in Spain. So that's a big thing for these youngsters. And they're trying to get this kid as many laps as he can and as many types of cars as he can, guys. Heat race number two heading out onto the speedway. And it will line up like this. Going from the pole in heat race number two, driver to Kitchener, the 50 LS. That will be Adrian Staley. Adrian Staley from the pole. Alongside him from Six Nations in the Styes Tree Service, Enrium Dynamics car number 20. It's the Iceman, Johnny Miller. Going from the third position, one of our drivers from the east, from Brockville, Ontario, in the Gananoque Chevrolet Snap-on Tools number 52. That is Matt Billings. Matt Billings in the 52. And alongside him, out of Hamilton, the Petro Plus Travel Stop, Burger Bar number 56, Derek Lemaire. 
Going off from the fifth position out of Brantford in the Burger Barn East One Construction 48, it's Lance Erskine. And lining up to his outside, starting in the sixth spot out of Mosley, Ontario, in the car star Brantford, Bobcat of Brantford 3S, it's Austin Rose. Starting in the seventh position from Sydenham, Ontario, another one of the Eastern Ontario drivers in the Draper Doors, Penny Blake home team, number nine, it's Luke Stewart. And starting in the eighth and final position, the driver out of Oshuiken, Ontario, the juniors, Riverside Bait and Tackle, 77T, Tyler Paulus. So eight more cars make up heat race number two of four for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. Good opportunity here this weekend for some of the Eastern Crate Sprint Car teams to compete with their Western counterparts. Of course, Brockville, Ontario Speedway starting the Crate Division one year ago. And uh, it's continuing to grow. Drivers like Matt Billings, Luke Stewart, we'll see in this qualifying heat. Clint, uh, some of those new names that we get to see on GeForce TV tonight. Yeah, it's been great, Greg. You know, when we first heard Brockville wanted to run the crates, we reached out to them and said, hey, let's all get around the same rules and we can build some great things together. Quebec has a contingent that has also been building down there. And I think by the time we get out of COVID and the start of the next season, we're going to have over 75 crate sprint cars from here back to Oshweek and, and a little bit farther east. And it's going to be amazing. It's really going to be easy for us to put on some superstar events with car counts like we've got here tonight. And we're super proud to be part of the Labor Day Classic here this weekend. And, you know, we see a lot of new names. I, I talked to you, right? Wow, who's that guy? Who's that guy? You know, we started this class. We are seeing new drivers. We don't even know who they are. And that is the best thing we could have as a promotion team. Well, if you're a modified fan from Eastern Ontario, you know Luke Stewart, you know especially Matt Billings. Even if you've been across the border, Matt Billings has won some big time uh, modified races. So if you're a sprint car fan, you may think, well, who are these guys? But uh, these Eastern Ontario modified fans will know these faces. And, and I'm sure that helps the division because they've got some guys they know that they can cheer for. I think it's amazing. I'm with you there, Greg. You know, we didn't have a bunch of kids jump in, which we have, but we have some of the best stars in the East buying into this crate division, like you mentioned, and it's great to have them here. So another stacked field. We're getting set to go here. I think the White should probably come out this time, and we'll just about be ready to go. Up to you and Adam for the call of heat race number two for the Action Sprint Tour, powered by Pinty's. So it's Adrian Staley, Johnny Miller, row number one, Matt Billings and Derek Lemaire, row two, Lance Erskine, Austin Rose back in row number three, Luke Stewart and Tyler Paulus make up row number four as eight cars get ready for heat race number two for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's here at Brighton Speedway. Fantastic weather, fantastic crowd, and a great car count on hand here tonight. Just getting into the A-Main will be an accomplishment here for these crate sprint car drivers. Stanley with a great start in that number 50. Look at Derek Lemaire up through the middle. Johnny Miller. Wow, gets up off the racetrack all the way to the back of the field. But Derek Lemaire with a great start moving up to that second spot. So it's Staley Lemaire right now, one and two. Then it's Austin Rose and Matt Billings. Luke Stewart working to the outside of youngster Lance Erskine into corner number three. Billings drives it deep down into three and then gets that car to plant on the inside groove. Doesn't affect Austin Rose. Rose getting a great run through the turn. Looking to the outside of Derek Lemaire. Fabulous three-car battle for that second spot. Now Lemaire leading the way, but Austin Rose out on the outside. Looking for the second spot at the line. He'll take it away from Derek Lemaire as they trail leader Adrian Staley. It could just be my eyes, but it looks as though second and third are closing in on that Staley number 50, although Adrian got a really good line around the bottom of the racetrack. It's going to be tough to make a move on that race leader. Staley out in front of a Rose, Lemaire, and Matt Billing. It's Luke Stewart and Lance Erskine duking it out right now for that fifth position. Johnny Miller back in sixth. You might wonder what happened to him on that initial green flag. He took the long way around corner number two and lost a lot of ground, so he's back there right now in seventh, just ahead of Tyler Paulus. What a contrast is Luke Stewart battling with Lance Erskine. How long has Stewart been racing, Greg? A fair time. Luke's not overly old by any means, but uh, longer than Lance Erskine, that's for sure. Lance uh, just in his second year in the big cars right now, whereas Luke Stewart's uh, had many years behind the wheel of the dirt sportsman. 
Lance does a nice job of taking that spot and then taking away Luke Stewart's line around the bottom of the racetrack. White flag is out last time through three and four for Adrian Staley. It looks like he is going to cruise to victory with Austin Rose coming home second, Derek Lemaire third, Matt Billings fourth, Lance Erskine fifth, and it's Luke Stewart, Johnny Miller, and Tyler Paulus. So heat race number two in the books with Adrian Staley, the winner over Austin Rose, Derek Lemaire, and Matt Billings. Lance Erskine, Luke Stewart, Johnny Miller, and Tyler Paulus, the running order at the end of that one. Third heat about to work its way out onto the racetrack. So you see Adrian Staley going across the scales. Top three will have to cross the scales. Clinton Jeffries down there having an eye on that. Well, Greg, the other thing we've got going on here, you'll see Jeff Dernan. He's our tech director here tonight for the Action Sprint Tour and the KOT Sprints. He's got that front wing gauge, and he's going to go in there and make sure they are not tweaking that front wing gauge too far forward. It, it's only a certain uh, distance it can be out front over the front axle. If it's too far forward, you get disqualified just like you were light. So that's one quick, easy check we can do here. And, Ryan, go up to the front there, and let's show, show the fans at home how they actually check these front wings. We'll go watch Jeff measure up that wing and make sure that the jig is right. Derek Lemaire, solid manly move to kick that one off, guys. Solid manly move. <laughs> How often do you do those, Adam? Well, I'm not going to go there. They're, they're like I'd, I had made my, I had made the joke in my mind, Greg, and I almost <laughs> unleashed it. And I thought, nope, nope, not going to cross that line just yet. Give it a couple hours, let the sun go say, down. Is it that time of night already, Adam? Have we spent too many hours together this weekend? <laughs> well, really, one hour is too many hours for, for me. To hang around together. you, yeah, it is. Hey, want to send a shout out to John and Wendy Brusher here, big supporters of the Sprint Car Action here in Ontario. John, hey, Greg, you're going to be surprised. This is John and Wendy's first ever visit. To Brighton Speedway he said, wow, what a spot. We got him up in the turn four bar, and uh, they're quite happy here. John and Wendy, hopefully you're having a good time tonight. Thank you for everything you do for us. We definitely appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you enjoy your first visit ever here to Brighton Speedway. Guys, give us the lineup for qualifying race number three for the Action Sprint Tour, powered by Pinty. Starting on the pole from this one at a Wayne Fleet, the Sundance Pressure Wash and Castle Plumbing BS39. That's Brett Stratford. Alongside of him, the winner last night at a Port Colburn, the Maverick Real Estate Dow Auto 5D, it's Jacob Dykstra. Starting from the third position, the driver to Six Nations in the True North Dot Bat Nitro 54 Variety 38, it's Derek Miller. And alongside him, out of Dorchester in the Horvath Auto Parts Marshall Performance 48M, that is by Andrew Marshall. Starting in the fifth position, out of Oshweek in the Kanata Fuels Nitro 54 Variety 9C, Dan uh, Brian Nanico. And his outside from Brighton in the Apex Graphic Design and Printing, Midfield Transportation, 39, it's Jonah Mutton. And going from the seventh position, he's from Waterloo in the Velocity Mechanics, ILA Sports, number 19, D. Allen Downey. And starting in the eighth and final position from Port Perry in the town line, MFG Brass, Bonds, my brother's concrete pumping, 4B, it's Daryl Peltier. So white flag comes out this time by Brett Stratford, Jacob Dykstra make up row number one, Derek Miller, Andrew Marshall, row number two, Brian Nanico, Jonah Mutton back there in row three, Alan Downey and Daryl Pelche back there in that fourth row. You know, I was looking at Jonah Mutton's car in practice. I really like the number, and I don't know why. And not the 39, I have no love or lack of love for the number 39, but the way it looks on the wing. I just found it really easy to read, and I don't that's see a, very that, well. That's an announcer's dream. As yes. we come to the green flag, heat race number three for the action sprint tour. Nope, oh, we're going to stay under the yellow flag here for a moment. Not sure what the issue is there. All right, next time around. Jacob Dykstra starts from the outside of the front row, and this kid has been... Almost unbeatable here in 2021 in the 5D. 
Yeah, he's off to a great start. There's no denying that. Uh, Nick Sheridan got the best of him there about a month ago at Merrittville Speedway, but otherwise, he's taking home some big prize money. Green flag is out. Dykstra works to the outside. Brett Stratford grabs the lead right off the hop. He squeezed Brett Stratford down the racetrack and slammed that door. And that's something you'll do once, but you rarely get away with it a second time, Greg. Well, he pulled far enough away. He might not need to bother about doing it again. Is there three wide behind the top two? Alan Downey makes a nice move to jump up from the back up to third. And how about Derek Martin in the 38? And, and for those of you who are fans of Friday Night Thunder, this will be some great footage for them as Derek Miller battling it out with Brian Nanakok for that fourth position. It's Dykstra out in front over Stratford and Downey. Miller right now holding down the fourth spot. Brian Nanakok works around him now in that Canada Fuels 9C. It looks like the drivers are getting on the throttle a little bit too soon at the exit of turn two. They, they think they're on the backstretch. They hit the throttle and almost wind up in the creek there. Jacob Dykstra stretching his advantage over Brett Stratford right now as they come down and complete lap number five. Three laps left to go here in heat race number three. Stratford in the second spot. Downey holds down third. Nana Coke right now has fourth, but Derek Miller not giving that spot up easily. He's fighting back on the bottom. Great battle for that fourth spot. Out in front, it is all Dykstra. Two laps left to go. Here for the action sprinter, heat race number three. Here comes Miller back to the inside, down in corner number one. They're wheel to wheel through the second corner. Such tight confines here at Brighton Speedway as they're about to take the white flag. I mean, Jacob Dykstra already did take the white flag, but the rest of the field's about to take the white. Off a of quarter number three and into four goes Jacob Dykstra and cruises to another checkered flag. So Dykstra takes the heat race win over Brett Stratford, Allen Downey third. And at the line, Miller fighting back, but Nanakoke's going to grab the spot over Miller. Pelche back there in the fifth, uh, sixth spot. Seventh will go to Jonah Mutt and eighth, Andrew Marshall. So heat race number three into the record books for the action sprint tour. Jacob Dykstra picks up the heat race win in the five. D. Brett Stratford second, Allen Downey third. Fourth will go at the line to Brian Nanakoke over Derek Miller in the 38. Daryl Pelche, sixth, seventh, Jonah Mutton, and eighth, Andrew Marshall. So one more qualifying heat to come. The action sprint tour, and up next after that will be the late models. So Dykstra again across the scales. Winner last night. And as Adam mentioned, the only driver to beat him this year has been the 45 of Nick Sheridan at Merrittville. Other than that, uh, Jacob Dykstra's won everywhere he's gone in these uh, crate sprint cars, including wins at uh, Southern Ontario, uh, pardon me, at uh, Cornwall Motor Speedway. Of course, rained out at Brockville, but also at Humberstone. And Merrittville, he's picked up wins, and of course, the win last night. So the kid just continues to dominate. Definitely a good shoe, the driver, that number five. We'll see him later on this evening. But there's some pretty steep talent in this field. And actually, one of the drivers who's been doing a fantastic job is about to roll onto those scales right now. Alan Downey, a university professor with a passion for sprint car racing. Not a combination you see very often, Greg. People who are really smart and who like driving race cars. <laughs> wow, you just painted a big brush across a lot of race car drivers. I, I thought they knew. <laughs> no, dirt sprint cars. Do, do you often hear about the upper echelon of, of brain power? Thinking, I want to race a dirt sprint car. I want to sling myself around dirt tracks at ludicrous speed. You, you keep digging. All right. That's Adam Ross, 555. <laughs> Uh, some may say the th same thing about announcers, Adam. Well, why do you think I do it? <laughs> I do it for the pizza. Constipation of the brain, diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> How come this is the first time I'm hearing of that condition? <laughs> I've been living it for years. <laughs> All right, heat race number four will line up like this on the pole. 
Out of Oshwiken. The Every Child Matters. Car number 99, that'll be Joshua Hill on his outside from Delhi in the Paris factory rides. Kevin Coots, Matt Cotools, number 49. See, it's Cody Smith. Inside row number two in the third starting spot from Thamesford, the Oakwood Transport. Fast track performance number seven, it's Eric Gledhill. And starting from the fourth position, Driver car number 26 out of Salmon Arm, British Columbia, the Seven Star Express Line. Sheen Renovations 26 is John Verney. Going from position number five. The driver also at attempts for to the Vipon Eller car number 45. That's Curtis Gartley, 45L, scored tonight. And alongside him, he went for a rocket ship ride last night over the implement tire. At a brand for the National Building Group, JDL Distributing 49L, Lucas Smith. And starting in the seventh and final position from Mount Bridges in the Vibrant Farms. Pride Seats 45, that'll be Nick Sheridan. Little quick trivia for you, Greg. Do you know why Curtis Gartley's here tonight? He wasn't last night because he, oh, what were they? Oh, I. He's a farmer, I know that. What was it they were... It was too wet for pulling beans today, yes. so they loaded the race car and came yes. racing. There's a specific type of bean, though. So soggy bean. Soggy. <laughs> <laughs> Green flag is out. Joshua Hill and Eric Gledhill will lead them down into corner number one. Smith did not fire coming to the line. Nice job by everyone to avoid that, but... No, we're going to bring that one back. You know, sometimes you'll see a pole sitter do that, thinking they got jumped, but I don't think Cody Smith got jumped. Either wasn't aware they were about to go green or something happened to that car. And I'm also not sure if Cody Smith is gonna retake his position at the front of this field. It, it almost looks like he was gonna exit the racetrack there. He just didn't fire at him for some reason. That car didn't get going or one of them didn't get going and everybody piled in behind. And now, he looks like the 26 of Vernie without the front nerf bar. He might have been listening to Greg talk about bean pulling <laughs> and uh, <laughs> got distracted, didn't see that green. Wow, there are way too many jokes in that one, Adam Ross. Um, Curtis, Curtis Gartley is here. He posted on Facebook because the weather was not conducive to bean pulling. It was too wet. So they loaded up that orange number 45, and that'd be a long tow from where Curtis Gartley comes from. So John Verney without the front nerf bar will start outside pole. They moved the involved cars to the back. It'll be a complete restart with involved cars to the back. That's how they're governing this one. Harvesting cranberry beans. That's what he said on Saturday, why they couldn't come. Cranberry beans. You'd think you'd want them to be soggy. I thought they grew in water. I think Same. we should. I think we should take a field trip. Let's go and see Curtis. When we go to Southern Ontario Motor Speedway next month, let's stop in and see Curtis. Curtis Gartley. It'll, it'll, it'll turn into an ocean spray commercial with Adam Ross and his hip waders out in a cranberry. <laughs> Look at Shamu in the, cran, in the cranberry pond. Steamy cranberry beans with oh. Adam Ross. Here we go. Three wide, Lucas Smith around the outside of John Verney. He'll grab the lead down the back stretch. Oh! Trouble for Hill. the two leaders. He closed the door there. Oh, oh, oh! Closed the door on Joshua Hill, and Joshua opened it back up again. Flat left rear on Lucas Smith's car, guys. Rough weekend for Lucas Smith. See, and that. That's a similar move to what Jacob Dykstra did in the previous heat. Slam the door shut. If the driver you're battling with does not want that door slammed shut, they will keep it open. And that's exactly you know, how you do it because they're still entitled to that lane. But Nick Sheridan from all the way to the, at the back of this one, up at the front, battling for the lead. Here he goes around the outside of Joshua Hill off the second corner, trying to get the run of that outside line. Hill strong and steady on the bottom. Here comes Sheridan, rolls it nicely through three, gets a good launch this time, and will be neck and neck at the line. Hill narrowly avoided that tractor tire on the inside of turn number four. I mean, you couldn't have slid a credit card 
between the left front tire and the inside tractor tire. It gives a little bit more grace this time. Three laps left to go, and Nick Sheridan leads that lap that time as he slips by Josh Hill into the top spot. Hill, I don't think's done, though. He's strong and steady on the bottom. And he's driving really well. He's going so low on the front straightaway, trying to find any moisture at all. I love how he continued that fight. Now he's going to go up a little higher on the racetrack and try to search the line that Nick Sheridan was running to get to the front. This time by, we should see the white flag for Nick Sheridan, driver to Mount Bridges, Ontario. Leads over Josh Hill and Eric Gledhill. As they go down through corner number one, Gledhill trying to grab that second spot. Curtis Gartley hanging on to fourth all by himself, but this one was Nick Sheridan's. From the back to the front, Sheridan for the win. Coming home second, Joshua Hill, Eric Gledhill third, Gartley in fourth, John Verney fifth. Six to Cody Smith. And Lucas Smith in the 49L gonna need to be picked up from the back end. So Nick Sheridan picks up the win over Josh Hill, Eric Gledhill in the third spot in the seven. Curtis Gartley in the 45L finishes fourth. John Verney in the fifth spot. Clint needs to leave that microphone in his pocket. That was that was a long run for him. I need the exercise. I was going to get uh, some trophies for these guys, but uh, got it in Jingle here. Let's talk to Lucas Smith. Lucas, it's been a long weekend for you here at Brighton. Again, the heat race gets you. You got a flat left rear. Did you get a chance to look at the rest of the car? Yeah, we looked at the rest of the car. It should be all right for the feature. Just not our weekend, I guess. A little bit dejected here for Lucas Smith. Guys, he's got one more shot in the BMA to get this one done. Hook on the way to take the 49L back to the pits. A little bit later on, though, I'd love to see that first lap again. Here we go right there. Okay, he didn't slam the door shut. I think Lucas just got, si like, pitched it sideways into the turn and almost lost it, had to gather it back up again. You know it's a bad weekend when you're starting night two with a top wing and a nose wing that's not matching the main scheme of your car. Late models heading out onto the racetrack for their first qualifying heat of the night. Two in total here this evening. Going from the pole in this one from Cotterington in the HAI Precision Water Jets. Vanderland Building Products number 55 with Brad Rayner. On the outside of him in car number 01 out of Picton, the Black River Tree Service. Kel Construction 01 is Eli Mayhew. Starting from the third position, the driver of Trenton, the Legacy 420. QBT Excavating 5 of Steve Baldwin. And his outside from Gravenhurst in the Muskoka Aircraft Center, Muskoka Custom Cottage Rentals, double zero, it's Ryan Gowdy. Starting in position number five, out of Trenton, the Thousand Island RV, Bellevue Fabricating 57, Charlie Sandercock. And lining up to his outside, in car number 12K out of Trenton, the Lots and Lines Traffic Markings, car number 12K, it's C -Rex, uh, K Rex, rather, Kyle Sopaz. In the 38, that'll be Mike Gowdy back there along with Adam Turner in the 92. And the 33, that tonight driven by David Vandertorn. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Greg, is this Kyle Sopass's first weekend back at Brighton in a long, long time? I believe that is correct. I don't believe he ran last year at all. So good to see him out here working the outside groove at the front. It's Brad Rayner in that 55 with a healthy advantage over Eli Mayhew and Steve Baldwin as they battled side by side down into three and four. On the outside, Mayhew trying to get by Steve Baldwin. Baldwin multi-time winner here in the late model division at Brighton Speedway. Mayhew on his outside as they roll it through the corner now closing the gap a little bit on Brad Rayner. Rainer working the bottom of the racetrack and doing a great job of it. Three wide down the front straightaway. Turner on the inside. Gowdy in the middle. Kyle Sopaz on the outside. And they split the double zero of Ryan Gowdy and pick up the fifth and sixth spots. So it's Rainer, Baldwin, Mayhew. Then it's Charlie Sandercock kind of all on his own there in the fourth spot. Turner and Sopaz continue side by side as Vander Turin goes around here on the front stretch in the 33. And that will put us under the caution flag in heat race number one for the late models. Vandertorn did a good job of keeping that car running, but I like what the race director did here, Greg, and go yellow air on the side of caution and throw the caution. 
So, folks, a few housekeeping notes. If you want to smoke, you may not do so in the grandstands, but there are areas at the turn four end and the turn one end of the grandstands. If you're wandering around the facility for the protection of Brighton Speedway staff and each other, the management asks that you please keep a mask on. And don't forget the concessions are open for your convenience. The bar is open down in turn number four. And if you're picking up pizza, I like pepperoni, green olives, and green pepper. Make that too. All right, lineup ready to go, coming, coming back to the green flag. In this first qualifying heat for the Vanderland Building Products Late Model Division here at Brighton Speedway, Rayner and Baldwin will get back on it off of four. Rayner had done a nice job out in front, holding that steady line on the bottom. He's built up a sizable lead as Adam Turner and Kyle Sopas get together in turn number two. That brings out a yellow. Sopaz gets up in inside the left rear wheel well of Adam Turner. He's got some sheet metal damage on the number 92 and Kyle Sopaz comes to a stop there to the inside of the second corner. Thought we were going to see a little nose to nose. Took well, him out there. No, Kyle had been in a little bit of hot water here at Brighton Speedway, so so I think he knows that he's got to keep a low profile as he comes back. Let's have a look from turn number one. Just caught the left rear of Adam Turner, gets up in the air and makes contact, and around goes that 12 of Kyle Sopaz. Did the front of his car get up in the air before he got to Adam Turner? If we can see that replay just one more time, I'd like to see. Yeah, you're wondering if he caught that inside tire right. before he caught or, the left rear of Turner. The berm down there, or what happened. So we'll watch him. He's going to be about five or six cars back here. So there's Turner. So watch the nose. Right he hopped. No, no, I no yeah, you're right. It was just the left rear, yep. I think, of Turner there. Yep. Love the replays. <laughs> and again, if you're if you're here in attendance tonight, you bring out your smartphone, go to YouTube, GeForce TV, and uh, by all means, go and watch those replays as they happen. You don't necessarily want to stream the entire night if you don't have an unlimited data plan, Adam. You know, you one time, you make that mistake <laughs> one time. I just got a $1,400 cell phone bill if that makes you feel better wow what was her name <laughs> Rainer and Baldwin side by side now Charlie Sandercock in the thick of this Eli Mayhew and Adam Turner side by side now for the fourth spot Turner with a great launch on that restart Eli Mayhew had been battling for the second spot not that long ago now he's in jeopardy of falling right out of the top five Adam Turner started back in the eighth position and he is on a tear. Charging now to the inside of Charlie Sandercock for third. Meanwhile, Steve Baldwin working that outside line, trying to steadily gain ground on the leader, Brad Rayner. Six laps complete in this qualifying heat. Two laps to go and it'll be the white flag off of turn number four as Kyle Sopaz swings to the outside three wide to pick up the sixth position. White flag out for Brad Rayner over Steve Baldwin. Adam Turner now up to that third position, putting Charlie Sandercock back to fourth. Eli Mayhew running fifth as we see the checkered flag go in the air. Brad Rayner going to take the win. Steve Baldwin second, Adam Turner third. Then it's Sandercock, Mayhew, Sopaz, Gowdy, Gowdy, and Vandertour. So to go back, yeah, I, I got sent a message like, what on earth, a $1,400 cell phone bill? And in the description it says, because you have more than 10 lines, you can see a breakdown of your bill. I got a family of four, Greg. We've, we've each got a phone and I finally convinced them to all go on the same plan. So I'd like to know who the other six or seven people are that I'm paying for. <laughs> can I be one? Da Daddy's money is Daddy's gone. Money. <laughs> Heat race number two, heading out onto the racetrack for the Vanderland Building Products late model, starting on the pole in this one from Brighton, the Target Fabrication Motorsports of Trenton. Number 46, Brandon Bowen. 
lining up on his own side from Trenton in the Brighton Recycling Vanderland Building Supplies 29. It's Phil Potts stopping Phil Potts back the season in the 29. Inside row number two. Driver to Picton, the Ralph's Meat Market piece maker 42087. That's Andrew Hennessy. Lining up on his outside from Trenton, the C.H. DeMille, Whaley Mechanical 12, it's Adam Whaley. Going from the fifth spot, picked up a popular win last night at a caring place in the Dibbets Excavating and Landscape Supply, Eastern Overhead Door 77, it's Kaylee Weiss. Starting in the sixth spot, out of Shannonville, the Tri-Canadian Energy, Steve Veens for Plumbing and Heating, number 91, Craig Hanley. And from the back row, starting in the seventh spot, out of Carrying Place, the Green Grass Oasis, Ark Homes, Oasis Fuels 22, Sean Gregory. And alongside him in the eighth and final starting position, driving car number 89 out of Port Hope, the Duramax. Science flooring 89 is Austin King. Eight more cars, eight laps of distance. Heat race number two for the Vanderland Building Products Late Models. Down they go into corner number one. Good to see Phil Potts. This is the first I've had a chance to see him back on track since uh, he had that medical scare that uh, scared all of us last year. And good to see that 29 back on track. He sure did share that experience well, didn't he? Yep. Great to have him back. Mow it out in front, holding on to that lead. Hennessy to the inside of Phil Potts. He's going to pick up the second position in the 87 machine. Phil Potts not done yet, points that car down the front straightaway and noses out ahead of Hennessy. Side by side for that second spot. Kaylee Weiss right now working the fourth position. Picking up the win last night and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that was her first win in the late model division and well deserved for her. She is such an ambassador to motorsports in general. She is so, and now she's having a look to the inside of Phil Potts, number 29. Kaylee Weiss up to that third position in the 77, driving a confident race out there. Victory will do that. It's amazing. You get that win, get it out of the way, and then it just continues to, to pile on the success. So Kaylee Weiss up to third, started in the fifth spot. Brandon Mowat out in front. That's a driver that can be dominant on any night, the 46 of Brandon Mowat, and he is holding his own right now out in front. Yeah, the top three have spread out. Phil Potts under attack from the 89 of Austin King. That's a battle for the fourth spot. Ahead of that, the top three pretty much have separated themselves from the rest of the field and each other. Time by it'll be the white flag in the second and final qualifying heat for the Vanderland Building Products late models. Brandon Moat leading over Andrew Hennessy and Kaylee Weiss. Off of turn number two for the final time. Moat just kicks that car sideways a little bit and straightens it down the back straightaway hard on the throttle. Gingerly through three and four, and he'll take that win. Second place to Hennessy. Kaylee Weiss coming home third, and it's Bill Potts. Austin King, Adam Whaley going to hold off the 91 of Craig Handley. And Sean Gregory rounds out the field. That'll do it for late model qualifying. Up next, the Knights of Thunder. Yeah, the Pinties. Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series ready to head to the racetrack. DJ Christie picking up the win last night. His second career 360 Sprint Car win after he picked up the inaugural start for the 360 Sprints down at the brand new Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. What a show place that is. If you get a chance, it's, it's a long drive from here, but it's well worth the trip. We'll be there in October with the Fenty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Cars and the Action Sprint Tours. Heat race number one heads out onto the Speedway for the Fenty's Knights of Thunder. Starting on the pole for this one out of St. Pete, Quebec in the Benoit Lafleur Transport Castrol Edge Part number 88, it's Elaine Bergeron. Going from the second spot, out of Picton in the Jones Automotive Car Quest 11J, that'll be Chris Jones. Starting in the third position, from Gores Landing in the Charlie B. Honey Mudcat Entertainment Center, number 19, Brandon Morrell. And his outside, from Caster Center in the Charlie B. Honey Mudcat Entertainment, number 11, it's Jamie Turner. Rolling off from the fifth position from Brockville in the JC Satellite, number 98, it's Paul Pakonin and making his second start ever here in Ontario. 
from Grand Prairie, Alberta, in the Maverick Real Estate Dow Auto Number 5D, it's Ben Siliker. Starting in the seventh position out of Oshweken in the OSR Oshweken Speedway, number zero, the Oshweken Flyer, Glenn Styers. And starting at eighth out of St. P. Quebec, the Total Lubricants Polaris, number 3G, Dale Goslin. So eight cars will make up heat race number one. Three in total here tonight for the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series. See, I choose to read that as St. Pi, Quebec, because I believe there should be a patron saint of pies. <laughs> like, you get them for so many things. Like, tell me you haven't had a pie so good you thought it was heavenly. I, like, I know I'm speaking your language, Greg. Tell me I haven't had one that wasn't. <laughs> Awesome, more lineups. Great service at Brighton Speedway. You know, they want to get us everything they possibly can to help them run their show, but that's what makes the Rinaldi family great. That's what makes our trips to Brighton so enjoyable. Cheeseburgers would really make the show move even better. Or that pizza you mentioned. <laughs> mm, cheeseburger. I will pray to the saint of Pi. <laughs> hey, just let me make it clear. On our way here an hour ago, Adam had a big cheeseburger. A Big Mac double cheeseburger. No, I did not have a double. That was not a double che double Big Mac. That was the standard Big Mac. So what's your point? You're only allowed one a day? Like, come on. No, I'm just saying he's he's acting like he's starved for a hamburger and never had one for a month. He had one like an hour and a half ago. Yeah. This is why the wives aren't on the road with us. So Clint's going <laughs> to blow the whistle on my dietary habits. I thought my secret was hey, safe. Before I blew the whistle, I clearly asked you, do you do McDonald's? And you said, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Turn three camera guy, Jack, that's all he does is McDonald's. So we didn't have much choice in the matter. It's it's pretty far on my list down. I'm not I'm not a big fan, but what I've learned, <laughs> uh, especially when we rode home from Quebec a couple of weeks ago, the only thing open is gas station for sandwiches, those free wrapped sandwiches, and McDonald's. <laughs> That's like roulette, isn't it? <laughs> you, you should have seen Jack and I taking the G Force trailer through the drive through last night because we were determined to get our McDonald's cheeseburgers on our way here to Brighton. Do you want to know for certain what makes you run to the bathroom or would you rather guess? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's Flam Burgers. Man, I swear they're half laxative over there. I love them, but after one, I'm in trouble. Wow. Well, that went off the rails fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you put the three of us talking about food, it's going to get crazy silly fast. That's what? why that's why Clint wears a two piece suit. <laughs> the one piece is so hard to strip out of. I almost had that accident last year at the sunset, but that's another story. We could have had when I got the we, slow golf clap from the crew. <laughs> we could have had Epic make a fire suit with a little trap door in the <laughs> Oh, here we go. Green flag racing for the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 sprint cars. Elaine Bergeron, Chris Jones ready to bring us to the green flag. Eight laps the distance. Down into turn number one. Bergeron on the bottom. Chris Jones very familiar with this racetrack right in the high side. Then Morell on the inside of Jamie Turner in that battle for the third spot. Yeah, there's uh, look-alike cars there. Brandon Morell gets the start this weekend. in Jamie Turner's backup ride, he's excited to be there, and he is holding down the fourth spot right now over youngster Ben Siliker from out west. Jamie Turner making a move for the second spot on Chris Jones, and what a gaggle of cars we've got racing for fourth. Glenn Styers at the back of that little row of cars. Brandon Morell at the front. Jacob Dykstra wedged in the middle, along with Dale Goslin in the 3G. Elaine Bergeron out in front. There's the battle for that second position. Jamie Turner on the bottom. Chris Jones, his home track here tonight at Brighton Speedway. Front of that outside line. Now he'll look down low in corner number three. Out front, it's all Elaine Bergeron, nearly a half a straightaway lead as they reach the halfway point of this qualifying heat. Bergeron out front over Jamie Turner, Chris Jones third, then it's the 19 of Brandon Morell, and here comes pressure from Dale Goslin on the 5D of Silliker. Top three have opened some daylight on the rest of the field as Goslin sails it down into the corner, but unable to get that car to turn to put the power down. 
Not a lot of grip out here, Greg, and I love it. Yeah, the driver's really having to work this racetrack here tonight as it's two laps left to go for Elaine Bergeron over Jamie Turner. Good to see Jamie. He's really had a, a good, solid season in the races that we've seen him in this year, Adam. He definitely has. I mean, it's uh, he looks comfortable behind the wheel as they take the white flag. And as you say, it's everywhere we've gone. So Bergeron holds it down with one lap left to go. Turner, I think, is actually gaining ground on the leader. That's how strong his car is. But he's going to run out of time as eight laps will go on the board. Checkers out for Elaine Bergeron over Jamie Turner. And it's going to be Chris Jones third. Brandon Morrell will finish in the fourth spot for Ben Silliker. Oh, and a puff of smoke out of the 5D. Just as he went down into corner number one, but gets that car woed up. So Lane Bergeron picks up the win over Jamie Turner. Chris Jones third, fourth will be Brandon Morrell, fifth. Ben Silliker sixth will be Dale Goslin, seventh Glenn Styers and eighth will go to Paul Piconin. So heat race number one goes into the record books. Heat race two getting set to come out onto the racetrack here for the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 sprint cars. Top three go across the scales before we bring out the next group of cars here. And I see them now coming onto the racetrack in corner number one. So we'll give you the lineup of the drivers set to do battle here in this second eight lap qualifying heat. Should mention for those maybe tuning in or here live and in person, never seen sprint cars before. If you haven't realized it yet, then I guess you know now, these cars don't have starters. So each one needs to be pushed off to get them rolling. And uh, it's basically just raw horsepower to the back of the motor right to the rear end and not a whole lot else with these sprint cars. That's what makes them so fast. So you see the teams pushing their cars out, getting them lined up for the push trucks to come along and get them off and rolling. And we will do that here in a moment with heat race number two going from the pole. And this one from Fenwick in the Oshrican Speedway Racehorse, NREM Dynamics number 14H, the Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen. Starting alongside of him out of St. Matthew Del de Belleville, Quebec, and the OSR, Oshuican Speedway, 0FM, the Fireball, Steve Poyer. Starting in the third position, also from St. Matthew de Belleville, Quebec, in the Four Seasons Forming Mega Pumping 28, it's Jordan Poyer. And going from fourth out of Dorchester, in the Malcolm Mills Mill Riding, Oshuican Speedway, car number one, Holly Porter. Starting in the fifth spot from Bimbrook in the Nitro 54 variety, Creative Edge Signs and Graphics number nine, it's Liam Martin. And starting in the sixth spot from Grimsby in the Bowens Automotive, Image Factor number 90, Travis Cunningham. Going from the seventh spot from Beamsville in the JNE Recovery, Julie Swayze Remax 88H, it's Josh Hansen. And starting in eighth from Dunville, the Kingpin Farms, Burger Barn number 91, Ryan Turner. Eight cars, eight laps of distance, qualifying heat, race number two. And we get this asked, we've mentioned it on previous broadcast the relation between Steve and Jordan Poyer that is not a father and son duo duo it's an uncle and nephew duo so uh, Jordan the nephew of Steve Poyer I am not your father <laughs> That's the second time you've used that tonight yeah it comes in handy from time to time <laughs> for Steve Poyer three-time Canadian Sprint Car Nationals winner in fact, the only Canadian to win the Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. And that gets more and more impressive as years go on, doesn't it, Greg? You know, if, you, if you've had five of those events, that's a pretty neat stat. You have 10, 15, 20 of those events, it starts to stack up and think, wow, that's quite an achievement. Yeah, it took until our last one to get a regular Friday night runner to win that event. And that was uh, Todd Hoddick picking up the win. No, it wasn't. Oh, Scott Kruder, sorry. In Todd Hoddock's car. In Todd Hoddock's car. Clint had already cued his microphone as if he knew that you were about to be wrong. Did you notice, like, his mic came on before he even corrected you? I just had something else to say already, so uh, I should <laughs> take the, the credit, but it's not true. Just want to mention, for all you Canadian Sprint Car Nationals fans, Glenn Stires Racing Your Night has said a few things that he wants to get back to and make the Nationals bigger than ever. 
so we're not ready to announce it yet, but we're talking the Canadian Super Nationals coming up next year. So stay tuned for more news about that. I was equally as impressed when he cued his microphone to correct you. But that was that was a big news. It's a big deal. All right. Jim Hoopinen and Steve Poye, row number one. Jordan Poye, Holly Porter, row number two. Liam Martin back there with Travis Cunningham in row number three. Josh Hansen and Ryan Turner back in row number four. And for this second qualifying heat for those watching at home on GeForce TV, we're going to do a quick, quick fire starter. Fire it up. Sights and sounds of sprint cars here at Brighton Speedway. Ryan Turner working that outside groove, and it is a slow process, Greg, but he's working it very well, trying to make a move on Holly Porter for that fourth position. Nobody else seems to be making any progress on the high side, but Ryan Turner slowly and steadily able to ride that line with success. Yeah, he's up to the fourth spot, started back in the eighth position. It's a work it down this time by. It's halfway home, four laps in, four to go. In heat race number two, it's all Jim Hoopin and Audi in front over Steve Poyer, Jordan Poyer, and now Ryan Turner closing the gap on third. And with passing points the way they use in the sprint car divisions here, Ryan Turner, after coming from deep in the field, if he can hold that position, let alone pick up another spot, he's going to be looking pretty good here. Two laps to go this time, by, I believe, for Jim Hoopin and Picked up the win here at Brighton Speedway back on August 21st. White flag for the Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen. Ryan Turner elected to come back to that inside groove. Well, not come back to it, move down to the inside groove where everyone else is running. Lost a little bit of his momentum there as the white flag flies, but he should be able to still hang on to that fourth spot. At the front, it's going to be Hoopinen taking the win. Steve Poirier coming home in the second spot. Jordan Poirier third. Ryan Turner, Holly Porter, Liam Martin, Josh Hansen, and Travis Cunningham rounding out the field. So heat race number two goes into the record books with Jim Hoopin and winning over Steve Poye, Jordan Poye, and Ryan Turner fourth, Holly Porter fifth, Liam Martin sixth, Josh Hansen seventh, and Travis Cunningham. Uh, Cunningham crosses the line in the eighth position as we see the winner one night ago getting pushed out onto the racetrack. Young DJ Christie just started racing 360 sprints after spending a a couple of years in the crate sprint car division and picked up his first win at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway. Back at the start of August. He's going to have some work to do here starting in the seventh spot. So here's the lineup for heat race number three for the Binti's Knights of Thunder 360 sprint cars. Going from the pole out of Oshwikan in the Nitro 54 variety. Creative Edge Science and Graphics number 15, Dan Nanako. And starting alongside of him out of Picton in the Terry's Taxi, Elbrook excavating 84, Tyler Rand. Going from the third spot from Niagara Falls, Ontario in the Signal 88 Security, EMS towing number 70, Bailey Hurd. And lining up to his outside from Scotland, Ontario in the Instapanel, Styes Tree Service 87X, Sean Evans. Going from the fifth position from Mississauga, Ontario in the Carstar Brantford, Pinewood Horticulture Services 17X, it's the highlight man, Mac DeMann. And his outside from the sixth position from Tilsonburg, Ontario, the Petro Plus Travel Stop, Burger Barn, number 13, Corey Turner. 
And going from seventh out of Beachville, the Castro Edge, DeGroote Hill Chevrolet, number five, DJ Christie. So seven cars in this third and final qualifying heat. Still to come. We've got the Thunderstocks up next, and then the Comp Fours. You could see DJ Christie's father, Jay Christie. He was on the push vehicle, stopped alongside DJ once he got him out on the track for some final words of encouragement. But DJ Christie has one of the most impressive winning records in any division of racing. How many 360 events has he run, Greg? Because he's now won two of them. Not many people have a, a winning percentage that's no, it, double double digits is an <laughs> unbelievable winning percentage. It's uh, it's got to be impressive right now. I'm not sure exactly how many starts officially he has, but uh, to have two wins already, it's taken some of the the best drivers in 360 sprint cars to go multiple years before they get their first win, and he's already got two in a very short order. So, DJ Christie, no surprise, just such a talented driver. His dad, uh, a racer himself. Quality people, that is for sure. So all seven cars have made the call for this qualifying heat, and they are out on the racetrack. Great to have Mac DeMann back on the tour. He's taken a few nights off this year. But the, the roster is better when Mac DeMann is on it in that 17. Yeah, it was such a messed up year with scheduling changes constantly and, and some of the drivers and team owners had already gone ahead and made plans because at some points it looked as though we might not see racing and, and dates got changed around. So for Mac, it is definitely good to have him back here tonight. And that Nathan Ackland racing number 17X. Yeah, this weekend brought all the drivers out. Great fields of cars in all divisions, particularly the two sprint car divisions. These teams traveled a long way to come down here. Always a special event when you make the trip to Brighton Speedway. So Dan Anico. Tyler Rand up there in row number one. Bailey Hurd, Sean Evans, row two. Mac DeMann, Corey Turner, row three. And DJ Christie back there on his own in that seventh starting spot as we get ready to come to the green flag. Third and final qualifying heat for the Pinties. Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series. Tyler Rand, I think that's about as good a run as anybody has gotten on the outside to start one of these races. Rand out in front, and he'll drop to the bottom line on the racetrack. Sean Evans going to work to the bottom around Dan Nanakoke, who has some handling issues on that number 15. Yeah, that was a wild trip to corner Ford. Oh, Dan Nanakoke up and over. Red flag will go on the speedway as he hopped up over the right rear of DJ Christie. And there it goes. There's there the you wheel, go, Adam. So, in a stock car, drivers let people know they are okay by dropping the window net. In a sprint car, you let people know you're okay by flinging your steering wheel, and you'd know how angry a driver is by how far that steering wheel travels. I've so. never seen it be taste tested before, though. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's Not have sure. a look here. We're watching for the bright yellow wing. Dan Nanakoke will be right behind DJ Christie as he drives into the corner. His car was horribly handling off of turn number four. He was trying to get the handle set back up, so he pitches it down into the turn and just caught the right rear of DJ Christie and went upside down. I believe Clinton Jeffrey is on the scene. Yeah, a long strut over here, but we got the Nanakoke 54. Not sure if you're getting these pictures, but the wing is all bent down across the chassis right now, but should be uh, not too bad of an issue here for Dan. Obviously, you're going to have some bolt-on parts, a couple wings, a nose, but I think they can get this one fixed. But I feel bad for Dan. Two races on G-Force, two bad flips. Yeah, I was just going to say our last broadcast at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway with the Knights of Thunder. Uh, that's how he ended up, up in corners three and four. 
the crash in three and four was a lot harder yeah. than this one. This should be a an interesting shot. So, oh, okay. Yeah, DJ got up after contact with the car in front of him, and Dan really had nowhere to go. And almost an innocent bystander yeah. there as Dan Nanico. Hodge has climbed out of his race car. Mark Rinaldi, the track owner, directing traffic over there as Dan has a look around that Nitro 54 sprint car. He doesn't look to be, he was in great spirits at Southern Ontario Motor Speedway when he took that tumble. I mean, he got out of that car. And, I'm not putting another race on TV. Every time he's on me, you fucking talk your shit. And uh, Clint, maybe we'll turn off your microphone. Just from time to time. So up and over goes Dan Anacoke. And uh, if we can get that overhead shot again, Spencer, that, that was kind of the, yeah, right here. DJ gets into the left rear of Corey Turner, and then the car shoots to the right and right into the tracks of Dan Anacoke and puts him up and over. And uh, Dan, Dan had such a wild ride in corner number four, came out of it clean and straight, and then I felt bad he gets down in corner one, and, and really none of his doing there. And, and, and the car handled so poorly in three and four like it was hard for him to get that through the turn you've got to be psyching yourself up the whole way down the front stretch okay yep. i've got to do something a little bit different that just did not work in three and four and before you even get the chance to try you're uh, eating the right rear tire of dj christie and going for a big old tumble so it looks like he's pretty close to being to the pit area and we should be able to get these cars Push back off in a moment. And I think that'll take a few moments, so won't we take a, a short break here on GeForce TV? We'll be back with this third qualifying heat for the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Sausages and Street Dogs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. A guy like this who relies on his truck for work knows that his truck will take care of him if he takes care of his truck. And WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. From floor liners to no-drill mud flaps to tech liner for your truck bed to bump step to the handy under seat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at weathertech.ca. Back live at Brighton Speedway on GeForce TV for the back half of the Labor Day Classic Weekend. Heat race number three for the 360 Sprint Cars about to get back underway. Yeah, hopefully Dan Nanakoke and that team will be able to make repairs or roll out a backup car for tonight's feature event. Everybody who shows up for the 360 Sprint Cars tonight will qualify as there's just a full field of cars. So if he's able to get a car back together or find one that he can drive, he can start that feature event, Greg. Looks like we'll come back to the green flag with Tyler Rand, the leader over Sean Evans, Bailey Hurd in that third position. Corey Turner fourth, DJ Christie fifth, and Mac Demand in the sixth spot. Sean Evans in the 87X. He took a wild ride off of corner number two in hot laps earlier. And uh, if you've been here, you'll know there's a creek back there. I don't know as though the car went into the creek, but he was right on the banks. Closer than I would want to be. Wow, Sean Evans immediately with a power move to the outside. Tyler Rand with a good drive off of turn number two, maintains that advantage through three and four, but Sean Evans not to be denied. He'll take the lead. 
to the top spot goes the driver to Scotland, Ontario. The Insta Panels 87X, your leader over Tyler Ram. But Ram fights back on that bottom side. He's got a number of laps on this speedway and a bunch of different cars. Fantastic side by side battle for the lead out here. Rand gets off. It looks like turn number four a little bit better than Sean Evans. At, well, okay, he gets off turn two pretty well also. Good battle up front for that top spot as we come by. It's halfway home, four in, four to go. Sean Evans out front over Tyler Rand. Bailey Hurd running in the third spot over Corey Turner, DJ Christie, and Mac DeMann. How about that Bailey Hurd, the yellow number 70? Those are three top-notch sprint car drivers that he is driving away from in the third position. Yeah, Bailey's got a ton of talent, and he's shown that in the micro sprints, and now early on he started in the crate sprint division and looks very solid and not out of place by any means in these 360 sprint cars. Holding on to that third spot as we reach the two laps to go. Six laps complete, two laps remaining. Now Corey Turner has put some distance between himself and DJ Christie. Back in the fifth spot, Mac Demand still back in seventh. Sorry, sixth. Whoa, Demand catches that inside tire. That could have ended poorly. He's trying everything he can to get some sort of run on this track. He can't find anything out in front. Checkered flag for Sean Evans. He'll pick up the win over Tyler Rand. Bailey Hurd third. Corey Turner, DJ Christie, and Mac DeMann complete the running order. And the final qualifying heat for the Pinties. Knights of Thunder 360 sprint cars. So Sean Evans goes from the drink to the checkered flag and qualifying heat race number one. Tyler Rand second. Corey Turner third, Bailey Heard fourth, DJ Christie fifth, sixth goes to Mac DeMann, and Dan Nanakoke will be credited with seventh position. Thunderstocks up next. Thunderstocks on a slick racetrack. Oh, so much fun to watch. Heat race number one looks like Brock Gregory is going to line up on the pole. He's from Trenton in the Oasis Fuels. Number one to his outside will be Dave Barrett out of Colburn, the science flooring, number 97. Going from the third position, James Turgeon in the 87 to his outside, the 03, Justin Ramsey from Belleville in the APC KD transmission machine. Starting in the fifth spot out of Roslyn, in the Silbro Construction 88, Patrick Easton. And starting in position number six, out of Brighton, the excess storage, number 85, Austin Reed. Going from the seventh position aboard car number 19, that's Corey White out of Brighton in the Tyendinaga propane machine. And starting in the eighth and final position, it's going to be Brandon Gregory tonight in the nine. So a driver change there, Brandon Gregory in the nine tonight. So we got Gregory's at both ends of the field. Brock Gregory going to start from the pole position with Dave Barrett up on the outside of that front row. Next time by, the green flag is going to fly. Justin Ramsey, he's put some miles on this year. He has run a lot of races at the other end of Lake Ontario with some success. Guys, just a note here from Sprint Car Tech. Tyler Rand had a great run, finished second. The nose wing too far forward. He'll be disqualified out of that heat race, and that will probably take him out of the redraw. Wow, that's tough. That's tough on a racetrack that probably wasn't a, a big issue for him, but, it, I mean, it's a rule's a rule, and, and uh, it gets broken, and you pay the penalty for it. Probably just a simple error. Just to clarify, it will take him out of the redraw. I said probably because we didn't know if he was going to be in or not. Away we go. Green flag out here for Thunderstock Heat Race number one. Out in front, it's the number one of Brock Gregory over Justin Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey made a slick move on that start to work in between, sort of thread the needle on Dave Barrett there and take over that second spot. And now he's going to set out to battle with Brock Gregory for the lead. Ramsey goes up to the high side of the racetrack. We've seen cars pass up there, but it's a slow process, Greg. Lap after lap, you've got to inch your way forward. 
If anyone can do it, it's Justin Ramsey in that 0-3 machine. Yeah, he's pedaling it right now in that 0-3, working to the outside of Gregory Barrett right now, holding down third, but Austin Reed closing the gap on him, and a good four-car battle back there for fifth. Wow, look at that. Looks like they're still on pace lap formation, just at high, high speeds. Three wide through turns three and four. Gregory getting the advantage for the time being in that nine machine, but they're all locked up directly behind James Turgeon in that 87. Turgeon. Meanwhile, at the front, Ramsey gets a good launch off of four. He'll use the outside and take the lead just as the caution flag comes out. Rollins are Brandon Gregory in that nine machine as he comes to rest on the back straightaway. Nothing fixes an ailing race car like a yellow flag. <laughs> Brandon Gregory gets that one fired back up, join the tail of the field. We get back at it, four laps in, four to go here for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. So Ramsey and Brock Gregory will make up the first row. Dave Barrett and Austin Reed back there in row number two. See if Austin Reed can make a similar move to what Justin Ramsey did on the original start, launching from the fourth spot and kind of splitting the gap between the outside pole sitter and that third place car of Barrett. So Gregory on that outside line with Ramsey on the bottom. Ramsey will take the top spot down the back stretch. Austin Reed does get a good run off the Outside line has third for the moment, but Barrett not giving it up. Yeah, Barrett drove it deep down into turn number three, maintaining his track position on the insides of Reed's, having to run higher on the racetrack as they reach the halfway point of heat number one for the Thunderstocks. Ramsey, Gregory, Reed, and Barrett right now in the top four. White hanging on to the fifth spot in the car number 19. Getting dicey at the back again, two wide, looking to make it three wide. But out in front, Justin Ramsey pulling away from Brock Gregory in that number one. Gregory's done a nice job to hang on to second. Now Barrett's under attack for the fourth position from the 19 of Corey White. He's got one more lap to try to get it done, Greg. Ramsey pulling away now from Brock Gregory over Austin Reed, Barrett and White. White working that outside line. Goes up top down the back stretch and trying to take that fourth spot away. Meanwhile, at the front, checkers out for Justin Ramsey. Brock Gregory second. Austin Reed will cross the line third. Barrett will stay in the fourth spot. Corey White fifth. And then we'll find the 88 of Patrick Easton, James Turgeon, and Brandon Gregory completing the running order. Fun race to watch, though. Good battle there. And you know what? A great battle is a great battle, whether it's for the lead or whether it's for sixth place in a race. It really doesn't matter. I mean, we get more excited when it's for the lead, but it's just fun to watch these drivers try to find grip out of it. Team race number two getting ready to come out onto the racetrack. On the pole for this one out of Napanee in the Castle Rock Crane. Car number 16, it'll be Caitlin O'Blenis. Lining up to her outside in the 76, that'll be Cody Driscoll. Starting in the third position, the 74 machine. I don't have a name on the 74. 74 Thunderstock. Is you that Mike Lucas? Might possibly be Mike Lucas. I'll check uh, scoring as they come by. You carry on. On the outside will be the 72 of Doug Anderson out of Trenton, the CMS Capital Mechanical Services machine. Starting in the fifth position in the 18, that'll be Kyle Anderson out of Trenton, the Hunts landscaping car. And his outside in the 26, that'll be Craig Hanley out of Shannonville, the Peacemaker 420. And starting in the seventh and final spot in car number zero, Tyler French of Belleville, the Oasis Fuels, Green Grass Oasis, MB Tire number zero. And it will be Mike Lucas in the 74. Yeah, thanks to Hunter Hurtandy who, who messaged us in the meantime, but his timing and scoring kicks in. Technology is an amazing well, the, thing. The problem was I was just going off the lineup sheet. As soon as I looked, I'm like, oh, okay, that's Mike Lewis. <laughs> we get two dependent on our Whoa. lineup sheets, and wow, that was a ragged start. Uh-oh. And Caitlin Oblenis will get into the front stretch wall. Fairly significant damage on the right front here. Left rear tire cut down. 
Yeah, that was looking gnarly from the start, and it just got worse from there for Caitlin O'Blenis. Comes to a stop right there where the staircase leads you down onto the racetrack. They head to victory lane, but Caitlin's going to back that car up. Love it. That's what you do. Back it up, drive it away. Now, she does have a flat left rear tire, which hopefully the track official told her. Let's have a look at this replay. And things had gone awry here right from the start. And initially, it was Doug Anderson that they had, they had gone terrible for. So in that contact, that must be where the left rear went flat. I wonder what happened to Doug Anderson to make him go so sideways. Yeah, that, on that look, it had already happened, what happened to the 72. Okay, so it was actually just the track yeah. that flattened that left rear. Watch the yellow 72. Down into... Tyler French, uh, no, sorry, Mike Lucas. You run such low air pressure in the left sides that when Caitlin O'Blen is spun to the right, it pulled the bead, the tire right off the bead. Well, guys, here's the problem for Caitlin O'Blen. She's got the tire pushed right up into the bumper, and uh, they're going to need a bit of muscle down here, but they should be able to get this one pulled apart and send the 16 back to the track. But if you see it right here, guys, there, that tire. Get in there, Ryan, get a good look at that. That tire is about to pop, guys. That's a very jagged, sharp piece of steel. They'll get that one fixed up and take her back to the pits. She should be able to get out here without issue. There's a special drawer in every toolbox at the races, Greg, where you keep the BFHs. You pull them out and you just start whacking. Bend things back from where they, from where they came to where they came, from where they went. <laughs> BFH is a big friggin' hammer. Uh, I thought it was a hamburger. <laughs> it could be without him. Because when everybody I'll else goes to work, Adam breaks out the BFHs. I, j I just want to thank you, Clint, for stopping at McDonald's because I'm up here sitting downwind to the fans <laughs> and Adam. <laughs> There's a bit of a haze going on in the booth here. The booths get smaller and smaller as the night goes on. Have you ever noticed that? It does. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm hearing a report there's a flat tire. Yeah, your dad, Dale, just grabbed me and said, hey, that flat left rear was going on on the parade lab. On the parade lab, yeah. So back underway, Mike Lucas out in front over Doug Anderson. Go down through one and two. And Craig Lu Hanley back there in third. Lucas glued that car to the inside groove. There in four, he comes up off the bottom just a little bit, but he's going to go directly back to the inside. Is Doug Anderson. A little bit of bumper tag off of turn number four. Anderson hugging the inside. Oh, a little bit too much contact in two. And even Doug Anderson knew it. He backed off to give Mike Lucas a chance to correct that loose race car. I think he knew if Lucas had spun out there, he was going to get in trouble. Lucas holds it down. Doug Anderson all over the back bumper. Hanley and French right there side by side battling for third. This time battle will be three laps on the board and five to go. Tyler French doing a nice job on the outside. He'll pick up that third spot. Let's see if he can close the door, and he cannot close the door on Craig Hanley. But as well as that car's working on the outside, he might not want to. Drives to the inside of Doug Anderson down into turn number three. A fantastic battle for the lead. Lucas, French, Anderson, Hanley all fighting it out right now for the top spot. Three wide in the corner they go. Lucas holding on to it out in front in the 74. Here comes a great launch by French in the middle. I can't believe the forward bite Tyler French is able to get off the exit of turn number two. Equally as stout off a of turn four, Tyler French has driven through this field to take the lead. Here comes Craig Hanley now to the inside of Doug Anderson. He bobbles a little bit. They'll lose ground on the leaders. Lucas and French down in corner three and four. Close call there. Lucas lets off just a little bit. Two to go now. 
French with the lead. Handley now working the outside of Mike Lucas in the 74. Doug Anderson back in the fourth spot in that 72. He's got to be wondering what went wrong with this heat race. He's not used to going backwards. White flag is out one more time around for Tyler French in the zero. For Craig Hanley, Mike Lucas, Doug Anderson. As they work it down the back stretch. Tyler French knows how to get it done here at Brighton Speedway. Multi-time champion in the Comp 4 division. And here he goes with a checkered flag over Craig Hanley, Mike Lucas, and Doug Anderson. Kyle Anderson crosses the line in fifth. Cody Driscoll finished sixth and Caitlin O'Glennis. Credited with the seventh position as we get ready for the third and final qualifying heat. The Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks from here at Brighton Speedway. Glad you could join us here on GeForce TV. I'm Greg Kelman. With me, Adam Ross down in the infield, Clinton Jeffrey. As we continue to bring you the second half of the Labor Day Classic weekend from Brighton Speedway. Always great to come home here in Brighton. As we get ready with heat race number three, starting from the pole out of Ameliasburg in the Kafka Court Barristers, Upper Canada Waterproofing 08. It's Angie Kirby to the outside in car number seven. That'll be Rick Phillips. Rick Phillips in the seven. Going from the third position from Belleville, the Green Grass Oasis, Oasis Fuels number 17, Jeff Humphrey. And to the outside will be the 37, which I do not have on my list here. So we'll have to try and get a name for the number 37. Apologize for that. Adam Turner lines up in the fifth spot in car number 92 out of Ameliasburg at the Village Variety. Lots of line traffic markings, number 92. To the outside, the 40. It'll be Ron Watforth. Ronnie Watforth in the 40, the Peacemaker 420 machine. And going from that final position, Dion Riley out of Port Hope in the JBC Contracting, number 46. And I, yeah, I thought that was wrong. It's coming up on uh, scoring monitor. That is Adam Switzer in the 46. As soon as I saw that, I thought, nope, that's... And Terry Blight in the yep. 37. Terry Blight in the 37 tonight. Thank you. Did you just, were you just polite with me on purpose? Was it that was, a it was an accident. Yeah, I, don't I forgot who it. I was talking to. It's the fumes in here. Kirby with a good start. She'll lead the way off of turn number two, but she comes off the bottom just a little bit, opens that door, but nothing doing there. Kirby gonna lead the way in three and four again, sliding up that racetrack just a little bit. She'll go directly back to the bottom on the straightaway. Angie Kirby struggling a little bit to keep that car glued to the inside of the racetrack, but they're stacked up behind her side by side for the second spot. Angie Kirby on the bottom side, Jeff Humphrey on the outside as they work down into corner number one. Turner back there and third. Oh, Kirby gets sideways and Humphrey gets a piece of the 0 8. And on the outside goes Ron Wadforth. Ronnie Wadforth in the 40. <laughs> Ronnie just sends it down into the corner and then sort of thinks about what he wants to do from there. So Angie Kirby has fallen back to the fourth position, the top three driving away. Jeff Humphrey, your leader over Wadforth, and now Turner closing the gap. Cross flags. Go up, four in, four to go. Wadforth trying to close the gap on Jeff Humphrey, bringing Adam Turner along with him. Adam Turner taking a wider arc coming off the corner and then charges right down into the corner. So spectacular to watch. He's using a little bit more racetrack, trying to get that car to rotate get a run on that second position. This time he's trying to higher line all together on the racetrack. Down through three and four, the top three are separated by a few car lengths each. Angie Kirby is settled into that fourth spot in the 08 machine. This time by, we should see the white flag. Or it will be two to go this time. No white flag coming out. Predicting scoreboards, Jeff Humphrey, the leader over Ronnie Wadforth, Adam Turner, Angie Kirby, and Rick Phillips in the seven. Final time down the back straightaway for Jeff Humphrey. 
Sticks that car to the bottom of three and four. Rolls it off the turn hard on the throttle, and he'll take that win. Watford's going to finish in the second spot. Adam Turner third, Angie Kirby in fourth. Rounding out the top five will be the number seven of Ricky Phillips. That concludes qualifying for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstock division. And we'll get set with the comp fours coming up. The Bills Johns comp four division. Now there will be, uh, there was an announcement this week that the mini stocks were able to compete tonight with the comp fours, but their positions will be taken out of the final running order for the points for the comp four division. So two divisions running right now at Brighton Speedway, comp fours and mini stocks as they had to put a diverse collection of cars in both. And it, it's really challenging to combine them. I mean, there's so many varieties now of four-cylinder cars that these teams can go out there and, and make available. I would not want to be a technical inspector. The starting lineup here. Looks like starting from the pole will be Tommy Bailey in the 77. To the outside will be the 33 of Adam Milton. Lining up from the third spot, the double zero is Ken Evans. Devin Kippen in the 43 will start from the fourth position. Going fifth, Cody Sager in the 20. Tristan Boutier in the 19 on the outside in the sixth starting spot. Starting seventh, the five of Eric Conlon. And going from eighth, the 35 of Taja. Farrell Sonnenberg. With the green flag. First of two qualifying heats for the Bills Johns Comp Force. Adam Milton on the outside coming to the green flag had a great run. But it will not turn into the lead heading down the back straightaway. Tommy Bailey, the leader off of corner number four with Devin Kippen in tow. And that 33 of Adam Milton. One, two, and three pulling away from the rest of the pack here on lap number one. Yeah, Bailey, Kippen, and Milton with an advantage. Taja Farrell Sonnenberg with a good opening lap, working her way up into the top five. Although I say her and I shouldn't make that assumption, Greg, because Taja is not a name I'm familiar with. As uh, I believe Taja gets into trouble there in turn number two and drops to the back of the field, but able to rejoin this race. Bailey out in front over Devin Kippen. Then it's Milton riding back there in the third spot. And Jordan Baldwin has been able to gain ground here in the 19 in that fourth position and I had the wrong name there it is Jordan Baldwin in the 19 tonight okay so Baldwin in fourth looking to close in on that third spot doing a nice job Adam Milton in the third position Baldwin fourth about eight car lengths but Baldwin just gobbles up that distance going down into the corner not as fast on the corner exit but he sure does get down into the center well Bailey Kippen one and two, and that's the way they've been since the drop of the green flag. Kippen's right there all over the back end of the 44 as they work it off the fourth corner. It's time by. It's two laps left to go. Kippen looking high, looking low, taking a look at what uh, what's going to get him to the checkered flag here. He's got a good run off the second corner that time. Well, Kippen sends the car deep into the turn then tries to get pointed down the track before Baldwin can, but it hasn't worked, or Bailey rather, hasn't worked for him just yet. Totally different racetrack than what they're used to on a regular Saturday night. Of course, a whole night of racing on the surface last night. But these two drivers have it hooked up. Bailey has the lead, but here comes Kippen at the line. Draws up wow. alongside. Bailey gets the win over Kippen. Nice job, though, by Kippen to make it close in the end. Milton will finish in third over Baldwin in the fourth spot. And then the 20 of Cody Sager. And then the five. I, and I appreciate you. Uh, the 35, rather, of Taja Farrell-Sonnenberg. 
And I appreciate you looking that up for me. Greg is thrashing on his computer because you ever say something, Greg, and then immediately think, I might be absolutely wrong there. And we're also curious about the pronunciation of her name, but we're going with Taja until we're corrected otherwise. All right, heat race number two set to come out. For the Bills, Johns Comp Force. Going from the pole, Aiden Fletcher in the 42 Junior. And lining up on the outside will be Travis Connor Fox in the 24. Starting from the third position, the 17, Emily Wood Peterson. And starting in fourth, Zach Humphrey in the 55. Josh French will go from the fifth spot in the 08. And to the outside, Caleb Severan in the 12. And then we'll have Kyle Gregory in the 97. It looks like we have a late addition. And I think that's Keith Dunk in the 22. Where, where are you reading that off of? That's a Google document. Why am I not seeing that on the same document? Comp 4. Not mini stocks. Oh, I'm looking at mini stocks oh. up there. There we go. I see what you did, Greg Callan. Sabotage. Coming to the green flag next time around, so. It looks like we have some changes to those names. It's Mark Supernant in the 17. So that's a correction. People have to, well, hopefully people have to realize. They don't have to, but we hope they will. We do the best that we can with what we're given. We use technology to our best advantage because we want to present the right names to people. But we have limitations, Greg Calvin. That we do. Severe. Aiden Fletcher leads him down into corner number one. With that 24, Travis Connor Fox in the second spot. Working the outside line. Zach Humphrey's got it hooked up in that lime green number 55. And I didn't think this gray car was going to make the corner. That 0 8 of Josh French drove it so deep into turn three, I didn't think it was going to stay on the racetrack, but it did. Josh French up to that fourth position. Josh has got so many laps on this track and is so good in this racetrack, and he's looking for anything he can right now, and he's got it flying on the outside line. Lost a little ground that time, though. Yeah, ran out of real estate there. Kyle Gregory came up off the corner, and he can run whatever line he wants, but it was sort of looked to be right where Josh French wanted to be in that 0-8, so they came together at the exit of four. What a battle. Nobody able to get away in this one. Aiden Fletcher continues to lead the way over Zach Humphrey. Humphrey right there in that lime green 55, knocking on the back door, and now Josh French is right there in the mix. A minute ago, he was back. About fifth or sixth, and now he's right in the thick of it for the lead, and he's got a great run right behind Aiden Fletcher. Little contact there between the top two and Josh French trying to make it the top three battle as they go three wide through turn number two. Josh French, high, wide, and handsome. And here comes the 55 at the bottom side, Zach Humphrey. Aiden Fletcher stuck in the middle. French will lead the lap. With now three laps left to go. Oh, wow, Josh French right across the nose of the Aiden Fletcher, number 42. Once he's out in front, he hasn't really driven away either, Greg. The battle's still on between the second and third place drivers. Oh, one's going to go around down the corner. Kyle Gregory will spin and bring us under the caution flag. What a battle up front. Some spirited driving out there. The leads to Kyle Gregory in that 97 going around. He sits in turn one, I think, contemplating what had just gone on out there. That the 08 was doing exactly what you said. It, we hear the term high, wide, and handsome. Man, he was wound up around the outside just flying. It looks almost on the edge of being out of control, but just so fast. You're exactly right, and that, that's what it looks like to us. I imagine to him he has a plan behind the yep. wheel. Obviously some bigger issues for the 97 of Kyle Gregory will need a hook. 
So that will put us under the caution flag here in the second and final qualifying heat for the comp fours in the final qualifying heat of the night. We got a bit of a break in action. I asked Spencer if he could grab this photo. Just want to say congratulations go to stock car Steve Bilo, who was honored last night down the Brockville, Ontario Speedway. There's Steve there with uh, one of Rick Young's photos and 50 years of racing for stock car Steve. I remember as a kid, just a little kid, sitting in the stands at Can-Am Speedway, Brockville Speedway, and seeing stock car Steve racing against guys like Marcel LaFrance and Dave Heaslip and Doug the Ox Carlisle and, and those names. He's still at it at Brockville and, and a beautiful looking race car and they honored him last night down in their victory lane and I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, stock car Steve, uh, as cool as they come. And, and racetrack should honor that sort of thing. I mean, as a fan coming out on a Saturday night, imagine not missing a Saturday. You imagine you come each and every time. Now imagine doing that for every year you've been alive, right? The, the, the level of commitment is phenomenal. And there are fans. I'm not saying there's not fans like yep. that because I assure you there are fans who won't miss a race here. We appreciate them. But the level of commitment is, is phenomenal. So we see Kyle Gregory on the hook now in the 97 and uh, disappointed down there. Got that one up and we'll take a pit side and he'll hope to get it ready for feature action, but look on his face says otherwise, I think. Oh, there, look at the right rear looks maybe a little out of, little out of whack. I believe the technical term we've been using lately, Greg, is caddy wampus. Yes. I don't want to get all <laughs> physicist on you or anything. <laughs> Rear end's hanging lower than yours right now. <laughs> oh, dear. What a beautiful night. September 5th. It's my late mom's birthday, Greg. But thankfully, my mother had a twin sister. So I'm able to wish Aunt Dottie a happy birthday now still. Nice. But, uh, so there's still reason to celebrate on this day. But that makes me happy. Up after this, B Main for the action sprint tour. I believe that will be our only B Main tonight. I think the Stingers are up before they change the order of one oh, of the okay. races. So we may okay. see the Stingers come out before that. Josh French hard on the loud pedal coming to the green flag and then immediately moves up the racetrack. We haven't seen anybody do that out front, climb up from the bottom of the track. So Josh French working a little bit higher. Zach Humphrey. Going to drive that green 55 to the inside and narrowly miss the race leader. White flag goes in the air for Josh French with Humphrey there in the second spot. Aiden Fletcher trying to get by him on this final trip around. You've got to have a lot of trust if you're Zach Humphrey. Not only that your car is eventually going to turn, but that by the time you cross paths, Zach Humphrey would be gone. Humphrey going to hang on for the win. I'm sorry. Josh French going to hang on for the win. Humphrey back in that second spot. Aiden Fletcher finishes third. Want to wish April Lucky a happy birthday tonight. One of those regular fans here at Brighton Speedway. Here most every single night, so happy birthday, April. Stingers are heading out onto the racetrack for their feature event here tonight, and it will be 12 laps in distance, and we'll do our very best to get a line up here. I, I think we can do it, Greg. I'm, I'm I think you can in. do it, Adam. I'm going to pitch in. You've done so much tonight. I've, I've enjoyed it. And if I could read even one of the numbers, <laughs> I would do my best. I can tell you the 27 is Kendall Hayes out there. The 17 is Gavin Rushlow. Can't for the life of me make out the number of the, the pole sitter. Shane Vale in that number 12. Jordan Pickle back there in the 93, the silver and green 93. 
Yeah, I don't know why Jordan disappeared off of my 14 list. Is the first car out there. 14. That's Ethan Dory. Ethan Dory behind the wheel of that number 14. And working back through the field, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the inside row because I can sort of see them from here, Greg. The 95 is Chris Lamely. Behind Chris is the number two of Frank Conlon. The 87 is Dawson Beaudry. The 13 is William Vadito. The 10 is Michelle Clavo. The 31 is Sean Gibson. Can you see the number on the car behind the 31 at the back of the field, that orange and black with a white stripe, Greg? Not a chance. Oh, All right, you know, I don't feel as bad. So the outside, Gavin Rushlow in that 17. The number six is Tom Cole. On the outside of row number three. I think that's going to be Robert Jenner in the 79, is it? That or Ethan Dory in the 78. Mm. It just made my night. We can barely hear the officials in the next room, <laughs> but the race director just said officially on the one-way radio, no shenanigans. I love it. No shenanigans. We don't want your cars going cattywampus. <laughs> they just got read the riot act uh, previous to that. That was part of the riot act. And who was it? That's the 78 so of Ethan second. Dory. The 07 machine is Megan Gold and the 67J. Josh Whitney. Then the 79 of Robert Jenner. The 99 we did not have a name on, nor the 77. The 7 we can tell you is Josh Toon. And th these this division does not use transponder scoring, so Normally, our cheat sheet is our computer screen, which, which has the electronic scoring and the names pop up. We're like, ha, we got it. Does not happen in this case. The 11 back there. Do we have a name on the 11, Adam? Yes, Bailey Farrell in the 11. As a white flag comes out next time by, we'll go to the green flag in 12 laps for the Stinger division. Which is brought to you by Quinty Septic. And I, I'm I'm excited for this feature just by what the race director's saying. Yeah. Still, still saying, no nonsense, no hitting each other. If we see shenanigans and nonsense, count me <laughs> in. What a bunch of hooligans. Ready to go, 12 laps. And we are underway for this entry level division, the Quintiseptic Stingers here at Brighton Speedway. Megan Golden got a great start up to the sixth spot. Gavin Rushlow on the outside, gonna take the lead down into turn number three for the first time. Rushlow will lead lap number one. Bit of a breakaway there. Yeah, Rush Lowe and Ethan Dory right now, one and two. Evan Minnie in the 17E running in the third spot. I believe that's Evan Minnie. But a great side-by-side -side battle for the lead with Rush Lowe up on the outside. And Greg, who did you say was on the inside? Dory? Dory in the 14. That's, yeah. Is it not? Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> Dory and Rush Lowe threading the needle through traffic glued together side to side that was a lot of fun dory gets the advantage take a half car length lead into turn number one over gavin rushlow so it's dory rushlow right now mini in the third position and then back to megan golden i believe running in the fourth spot in zero seven yeah golden got a great start in the zero seven as you mentioned Josh Whitney now riding in the fifth spot. And then Lamely just outside the top five, running in sixth, and that's silver number 95. 
Bad break break down in front for the 13. That's William Vitado pulling the 13 into the infield. So Dory opened up that couple car length advantage, and that's where it remains right now over Gavin Rushlow, the top three, closing on this slower traffic ahead of them, but sort of maintaining that same gap they've had since the opening lap. Dory continuing to lead with eight laps on the board. And four remaining, I believe. Is that possible? Well, the scoreboard is not right. I, can I was going to say, that's, that can't be possible. Here we go. But we're close. we got to be about line. halfway. Six, yeah. six laps this time by. Dory pulling away now from Gavin Rushlow, but encountering the back end of this field. So it's who can find their way through the traffic faster. Right now, Dory doing a nice job, but a couple of cars between himself and second place, Gavin Rushlow, as he comes off a of turn number four, he'll swing to the outside to overtake a few more. Whoa, no, he's not. Switches from the outside to the inside. Crossover move on that slower car, but a nice bit of reflexes there for Ethan Dory. Dory now working the back end of Tom Cole in the six. We'll look to put him a lap down as he works off a of corner number four. It's another lap on the board, and the driver on the charge right now, I believe, is... Nope, the 11 is not for position. I thought the 11 was up there. No, I don't think so. Gavin Rushlow working through that traffic. He's now got himself to where Dory is the next car in front of him on the racetrack. Dory is working on the inside of the seven of Josh Toon to put him a lap down, but it's taken him a couple of turns to clear the Toon number seven. Well, I'd like to know about the 11 because the 11 of Bailey Farrell is running faster right now than that 17. Uh, Evan Minnie, who was running in third, but again, no transponder scoring here, so we've lost track on where he might be. If he is, he'd be running third right at the moment. Oh, trouble for the leader, Ethan Dory, trying to get around. Dawson Beaudry in that 87 machine, not able to clear Dawson quickly. That's allowing Gavin Rushlow to try to get around Toon and make a run on that top spot. Contact out of turn number two. Dawson oh. Beaudry goes around and almost collects the race leader, but the race leader is the one that caused that little melee. So <laughs> That was some shenanigans, I think, there, Adam. That was <laughs> shenanigans. Ethan Dory leads with two laps left to go. Second place right now would be the 17, the plain 17, Gavin Rushlow. And then, we believe it's the oh. 17. Oh. Rushlow tried to turn down into the corner and the car just went hard right. He pitched the car down into the turn and all of a sudden, it lurched to the right, went up the racetrack. Almost went over there as it teetered on the banking. Puts us under the caution for the first time. So Ethan Dory in the 14 is the leader, but that was the second place runner, Gavin Rushlow. The car is angry, angry. I don't know if that was steam or dust. Okay, I thought he might have blown a rad hose or something, but no, the dust is cleared there for Gavin Rushlow, but I have a feeling his night might be over. Something is wrong and he is upset in that race car. Pounding the steering wheel up there in turn number three. So they gave him a nudge at one point. He's kind of looking over his shoulder as though he expects another push to get down off of that berm. I can't see the left front, but I think there might be some issue with it, Greg. I could be crazy. Well, we know that, but in this instance. Fair point. Okay. Sometimes you push, sometimes you pull. And it came undone. I, I, like the trunk almost got pulled out. <laughs> The official pointing Ethan Dory to go on, get. I think there's some debris up there on the outside of the turn, and uh, I don't know as though they see it there. 
There's a chunk of... Oh, there, there they come. There yeah. is a big chunk of something, something. Flat left front on that car, too, guys. There you go, Adam. A disappointing end to a solid second-place run for Gavin Rushlow just comes up a lap short. All right, so they're going to straighten out the lead lap cars, and it will be Lamely second, and then Whitney in third behind race leader Ethan Dory, Evan and Minnie. Minnie. So that, Jordan Pickle. That clarifies to me that the 11 was a lap down, but the way the 11 of Bailey Farrell was running at speed with the leaders, I had thought that car maybe was on the lead lap. Well, and sometimes for some of the, and I don't know if it's a younger driver or a newer driver, but sometimes the leaders get around you and you learn what the line is and, and where your turning points and acceleration points are. That's how you learn some things. That's how I learn. Just follow you, Adam. You don't want to do that. Not tonight. <laughs> Socially not distant enough. So the white flag comes out next time around. We'll get right back at it. And again, the lap number on the scoreboard is not official for those in attendance tonight. At last, I saw it was two laps left to go. And we should mention, we're not going to be able to come back this year for, for Apple Fest. And that's terribly disappointing with scheduling conflicts. But I'm super excited to see that Brighton Speedway has signed on Brian's Auction as the headline sponsor for Apple Fest this year. Hopefully for years to come, a great partnership. Brian's Auction has a Trenton location. And I think it's a great partnership they've made with Brighton Speedway. Back into the green flag. It's green and white flag at the same time. So this is for all the marbles. Ethan Dory. Lamely on the outside. Whitney following suit. They're four wide back there for the fifth spot. Do whatever you want. Just don't lift. Dory going to try to streak to victory, and he'll do so. Lamely comes home in second. Some of them don't come home at all as they are stacked up there in three and four. A little bit of carnage on the closing lap. But that was an exciting Stingers feature. I don't think they know it's over yet. <laughs> Still racing around here to the finish, but Ethan Dory is going to pick up the win. We got more parts up in corner number one. That's a full bumper. I, I think that was a shenanigan free race, by and large. For the most part. Yeah, I mean, there's some action which you're going to get. You're out here for a good time on a Sunday night. I almost said on a Saturday night. I caught myself. So Ethan Dory will make his way to victory lane, although I believe he's lined up ready to go to the pit area. <laughs> Doesn't want to miss any of the fight. <laughs> I could come to victory lane, but that's not where the shenanigans end. <laughs> well, the victor's headed to the pit area. And uh, the debris being picked up, I believe, up next will be B Main for the action sprint tour. Although that I cannot confirm as of yet. I believe the action sprint tour B Main comes up next. I believe there will be a brief intermission. And then I think the action sprint tour A Main will immediately follow. Wow. Wow. That, Watching the replay. <laughs> you cannot get busier than Shane Vale did on that oh. final lap. Spencer, show that again. Watch the number 12 Shane Vale off of turn number four coming to the green and white together. This is like October and the first time we have a little bit of black ice. Watch this replay here in a moment. Let's see if we can get that. Here it comes. Up way at the top of your screen, so he gets hooked a little bit off of four. Turn to the right, turn to the left, don't lift, turn to the right, turn to the left, don't lift, turn to the right. <laughs> Look at that right rear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that right rear leaned over about 45 degrees. 
It's the little things, Greg. And that, that to me, <laughs> that was a night full of excitement there. We may have two B mains here, in fact. I'm not positive. Because the, uh, the sheet that I got said B main number one. But that's the only sheet they gave us. They give me a lot of we sheets. We are clearly too dependent on sheets. Okay, I'm, I'm in the Action Sprint Tour uh, communications portal, and there is one B main. And Clinton, can you confirm how, how many will transfer from this? I was just going to jump in. Yeah, confirm one B main. If we had four heats, we would have taken five out, so four will transfer. So top four and 11 cars will line up in this one, and we'll give you the rundown of the drivers competing in it. Starting from the pole out of Rockwood, Ontario, in the radio shuttle Neely Auto, number 74, it's Rob Neely to his outside from Port Perry. In the town line, MFG, car number 4B, it's Daryl Peltier. Starting in the third position out of Sydney, Ontario, in the Draper Doors, Penny Blake home team, number 9, it's Luke Stewart. And the outside going from the fourth spot, it's the driver of Delhi in the Paris Factory Rides, Kevin Koontz, Matt Coe, number 49C, Cody Smith. Starting in fifth, out of Brighton, the Apex, Apex Graphic Design and Printing, Midfield Transportation 39 of Jonah Mutton. And starting in the sixth spot from Brantford in the National Building Group, JDL Distributing 49L, that's Lucas Smith. Starting in seventh, out of Brampton, the Lifto Limited Toyota Industry Equipment, 70MM, Dave McKnight, and to his outside, going from the eighth position out of Oshwick in the JR's Riverside Bait and Tackle, 77T of Tyler Paulus. Rolling off in ninth from Oshwick in the Styes Tree Service Enrium Dynamics 20, the Iceman, Johnny Miller, and to his outside, going from the 10th spot from Oshwick in the Nitro 54 variety, MK8, Matt Hill. And starting scratch on the field, starting in the 11th spot. Driver of Dorchester in the Horvath Auto Parts. Marshall Performance, 48M, Andrew Marshall. So again, 11 cars. Top four transfer into the A main. The most exciting race. <laughs> I'm all choked up, Adam. Literally. The most exciting race of any race night is the B main. Eleven. Normally, Greg's the one that, that breaks out laughing, and I revel in the fact that he's, he's rendered speechless, but both of us having a yuck. 11 cars going to start this one. Only four transfer to the A main. That means seven drivers going to load up after this race. Their nights will be done. All right, four cars into the A main from this race. White flag coming up this time by. I want to thank the folks that just brought me an ice cold bottle of water. I would have preferred a jar of the breeze, but we'll take the water. Rob Neely, Daryl Pelche, row number one. And Daryl Peltier was so proud last night of the fact that he qualified through his heat. And that's exciting when you get to share the journey of these drivers because of what they put out on social media. He's got his work cut out for him tonight. But top four finish is all that he needs. Pay no attention to the cars behind you. Green flag coming off of four. And we are on it. Rob Neely will take him down into corner number one with Luke Stewart in tow. Peltier on the outside, Cody Smith there as well. Peltier doing the right thing, just go forward. As long as there's nobody in front of you, you're going to get into the show. Daryl Peltier looking great here out front. He'll take the lead nearly back to second. 
Jonah Mutton right now sits in that fourth spot. It's a caution flag will come out. We've got one up to the top of the banking in corner number one. That's Cody Smith in the 49C. So that puts us under the caution flag with one on the book. You know, guys, Daryl Pelche from Sora around here, one of the most local drivers we've got here this weekend. Big crowd favorite tonight. Got some fans up in the stands, having some great runs. I got to talk to him after the opener at Humberstone, and he pretty much said, hey, I'm as pure as a rookie as they come. Just bought a car, went out, and we're learning this deal, and he looks really good right now, guys. I was going to say in the qualifying heats earlier this evening, uh, Daryl ran really well in that qualifying heat, although he did not make it into the A main directly. He really uh, looked good from where he started a year ago, where he, he looked very raw, just like he says, and, and uh, good for him the way he's picked it up so quickly. One good thing about entering the racing ranks at the sprint car level is not much of what you learn racing a mini stock or a thunder stock or a lot of other entry level classes translates Clinton into a crate sprint car. No, right? you're not wrong. I mean, look at Larry Gledhill, same type of thing. He's 62 years old, said never raced anything in my life, but I had to give it a shot. And, you know, to see these guys come in and run very well, as I saw Pelche, I'm like, wow, look at these guys go. And it's starting to, uh, I'm not going to say it out here, guys. I have not looked at the radar since yesterday or the day before. I'm not making any predictions. I'm always wrong. The radar shows that we're right on just the very edge of something right now, but... So the best thing they can do is, is keep the race cars out on the racetrack and try to keep it raceable for as long as they can. And yeah, it's a very small blip. Which should be a passing moment if you believe that sort of thing. Drivers continue to make laps around and Kind of hard to tell what the racing surface looks like, Clint. We'll let you uh, have a better look for us because from here with all the rubber down, it, it looked glossy anyways. Yeah, it's just spitting ever so slightly right now. I think we are good to go. I agree with Kyle McKenzie's race director call to keep this one going, but we are keeping an eye on it. If it opens up, they'll be quick to drop the yellow. Brings them back up to speed down into turn number one. Rob Neely right behind. A big move by Lucas Smith to the outside. No big surprise as the raindrops coming down a little bit harder here. Yeah, he's picking up here. And Daryl Pelche, see him going down the front stretch, kind of twitching the car. As they continue under the green flag. Oh, yeah, it's Johnny Miller down to the infield, catches the tractor tire. And we're going to go under the caution flag. You could tell that lap. It got squirrely for everyone. Challenging conditions for any type of a race car, but these sprint cars, even a crate sprint car, has a lot of horsepower out there. You don't want to mess around too much with that. So the yellow flag flies. You know, as As quickly as it starts, it does pass. You know, we have the advantage of seeing up into the lights there, Greg. So under the caution flag for a brief rain delay here on GeForce TV. Mark right. Speedway. Mark Rinaldi does not miss a thing. Immediately, the vehicles start to roll. They'll bring the Packer vehicles out onto the racetrack. It looks like they're going to send the sprint cars back to the staging area. The concessions are open, folks, so keep in mind if uh, you want to go down and grab anything, now is a great time. Smoking is not allowed in the grandstands, but you can at the turn four end or at the turn one end. There are smoking areas for your convenience. So we're going to have, a uh, obviously, a break here in the action. So while we do that, we'll break away here on GeForce TV. We'll be back from Brighton Speedway, the Labor Day Classic, here on GeForce TV.
A guy like this, who relies on his truck for work, knows that his truck will take care of him, that he takes care of his truck, and WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. From floor liners, to no drill mud flaps, to tech liner for your truck bed, to bump step, to the handy under seat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at weathertech.ca. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Hey guys, Jose here at Queenston Chevrolet Buick GMC in our service department. Welcome back to our car care series. If you are looking for quick, efficient, and quality maintenance for your vehicle's essential needs, our certified express service is here to help. Please follow me. Okay, so we're inside of our express service bay. You don't need an appointment to get your vehicle serviced here. It's an under 30 minute lube oil and filter change, all done by our GM certified technicians that know your vehicle inside and out. You can also get a complimentary car wash at the end of your service and get an alignment check done here in our express service bay. Okay guys, that's a wrap for episode number two of our car care series. Please visit our express service. Again, no appointments necessary for here, so we'll be waiting for you. Thanks. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Chicken Wings. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. What makes a trailer a misca? Is it the heavy-duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? But these are the reasons you buy Misca. So what makes these trailers a Misca? It's the hard work and Canadians who craft them. We are Misca. We are Canadian tough. Early man discovered oh. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. This GeForce TV broadcast is brought to you by Epic Racewear, race apparel for racers by racers. OSR, Canada's source for race car parts and consumables. Welcome back live to Brighton Speedway on GeForce TV for the second half of the Labor Day Classic. And as you can see on the screen, rain continuing to fall and it has come down a little bit harder since we went under the uh, commercial break. Greg Kelman here along with Adam Ross, Clinton Jeffrey now up in the booth with us as well. Yeah, we, and we've had some reports on the stream from people in the area. It's raining a little bit harder to the north, and everything looks to be passing from west to the east. We are on the edge of it, but even the reports we're getting say, yeah, it lasted about five minutes, and then, then it was over. And that's what we're seeing right now. It just needs a, a lot of laps. Yeah, it's... Uh it is definitely moist out there on the speedway surface right now. They've got plenty of different vehicles. Bonus points. Pacing around. Where's the... Uh, we had a third headset here. Clinton Jeffrey, welcome to the booth. Thanks, Adam. Just uh, want to give everybody an update on what we know so far. So 
right after the B main for the crate sprints, we were going to have a 15 minute intermission anyways. We were gonna have a 15 minute intermission anyways. So what this is gonna do for us is basically move the intermission up a little bit. They are adjusting the schedule. So I think we're gonna come back with the uh, Thunder Stocks, Pro Stocks next. And then we will finish the B main, then late models, then crate feature, then I think 360 features how it's gonna go. So we're gonna try and minimize the delays and keep things going. So for the question, uh, where would we be restarting the entire BMA? No, we will pick up from lap two after we've had one division race on the track. So that sets the stage here. Once we can get the uh, safety vehicles around there and getting this racing surface packed in and dried out. And again, uh, looking now up at the lights, not seeing much precipitation coming down. So that is a good sign. And again, the radar, I just showed that small cell. In, in all seriousness, we want to look up at the lights and see bugs. Well, they're there now. Right? When the bugs come back, the rain is gone. The rain comes, the bugs disappear. So when you see lots of bugs around the lights, it's a good sign. Unlike last time we were here when we saw water trucks spinning out out of turn number four. <laughs> that was a bad sign. That was a rough night. We sat and tried hard, and this has been our uh, third attempt to come here with GeForce TV here in 2021. And uh, the first one we got here got set up, and we waited for hours, and it just never got started. The second trip, uh, the forecast looked horrible, and and uh, we never even made it down the highway. Poor Clint did. He got down here with the uh, the equipment or part of the way and had to turn around, and we were hopeful today. Uh, the forecast looked fantastic, and this is an un unexpected blip on the radar. I can't believe you said poor Clint. I, hey, I am not going to knock Clint. I'm not going to knock him, but I'm he not. He does gonna, far more manual labor than I do uh, on this. We're not going to circus. We're not going to host a pity parade. <laughs> he oh, comes storming comes back storming in. in. Crash. I heard that. <laughs> Remember that show? What was it called? You can't do that on television. <laughs> but I heard that. <laughs> That was great, bro. Wasn't Alanis more set on that show? I, it, I remember it, but I don't remember much of it. Okay. Like high school. Intermission. Stay tuned for features coming up. So as Clint said, and I'd heard the race director calling Thunderstocks to get ready to line up. And, uh, and that makes sense to get the Thunderstocks out there. If you're going to have a division come out on a... a a wet track, get things packed in and ready to go. That's the perfect division for that. And they'll come out first. And really, things are looking better than they did even a couple of minutes ago. The track surface definitely uh, drying up a bit here now. Yeah, I think we'll get it back. The boss just stepped in. Too bad she wasn't here earlier. Angie Rinaldi's saying we're, we're going to run the B main when we oh, get the okay. track back. I'm not going to correct her and say we're going to run the Thunderstocks first, but uh, we have it on good authority. <laughs> okay. I'll put $5. Friendly bet. <laughs> I'll bet you a hug I'm right. Hmm? I'm not, I'm not telling you my source. That would ruin the bet. Quite a negotiation you just missed. <laughs> We're going to end up seeing, like, the late models come out. It's something totally off the, yep. off the chart. School buses. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a good night last night. Flamborough Speedway, APC Series, running their sixth round of 2021 and we got to see a great finish as uh, Brandon Watson and Matt Pritico played some games on the last restart and it was the cool calm and collected 16 year old Kyle Steckley in his first APC race picking up the win some great racing at Flamborough Speedway and a lot of folks that here watching tonight may be hardcore dirt fans never been to some of the asphalt tracks in ontario i'll tell you what the apc series puts on some great racing very good racing greg it's it's been a busy weekend i've been over at canadian tire <laughs> motorsport park the last two days for the nascar pinty series 
wheeled down to Flamborough Speedway last night to, to do the APC series and of course the Quick Wick Super Stock series and then of course made the trip here from CTMP as soon as the race was over to, to call this event. So it's been a fun weekend, action packed, a lot of young winners. Yeah, the, the sport is thriving, and that's a, a positive sign in all divisions across the board. And some of those drivers that not too long ago we were calling them the young stars, we're gradually getting to see them become the main players all across the province. Yep, the aged veterans. You know, it takes a certain amount of intestinal fortitude to drive your Bronco up between those two monster track packing <laughs> trucks. Although when I think about it, when you're driving someone else's SUV out there, it's probably have a little more cojones. Good number of fans waited it out right there in the stands. I mean, that's always been my theory. You get up, your seat gets wet. You might as well just stay there and keep, yep. keep the back end dry at least. Yeah, that matters. Great crowd on hand tonight. Good to see you again. And I think that we're not too far from, from having the track back <clears throat> to the point where you could bring out the Thunderstocks and, and they'll have to run some laps out there and get it back into race shape. But that'll, that'll work much faster than anything else, much faster than even these track packing trucks. Yeah, and I see a few cars getting lined up now. Ronnie Wadforth over there in the 40 is getting his car in, in line. Give me some history on Ro Ronnie Wadforth because I saw some fans in the chat say, wow, that name brings yeah. me back. Oh, so When I saw the name, I thought, oh, wow, that takes me back to being a teenager and coming here to, to Brighton Speedway and, and the Wadforth name and uh, as far as I know, that is the Ronnie Wadforth. I don't know if this is a second generation, but I believe that is uh, Ronnie Wadforth, who's just been so good here at Brighton Speedway, a county driver as, as well, and uh, along with a, a host of others. And when I say county, Prince Edward County, down yep. in the Picton area. Did he take a hiatus? Because I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't remember the name. I haven't seen Ronnie Wadforth race in years. Okay. And... Uh, whether or not I've called a race with him in it, I'm not sure, but uh, it's been a long while. But it, back in the days, it was the Wadforths and the Turners and the Fergusons and, and uh, the Gregories, which is still obviously a big name here as well. Uh, so many different names, but to see Ronnie on the list here tonight, that was pretty exciting to see. Just got a correction from my son, Connor, who's back working with the Burger Barn team and the Turner family. It's actually Nathan Jackson behind the wheel oh, at the okay. number 19 tonight. Okay. Brandon drove it last night. I do know that much. So Nathan Jackson drove the 19 sprint car tonight. We'll get them all figured out by the time the last feature's over. Yeah, and I love getting these messages and following in the chat. And Someone earlier had said, oh, be careful what you say about, I think he was talking about the Kyle Sopaz situation. I'm often not careful with what I say, Greg, but, but fairly calculated and... <laughs> We go with the stories that we've got. Track's looking good. I think we're going to be pretty close to racing in short order here. So Dustin Wadforth says it is the Ronnie Wadforth. Yep. Lindsay White says, remember watching him when she was a kid coming to the racetrack. Angie, if you're going to come into the... like, We, we made our pizza order. If you're going to come in... We, should be pepperoni green olives oh did i win yes you did did i win our friendly bet <laughs> you smile a lot when you lose <laughs> oh dear. so it will be thunderstocks up first with their feature then the action sprint tour b main late model feature Knights of Thunder feature, action sprint tour, and conclude with the comp fours. And really, we're not far into the night. It's it's 8.30 right now, and it, it, things get so dark now this time of year. At, uh, yeah, we're well into the program. It's still early, folks. And for the amount of rain that, that did fall here, 
in a short amount of time. They've dried it up very quickly, and Thunderstocks are lining up furiously over in the pit area, so uh, we're not far here from going green. Although it's, it's far enough into the night that Clinton Jeffries dipped into the cooler for his next Pepsi. He does like his Pepsi. Did you know we, ha we had a bit of a war? I have no allegiance. I don't have a dog in this fight, but if someone pays me to drink a product, I'll consider it. So we put Pepsi in the cooler because Clinton Jeffrey is, a, is infamous as a Pepsi drinker. And Spencer, the producer, getting upset, saying, I would like Coke in the cooler. So I put Coke and Pepsi in the same cooler, and I wasn't sure if sparks were going to start flying off the cans <laughs> or anything, but it didn't. You know how to settle them? Put some RC coal in there. <laughs> nice. You won't have to buy any the rest of the year. Nope. <laughs> I don't complain. So what, when I was living in the States as a kid, it was and Adirondack Cola, and I think it was five cents a can. Oh, you are old. It, uh, it was only a little. No, that, no, was, that, the been, that was the return rate. That was the return rate. Like 20, 20 cents a can. It was super cheap. <laughs> they saved a lot of money on marketing, you see, Greg, because you didn't see a lot of <laughs> Super Bowl ads with Adirondack, Adirondack Cola. Cola. <laughs> it took about this long, didn't it, to, to run out of things to talk about together? Like it's been a it's been a good run. Well, it's been two nights in a row too. I was talking about the years we've spent in this same room. We finally this this was the jumping of the shark. <laughs> Remember that rain shower in Brighton, the night that ended it all. I thought we did that last year when we had the the hour intermission. That uh, we went pretty far off the rails on that one. Where was that? That was here. That was here. Yes, we were making fun of pit crew members on camera. <laughs> <laughs> the things we do to entertain ourselves and to entertain, <laughs> and, and really, this is what Clinton Jeffrey and I have. have built our announcing career on is entertaining each other and it's worked out well because usually the fans enjoy it uh your particular brand and my brand i don't know if it has the same entertainment value like well, we laugh and you think my goodness do people watch this <laughs> but they seem to foolishness yeah it's Sh fun. shenanigans kind Sh of tomfoolery tomfoolery and I just got a message from someone saying the high side should be really good for the sprint cars now. And, and that could be true. I mean, this 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 will change the racetrack. We'll see w how it changes the track. But uh, once we get back to it, it's going to have a different look, a different feel. And we'll see where people, where people choose to run. Who's going to be the one to find a groove that nobody else is using and really make it productive? Definitely uh, lost a lot of that moisture already, and it's looking pretty close to race ready. So I think it's time we'll take a short break here on GeForce TV and come back, and hopefully we'll be that much closer to the start of the uh, Brighton Automotive Thunderstock feature right here on GeForce TV. When you think about it, Productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our weekly race chat. Adam Ross and Clinton Jeffrey are live and interactive every Tuesday night. Rivals Race Chat is your home for race discussion, debate, news, interviews, and more. They'll even take your questions and comments live on the air and talk to some of the newsmakers each week. Tune in every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on GeForce TV. What makes a trailer a misca? Is it the heavy-duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? 
How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? These are the reasons you buy Miska. So what makes these trailers in Miska? It's the hard-working Canadians who craft them. We are Miska. We are Canadian Tough. This GeForce TV presentation is brought to you by Oakwood Transport. We haul cars. Back live, Brighton Speedway on GeForce TV for the back half of the Labor Day Classic. Track packing continuing, but it is looking to be in really good shape as we get ready for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstock feature. We just got the lineup. And it's a big one. I'm, I'm tempted to just start right now because there are a lot of good cars in this Thunderstock feature set to come out. 22 in total here this evening. Great car counts for the Brighton Speedway divisions. I mean, 17 late models, so 17 cars in your primary division. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, lots of Thunder cars. The, the various divisions of mini stock, Comp 4, Stingers. Racing is alive and well in a lot of areas, and, and this area is one of them. Should mention what's coming up here at Brighton Speedway over the month of September and into October. Uh, next week, it's final points night. Late models and the uh, Danny Reed Memorial also for the Canadian Modifieds, Comp 4s, Mini Stocks, and Stingers on the card. 7 o'clock start time. And then that sends uh, into a week off before Apple Fest weekend on the September Friday, the September the 24th, Saturday, September 25th. On the first night, Dirt Car Sportsman Series, the Eastern Ontario Vintage Stock Car Club, Thunderstocks, Mini Stock Duel on the Dirt, Canadian UMP Modified Open, and the Late Models as well. That's the Northeast Late Model Association running that night. And then the following night, the Saturday night, the Dirt Car 358 75 lap Apple Fest shootout. Dirt Car Sportsman, Northeast Late Model Association, great crate race. Thunderstocks, Duel in the Dirt, UMP Canadian Modifieds, Comp 4 Mini Stock Open. And that starts at uh, 3 o'clock with time trials and heats on the Saturday, 6 o'clock for features. And then the Eve of Destruction here at Brighton Speedway. School, school bus races, demolition derby, 100 lap monster enduro. Having a hard time with this one. Juniors race, ladies race, the gauntlet, flagpole race, and trailer race. Saturday, October 2nd. If you've never come to the Eve of Destruction, you need to come and see it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it is amazing. We were down to call that. Uh, Dave Bradley and I, the year before last, I guess it would have been. Yep. Had a lot of fun calling that race. I was mortified by some of the things that I witnessed that day. <laughs> and, and that's part of part of the appeal. You see things that you will never see anywhere, except sometimes on the evening news where they say, a man in Florida today. <laughs> like, it's a whole day of that. And that's Saturday, October the 2nd. Starts at 1 o'clock, so mark your calendars for that. Go to brightonspeedway.ca for their complete schedule. Uh, closing out this 2021 season. For us here on GeForce TV, we'll be back on the air Friday night from Humberstone Speedway, where we'll get to see the Knights of Thunder, the Action Sprint Tour, along with Street Stocks and Dirt Sportsman on Friday, September the 10th. Following night, we're back on the road with the APC Series on GeForce TV, Saturday, September the 11th at Sunset Speedway, round number seven of the season, the APC Series. And then on Friday, September the 17th, we're back to Merrittville Speedway for a night of sprint cars and stock cars. It'll be a typical uh, Friday night at Oshwiken Speedway, sponsored by Burger Barn, but over at Merrittville Speedway with the sprint cars and, and stock cars. And then we'll head into Championship Weekend at Delaware Speedway on Friday, September the 24th, and Saturday, September the 25th for the uh, Quick Quick Firestarter Super Stocks on the Friday night, their series finale, and the following night, the APC series will wrap things up all right here on GeForce TV. Visit us on Facebook and YouTube, of course, to follow all the events. And we're seeing Packer vehicles head off the track.
That's what we want to see. They're heading back to their parking places. I believe they are just about satisfied that this racetrack is ready for race cars to roll back out. See Jacob Dykstra and some of his crew wandering down the infield, having a look at track conditions. Someone go wake Clinton Jeffrey up. It's time to go back to work. Did he make it back to the infield? I don't, I don't think I've seen him cross yet. I, my concern is I did see him cross, but I don't know where he went, so I just assume he's sleeping back there in the backhoe. <laughs> Thunderstock feature all lined up and ready on the pit lane. Always a fun adventure, these Thunderstock feature events. This racetrack will be a unique challenge for these drivers. Freshly packed, freshly watered. And oddly, Mother Nature always does a better job of watering a track than a packer than a water truck does, Greg. There's just different when you, when you get natural distribution. That's the word I was distribution for. of H2O. It seems every lap we lose a Packer vehicle, so that's a good sign. It is, and the Thunderstock's rolling onto the racetrack. That is also a good sign. So we've got a slew of them here tonight. Let's run down the starting lineup for tonight's 20-lap feature for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. Going from the pole will be Ronnie Wadforth out of Picton in car number 40, the Peacemaker 420 machine. And at the outside will be the 74. That's Mike Lucas. Starting on the inside, row number two will be the 26 of Craig Hanley from Shannonville, the Peacemaker 420, Peacemaker Convenience number 26. And lining up to his outside from Belleville in the Oasis Fuels, Green Grass Oasis Zero, it's Tyler French. Starting in the fifth position for Brighton, the Excess Storage, John's Equipment. Number 85, that's Austin Reed. And lining up on his outside in the sixth starting spot from Ameliasburg, the Village Variety Lots and Line Traffic Markings, 92, Adam Turner. Starting in the seventh spot, aboard car number 17 out of Belleville, the Green Grass Oasis, Oasis Fuels. Number 17 will be Jeff Humphrey. And going from the eighth spot from Belleville in the APC KD Transmission, number 03, Justin Ramsey. Starting in ninth in car number one from Trenton, the Oasis Fuels, number one of Brock Gregory. And going from the tenth position, in car number 97 out of Colburn, the Signs Flooring, Alderville First Nations SO 97 of Dave Barrett. Going from 11th, it's where we'll find the Big Smooth from Trenton, the CMS Capital Mechanical Services. Fiddler Green, number 72 of Doug Anderson. And on his outside, going from the 12th spot from Ameliasburg, the Kafka Court Barristers, Upper Canada Waterproofing, 08 of Angie Kirby. Starting in 13th will be car number 19 out of Brighton. It's Corey White in the Tyandanega propane machine. And lining up on his outside in car number 18 from the 14th spot, that'll be Kyle Anderson from Trenton. Hunt's landscaping ride. Going from the 15th spot will be Rick Phillips in the Reed Brothers truck service number 7. And starting in 16th, the 88 from Roslyn in the Silbro Construction 88. That's Patrick Easton. 17th starting spot, number 76, that's Cody Driscoll. And his outside will be the 37 of Terry Blight. 19th starting position, James Turgeon in the 87 to the outside. Not sure if she'll be able to make the call. Yep, she's out there. Car number 16 out of Napanee, the Castle Rock Crane, Napanee Muffler and Brakes. Number four, uh, 16 of Caitlin O'Blenis. And in the back row, the 46X, that'll be... Adam Switzer, and car number nine of Brandon Gregory. So that's 22 cars ready to go for 20 laps. The Brighton Automotive Thunderstock feature event. They're going to take a number of laps around the track, I would think. Make sure everything's good to go. And our Clinton Jeffrey is down there track side having a look at what's going on as these cars pace around the racing surface. Yeah, Greg, we're down here. We'll give you a little bit of a Case IH track report. So there is a little bit of moisture still here if you see where it is. A little bit slippery right there, but you get up a couple more lanes and it is good to go. From here on up, the track is aces and ready to rock it.
thing. It's gotten very tacky. It's going to be a better speedway than these guys have had all night to deal with. This is going to be a fast track coming up, guys. Mother Nature did us a favor and was right on time with intermission. I want to know, Clinton, where you chose to take your nap. I mean, we, we know you disappeared <laughs> back to the infield. Who woke you up? Uh, there's so many jokes there. Oh, man. Uh, no, I actually walked back to talk to some of the teams and make sure that our officials knew what was going on from the sprint car side. Everybody's pretty content and uh, ready to go. I think this is going to bring us some great action, but uh, no nap, Adam. As much as I need one, I won't get one till the ride home. That's <laughs> reassuring. As the, <laughs> as the driver of that truck, I am concerned what? by your comment. Why? He's 14. He can tow a trailer. What's the problem? I would think so. It's only through Toronto. <laughs> good times and his mother at home is going what are you talking about <laughs> yeah I slept I slept in the back all the way to Nova Scotia not him times they are a changing well you know how it is Adam you got Connor taxiing you around everywhere he dropped me off this morning at CTMP and came down here to help the burger barn folks wash up their cars get them ready for action so I had to hitch a ride with you Clinton I felt bad for Jack <laughs> he got relegated to the back seat he's 14 he lives in the back seat the other thing is I feel bad for Greg because he's still the kid driving dad around. <laughs> he never got to swap that one out. That's their adventure. Well, you know what, guys? Let's talk seriousness. Let's talk about the audible that's been called here to change around the schedule. I love it. It's something you need to do. A lot of tracks will just say, no, we got to get the crate sprints back out here. We got to pick up where we left off. Sometimes you got to switch gears a bit. Kudos to the Brighton cars here to get back out here, even though they weren't scheduled to come out for probably another half an hour to 45 minutes to get ready to help get the track going and to keep this show on track, which is so cool. Well, and let's be real about it, Clinton. This would have been a fine racetrack to bring out the crate sprints, run their B main. But the Thunder cars, these are all drivers that are familiar with Brighton Speedway. They've raced it in various conditions. They know what they're up against, so that they know what what to expect and that's just a smart move by a track promoter who has been in the game for a long time say i'm going to send out my people that i know can handle this situation racetrack is in great shape but at least now the great sprint teams who are going out for the b main to finish their b main shortly can keep their eyes on what's going on out here and they can know what to expect you know the other thing is you only get one shot and if it's a b main it's already a stressful deal because you got to make it in you don't want to leave here thinking, oh, I got screwed by the weather, I got screwed by the track, it wasn't right. And that's not the impression, obviously, Brighton or us, the officials, want to give to these sprint car teams. We want them to leave here loving the place and loving the night they had, and I think this is a great way to get it done, guys. And I think the track's just about ready to go. I saw Mark Rinaldi walk by, he's over there on the outside of, uh, on the inside, sorry, of turn three, giving a bit of direction. But I walked across that backstretch, guys, and uh, five minutes ago, it was race ready, let's go. They ran the, the Thunderstocks at some speed here just to get some laps in, and I think we're good to go. They've lined up behind the Campbellford Chrysler pace truck. Everything is in place. Just need a couple of cars to join the field. Caitlin O'Blenis going to come up to speed and at number 16 and close in on the back end of this group. Full field of cars stretched down the back straightaway too wide. Fans have stuck it out. Kudos to you for sitting it through all of that and the, the heavier rain that we had earlier on. Ready to see a good night of feature racing here. Our second feature of the night. We've got the Stingers already complete, but nonetheless, we're ready to go with the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. They'll take at least another lap around. What a field of cars. This division is so healthy across the province. Yeah. And this is one division where when you run big events and you get the best of the best from every track, every track is well represented. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, enjoy those dual on the dirt races when they combine. And, and we've gotten to see, although we didn't have dual on the dirt last year because of the situation drivers wanted to race, we got to see a lot of that uh, last year where drivers were just trying to hit any track they could. And, and uh, when they get together, it's... Well, now that the fans are back, and I hope you fans are noticing this as well, every event feels like a special event. Yeah. It doesn't matter the occasion. We're seeing great crowds at 
every Speedway we've been to has had a very solid crowd. I mean, Brighton Speedway particularly puts, they do a great job promoting so they get good spectator counts on a regular basis. But other places that we've gone, Greg, have been fantastic. Sunset, Buxton, Sobble, Flamborough. Take it away. We're about to go green. 20 laps of distance for the Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. We're ready to get back on it after a brief rain delay. Here we go. Thunderstock action coming at you. Ronnie Wadforth rockets out to the lead down into corner number one. And he will pull away from the Mike Lucas number 74. Yeah, good start for Wadforth out in front. Man, this track is, it is visibly faster than it was prior to that rain delay. They are all in the mail out there. Ronnie Wadforth fires it into corner number one with Craig Hanley now in tow. Adam Turner now riding in the third spot. Mike Lucas trying to hold on. So he's got Tyler French to his inside. A little contact there, but no harm, no foul as they work it off the fourth corner. French takes the spot away. Out in front, it continues to be Watford. Craig Hanley closing in. Watford's really cut a nice turn there in one and two. Last time around, he got the car cranked sideways. That allowed Hanley to really close in, but he's found his groove now, putting in some great laps in that 40 machine. Three laps complete, 17 to go is big smooth. Doug Anderson slow down the inside of the racetrack. Thought he was going to pull it into the infield, but he continues to coast around. Yeah, that's a curious choice for Doug Anderson, but it's almost as though he was going to call it quits to the infield, but I think he's going to take it pit side with the smoke coming out the back of that. And progressively got worse as he went down the back stretch to Doug Anderson. We'll call it a night and then head to the pit area. As out in front, it's Ronnie Wadforth. He's already caught the back of the field as he gets by or gets to the inside of Caitlin O'Blanis and tracking down Terry Blight. And he is pulled away from Adam Turner in that second spot. Where is Craig Hanley? Yeah, what happened to Craig Hanley there? We just lost him on the back stretch as well. He slowed and goes into the pit area. The second place peels off. So Adam Turner now is your runner-up driver. Tyler French now runs in third, fourth, Justin Ramsey, and fifth, Mike Lucas. Attrition taking its toll early in this one. It knocked out a couple of stout competitors in Doug Anderson and Craig Hanley. Out in front, it is all Ronnie Watford in this 40 machine. He's opened up about 15 car lengths over Adam Turner in the 92. Rocket Ronnie is doing just that. He's rocketing away from the field. Adam Turner trying to catch him. And close the gap, he's just under two seconds back of the race leader. But right now, Wadford about to get into a gaggle of traffic. Well, I'll tell you, the line Wadford is running, he's able to stick that car on the bottom of the racetrack. Most of the traffic he's about to encounter is running higher on the track. Their cars just won't run the line he's running. So he could have a good time getting through traffic almost four wide down the back straightaway. For our race leader, Ronnie Watt, for the nice move through slow traffic. It's by Adam Switzer, and now works by Cody Driscoll in the 76. And Adam Turner's been able to close the gap down to 1.6 seconds, so he's closed it by four tenths. Wadford's really had to check up when he closed in on that number seven, and I apologize, Greg, I don't have the name. I'm going to try to find it. Rick Phillips in the seven. Yeah, Ricky yep. Phillips in the seven. Justin Ramsey's caught Adam Turner. He's caught up behind Cody Driscoll, the lap car, but he's right on the back bumper of the 92 now, and he came from a bit of a way back to catch him, and he was quick in the qualifying. He's not a surprise, obviously, from Justin Ramsey, but those two now are now 1.3 seconds back of the leader. Ronnie Watford did a nice job getting to the inside of Angie Kirby. She does not like giving up that bottom groove. But he was able to get a nose in, and we'll see if he's able to pull away a little bit from Justin Ramsey and Adam Turner. They're still marred back in that traffic as Wadworth has some open track. One more slow car, well, not slow car, but one more piece of traffic he has to contend with out ahead. Another two-tenths of a second gained by Justin Ramsey. He's closing in on the leader, Ronnie Wadworth, now with six laps left to go. That time he gave up two-tenths. Yeah, Wadford has closed in on a car that he's struggling to get around. That's Gregory in the number nine, I believe. Brandon Gregory behind the wheel of the nine tonight. 
Now Justin Ramsey is there, 0.7 seconds, and we can see it now. He is literally within a car length of the leader as Brandon Gregory is giving Ronnie Wadforth all he can handle, and here comes Ramsey around the outside. Ramsey to the high side, Wadforth must sense that he's coming because he is starting to press the issue on Gregory in the number nine. They close in on Caitlin Oblenis. Not a lot of room for Justin Ramsey to operate. Four wide down the back straight away into turn number three. Wow, Brandon Gregory in the middle of this. Ronnie Watford says enough's enough. Tries to give him a tap on the back to get by. Ramsey cuts down in front, and now finally Watford will clear the nine. Yeah, and Gregory gave way there, but little too late for Ronnie Watford as he has lost that lead to Justin Ramsey. Let's see if he can mount a challenge. Wow, he really drove it hard into corner number three to try and gain ground, but... Pushed up the track a little bit. Watford trying to close the gap. No traffic for these leaders to deal with out in front. They're half a lap to the next bit of slower traffic, but we've got a couple off the track in turn number two, and I believe that's going to bring a yellow flag. And Will Austin Reed went off the track in the back stretch, as did James Turgeon. So we're going to go to a restart with a couple of laps left to go. Ronnie Watforth led a majority of this race before getting caught up in lap traffic, and Justin Ramsey used that car as a pick to run around the outside. And you know, Brighton Speedway, I believe, Greg, only takes the winner to victory lane. We've been to a number of tracks this year where they take the top three. I would love to hear what Ronnie <laughs> Watforth has to say. Well, we may still have a chance. He did, absolutely. Uh, here I believe they have the free pass for the first car lap down. So Brandon Gregory will go around the leaders and join the tail of the field. And he's done so now. Two laps left to go from here at Brighton Speedway. The Brighton Automotive Thunderstocks. And Brandon Gregory was doing nothing wrong. When, when Ronnie Watford caught him and was trying to, to put him a lap down, Gregory was holding a steady line, doing what he needed to do out there. He was just doing it in the line that, that Wadford had been using so well. Eighteen laps complete, so this will be a green-white checker finish. Earlier tonight in one of the heat races, we saw green and white at the same time, so a one-lap sprint. This should be a two-lap sprint to the finish. Green, white, next time by, they'll take, or sorry, green flag. Next time by, they'll take the white flag and then finish it with the checkered flag. It'll be Ramsey, Wadforth, Turner, Humphrey, French, and Mike Lucas, the first three rows when we come back to the green flag. Now, when I remember watching street stock type racing when I was much, much younger, there weren't that many Camaros out there, Greg, not to my recollection. Why has that become the car of choice? Maybe because that's all that was left? <laughs> yeah, when I, well, I think it's the passing of time as well, because when I grew up watching street stocks, it was the same. It was uh, some of the older Monte Carlos, uh, the Chevelles, and the Novas. The Novas were popular as well, and I think because they were older than some of these Camaros, which this style ran into the late 80s, did it not? Before they went to the IROC style? and I believe so, but I, I'm the wrong guy to ask about things like that. It, uh... There was always a lot of Chevelles, I remember that, the uh, kind of the bubble back Chevelles. I also remember them having a lot more clearance in the fenders. I mean, yeah. they were cars that really rolled a lot. And they, they were, were clunkier. Street, street stocks. <laughs> yeah. well, that's one thing I want to add here, guys. You know, in the province in general, you go down the states and see these divisions. They look terrible. They look like a bunch of junkers. Everybody here in Ontario takes so much pride in their rides and makes sure they look good each and every week. And it's... Uh, it really shows, and I think it adds to the fan enjoyment of it, you know? Well, I think the tracks take the division seriously as well. They let them feel like the race teams that they are, and 
treat them as a great part of the program, which they are. And I don't know that's the case everywhere they go, but look at that. Watford got a good start, just wasn't able to get the power down there in turn number two as Adam Turner got him some help going into turn three. And again, Watford had a hard time getting through three as he was pushing up the track. And Ramsey squirts away from the rest of the field with one lap left to go. What a gaggle of cars battling for that second spot. Justin Ramsey out in front as we got one sideways on the back straightaway. Ramsey going to take the win. Second going to be Humphreys. Ronnie Wadford finishing third. And a number of cars stacking up down in turn number four. Not sure they're going to make it to the finish at all. Angie Kirby limps through the inside of the front straightaway on the infield. There's Gregory in the number nine with lots of parts hanging out the back of that machine. He's gonna make it back to the track and complete this race with a flat right front tire. Corey White's down there as well as Patrick Easton in the 88. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to cross the lines. So Justin Ramsey is going to get a chance to go down and talk to our Clinton Jeffrey down at Victory Lane in here in just a moment. Nice run by Justin here tonight. Just smooth and steady, working the top side line. And he'll park it in victory lane here at Brighton Speedway on GeForce TV. Again, thanks for tuning in here tonight. Corey White will cross the line, as will Patrick Easton. So they'll make it across the line. And let's watch this replay at the back of the pack. You know, just drivers racing hard yeah. to get to the finish. and. Uh, one gets crossed up and they don't want to lift. So Justin Ramsey celebrating, pounding on the roof of that car to celebrate the victory and Clinton Jeffrey is there. Come on around, Justin, what a drive here today. You know, Ronnie Wadsworth was giving you all he could. And at the end, man, that, that big move down in turn one just got done for you, Justin. Talk about your drive today. Well, I was kind of concerned when the track was real slick before this rain came out and we were kind of going over the car a little bit. We didn't have a whole lot of time to prep they just kind of threw it out that we we're going so i just kind of was winging it and starting eight and i just i could keep my foot right on the floor the whole time you know for a lot of the sprint car teams that maybe listen in the back this track's in great shape after the weather it doesn't seem to do anything what's your thoughts on that uh the top actually the top is working in there was a little bit of dirt and dust from us kicking it up there the bottom starting to slick off and take a little rubber so set her up for the top all right, we'll send it back up to the tower for a full field rundown. And then we'll come back down here and talk to our Stinger winner, and then we'll go to a quick break. We're going to do it a little bit differently, Clinton, because the timing and scoring isn't quite right. That rundown is incorrect. Justin Ramsey, our race winner, as he is the one in victory lane with the trophy. we got Nathan Much here. Nathan, uh, good drive for you today. you got to be pleased with how tonight went for you. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, my dad and my brother and I have been working on the car. We've only uh, done a few events, so uh, when I got the checkered flag, it was a bit of a rookie move to drive back to the pits, but thanks to the officials for bringing me back out. We, uh, we enjoyed it. The night went well. We couldn't have asked for it to go any better. Solid drive. Congratulations. He'll get it done here, and we'll wrap things up in victory lane after we pull our 50-50 winner, I think. We'll Another. have to check on that. They're asking if he won the championship. Maybe you guys can check that upstairs for me while I get the 50-50 going. Another classy move by the Speedway, bringing out their race winner for the Stingers to enjoy his moment in victory lane, Greg. $760. Get out your 50-50 tickets. All right, we're going to give away the 50-50, and we'll be right back here on G4CU while we try and find our winner. White ticket, 544-105. 544-105, come on down and claim your... What makes a trailer a MISCA? Is it the heavy-duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? These are the reasons you buy Miska. So what makes these trailers Miska? It's the hard work and Canadians who craft them. We are Miska. We are Canadian tough. A guy like this who relies on his truck for work knows that his truck will take care of him if he takes care of his truck and WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. 
from floor liners to no drill mud flaps to tech liner for your truck bed to bump step to the handy under seat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at weathertech.ca. Back live at Brighton Speedway for the Labor Day Classic, night number two. And we are set to go with the B main for the action sprinter. Two laps complete in it. So we'll pick that back up where it was when the rain came. And we'll get four more drivers to transfer them into the A main. Following that will be the late model feature, Knights of Thunder, Action Sprint Tour, and the Comp 4 features. That's the way things will roll the rest of the night. Lucas Smith, I think, was the driver on the move before the uh, the B main was shut down. Greg, he was starting to make some moves. Had an unfortunate night last night. Went for a wicked tumble off of turn number four. Had that flat rear tire, the left rear tire, go down in the heat race, and that caused his race to end right on the very first lap, if I remember correctly. So he's looking for his luck to change as we ride along with Tyler Paulus getting pushed off in turn four. A little muddy down there now, isn't it? get a shot of that as they push off the 77T and see the mud splattering up into our cameraman Ryan there. He does a great job down there following Clint around in harm's way. So the car is getting pushed off and ready to go. <laughs> we finished Victor Land and said, hey, Ryan, you want to get up there on, on the push car? I go, it might be a little money. He goes, what, you mean I can? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> That's the type of cameraman you want willing to go anywhere yeah we'll pick him up here as he grabs rob neely on the back shoot and should maybe get one more quick view of it or he'll pick cody smith incredible shot and that that's been the best part of these portable cameras is uh, shots like this or especially clint when you're in the buggy uh, that we've done at different tracks and you're following along in the the pace laps and it gives a view that no one gets to see that's kind of where we're at with this deal you know I'm always radioing Spencer, hey, we're giving you something that you're not going to see normally. So uh, pick this one up if you can. And now they're bringing Ryan back to me with even delivered him back. <laughs> Good job, guys. Or portable cameras and disposable camera operators. That's <laughs> yeah. how we roll at G4's TV. <laughs> All good, boys. Last car to be pushed off. I believe Andrew Marshall there on the back stretch, and then we'll have the field set and ready to go. Ten laps left to go here in this B main for the action sprint tour. Glad you could join us here on GeForce TV. Again, don't forget, we'll be back next Friday night, Humberstone Speedway, with more sprint cars. Knights of Thunder, action sprint tour, along with street stocks and dirt sportsmen. Tune in here on GeForce TV. We'll bring you all the action. And of course, back with the APC series next Saturday night, September the 11th, round number seven as the season climbs, uh, runs down to a close, eight races in the season, race number seven from Sunset next Saturday night. That'll be here on GeForce as well, along with the Quick Wick Firestarter Super Stocks and their fourth of five races. Guys, just want to mention, we are going to pick this up from the lap number two that was completed right when the rains came out. That's why we have a single file restart. And quickly, while we were under rain delay when I was back there, I caught a picture of the sprint car teams. You know, along with John and Wendy Brush up here, they've got a team at the uh, Oswego Classic, which is happening right now. we got Dave McKnight Jr. over there, who's a former super modified. They had that whole uh, projector on the side of a massive trailer, and teams were all gathered around watching it. So hopefully we get to show you that one. And... Uh, yeah, I want to send a shout out to all the Super Modified fans here with us tonight who wish they could be over at Oswego. The Oswego Speedway Classic has always been a special event with a lot of Canadian participation and a lot of Canadian fans. And I know people are missing that this weekend, this year. Hopefully you're able to find something to fill that void. Hopefully it's Brighton Speedway Sprint Cards. Here we go, back to the green flag with 10 laps left to go here in the B main for the Action Sprint Tour, presented by Pinty's top four to the A main. Darrell Paltier leads them through one and two, gets a good clean run through the corner. Look at Dave McKnight on a fast racetrack, 
There's nobody braver than Dave McKnight behind the wheel of a race car. He picks up a few spots, just sits one position out of a transfer. Yeah, riding behind Lucas Smith, and he's got a great run on Lucas Smith. Coming off a of corner number two, he sits in the fifth position, needs to pick up one more. It's Peltier out in front over Neely, and then Luke Stewart, and then that Lucas Smith number 49L. Dave McKnight with a big sweeping line to the outside, trying to find a way to get around Lucas Smith in that 49L. Lucas Smith running the more traditional right line right around the bottom. Now Lucas comes off the bottom there on the entry of one, right back to the bottom, coming through turn number two. Dave McKnight much higher on the track. He'll take a more direct line into the third turn. So it's six laps in, six to go. We're at the halfway point of this B main, and Daryl Pelche, got to give a big shout out to him in his uh, second year racing in sprint cars, running a great race way out in front of Rob Neely. The battle on the track I continue to watch, so is for that fourth position. Lucas Smith holding down the last transfer spot. Between one and two is where Dave McKnight really seems to close the ground to that orange number 70. Here he comes off a of corner number four, trying to get the run on Lucas Smith as they come down the straightaway. Lucas Smith has the spot. Right and there. Yep. McKnight is so quick as laps wind down. Eight laps complete, this, sorry, seven laps complete this time, but I don't think that's necessarily right. No, that's incorrect. We're down to three laps left to go in this one. Oh, McKnight with a big tumble. He had gotten up out of the groove, did not lift, because that's not what Dave McKnight is about. And he caught something, and I'm not sure if it was the lip of the bridge there that Dave McKnight caught Clinton. It lurched the car to the right, and a series of flips off of turn number two, we can see him reaching for the visor, climbing out of that number 70 machine. He was the show. Yeah, Dave is in great shape for an older gentleman here. Works out of the gym daily, and that is gonna help you on a ride like that. Wow, he's out talking to the safety crew. We'll jump in when we can. We'll go to a quick replay here for you guys to check out. And you see him way up in the screen. He's just gonna pop oh. in there. Hey, caught that tire there just past the bridge. That is a rough ride for Dave McKnight. And he had to be riding high. I mean, he was giving it his all trying to get into the show. Just ran out of racetrack. Didn't run out of nerve. Let it be known that he did not run out of nerve. He ran out of racetrack up there in turn number two, Clint. Dave McKnight, you all right? That's what the fans need to know, man. Yeah, super fine. Uh, what can you say about safety equipment, right? Got to wear it all. That's why you walk away. Go get checked out. Dave McKnight's all right, ladies and gentlemen. He says that was a hard hit. But as we mentioned, guys, he's in peak health for a gentleman his age, and that's certainly going to help him on a, on a bad crash like that feel better tomorrow. And in fairness, Clint, he's in peak health for a man of any age. I mean, he is a yes. physical specimen. Uh, it, he has, he's been racing longer than a lot of us have been alive and we saw from the speed camera there in turn number two. That's the kind of hit that immediately takes the wind right out of your lungs. And he's been getting so much better in the sprint cars. And, and I don't know if you saw this, but this is kind of what I've seen from Dave McKnight. He started out in the crate sprint division and I thought he struggled. He just had a hard time finding his footing. Then he ran some 360 sprint car races and he looked more confident in that and it's helped him going and running those few 360 races and then coming back to the crates it was like night and day well speed has never bothered dave mcknight i mean i've watched him win a lot of super modified races in spectacular fashion i don't think i've ever seen anyone crash as spectacularly as dave has i remember uh, when he was running the moochie motorsports number 98 a beautiful super modified and the wing flipped up on him down the straightaway and it starts to do the opposite of what you want it to do and the, the crash was horrifying that he had that night and again climbs out of that race car and he's ready to do it again as we see the slow motion replay and yeah it, 
he hits that tire with the right rear and it's over. You know, I just went over and talked to Dave Adam and said that, you know, Dave, I just got to tell you, I know it's going to make you feel but you were looking really, really good there tonight. And he said, I'm starting to get it. He goes, when I get good, I'm going to be very dangerous. So uh, still pumped up, still excited to get get this art. And, and he'll be one to tell you, dirt is a whole new art form that he's trying to get his uh, handle on a little bit. And he understands. He understands the art of racing, and he understands what it takes, and, and he has the humility to to take yeah. his lumps. Yeah. Yeah, that's always a hard hard thing to do when you're you're someone that's so good in another discipline to to make that move. And and we've heard that from NASCAR drivers, for example, that won't they won't touch certain cars because they know how it might make them look, it, and it might make people look down and say, "Oh, well, well." But Dave's not afraid to do that. He jumped in here full bore, and and now we're seeing exactly what it what he can do. Sure, it takes a little bit of time to get used to, but uh, I'd like to know though. You know, running the 360, running one of these cars with that full power and a little bit uh, different control on them, if it taught him something that he, he couldn't get with maybe a little less horsepower in the crate. I know that he was uncomfortable with the crate because of the lack of horsepower. You can't use the throttle to get right. you out of trouble yeah. like you can in the high-powered super modified things like that where you use the throttle and the brake as much to turn the car as the steering wheel. I think in the crate it's a little bit different. There's yeah. a different balance you have to find. But guys, think about this. When he finally gets to go back across that border and drive that super modified, <laughs> I can't help but think all these dirt laps are going to help him. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. It's uh, it's all about car control, and you get a lot of that experience on the dirt, that's for sure. A long time ago, we talked to Tony Stewart. Clint, he was at Cayuga Speedway. He was running a CAS car car he'd also been up there to run a super modified and i remember asking you know is it tough to jump from one car to the other he said a race car is a race car you're either pushing or you're loose he says you figure out where it works and you and you put it there so three laps remain here in this b main for the action sprint tour and then to follow that, the late models will be up next, followed by the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Cars, then the Action Sprint Tour. The four drivers from this B-Main, along with all those drivers already qualified, will run their feature and will conclude tonight with the Comp 4s. Lots of action still to come here at Brighton Speedway as the final car getting pushed off. So we can go back under yellow and get this race restarted. So now this gives Johnny Miller a chance as he will sit, I believe, in the sixth spot, when we, uh, fifth spot rather, when we go back to the green. One spot out of a transfer. And he had advanced a few spots out yeah. there in that 20, looking good. He started deep in the field. Remember, he was on the outside pole of his heat race earlier on, went down into one and two, and just about put it in the creek. Went all the way to the back, couldn't regain what he had lost. So we'll see if the Iceman can pick up one spot and make his way into tonight's feature event. So right now it's Pelche, Neely, Stewart, and Lucas Smith. The top four looking to punch their tickets into the A-Main here tonight. And I think they'll see the white flag this time by and we'll get right back out of a three more circuits around. The cone on the front straightaway. Of course, Sprint Car fans will know this. Some of the Brighton fans might be new to it. You cannot pull out of line. You cannot pass before you get to the cone. You must accelerate in a straight line with the with the rest of the field. Then you can fan out beyond that cone and start to do battle. Field will pick up the pace down the back stretch, coming back to the green flag. Pelche, Neely, Stewart. Lucas Smith and Johnny Miller on the outside looking in. Here we go. Let's settle it. Three to go. Good start for everybody in that top four. Luke Stewart immediately makes a move to the inside on Rob Neely in one and two. Neely going to work the high side in three and four. Does a nice job to hang on to the second spot. The top four have all pulled away from Johnny Miller in the 20 back in fifth. Top four remain the same. Luke Stewart trying to make something happen on Rob Neely. And 
And for him, he might think, well, he's in a transfer spot. Why is he pushing him so hard? He doesn't know exactly what's happened behind him. You need to get going before someone gets you. With this shorter sprint to the finish, it is time to go. That's the only option you've got. Through three and four for the final time, Daryl Peltier going to win that B main. Rob Neely makes it in. Luke Stewart and Lucas Smith, Johnny Miller. Unfortunately, the first driver to not make the show, Jonah Mutton, Tyler Paulus, Matt Hill, Andrew Marshall, Cody Smith, all of those drivers' nights are complete. You think Daryl Pelche's excited about that? I, That's gotta feel good, and a checkered flag's a checkered flag, and there's a number of stout drivers in this B main that he just beat, and in his second year, kudos to him. You're absolutely right. So he will drive back to the pit area and it'll be a brief break before it's time for them to get lined up for their feature event. So it's time for the late models to head on to the speedway with their feature event. Do you have a feature lineup for them? Yes, you do. You're, you're hogging it, Adam. I do that sometimes. You're starting to look tired. It's, it's not been a long couple days. It's not 11 o'clock yet. I'm still golden. <laughs> Stay golden, pony boy. Starting on the pole in this one for the Vanderland Building Products late model division. It'll be the driver out of Trenton in the Legacy 420 QBT excavating number five, Steve Baldwin. To his outside from Picton, the Ralph's Meat Market Peacemaker 420, number 87, Andrew Hennessy. Going from spot number three out of Picton, the Village Variety. Lots and lines, traffic markers. Number 92, that's Adam Turner. And going from the fourth spot, out of Brighton, the target fabrication. Motorsports of Trenton, number 46, Brandon Mowat. Starting in position number five from Codrington, the A8 HAI Precision Water Jets, Vanderland Building Products 55, Brad Rayner. And starting alongside of him in the sixth spot is the driver out of Trenton, the Thousand Islands RV. Bellevue fabricating 57 of Charlie Sandercock. Going from the seventh spot out of Trenton, the Brighton Recycling, Vanderland Building Supply. Number 29, Stop and Phil Potts into his outside, going from the eighth spot. The winner last night from Carrying Place in the Dibbets, Excavating and Landscape Supply, Eastern Overhead Doors. Number 77, Kaylee Weiss. Starting in the ninth position from Picton, the Black River Tree Service, Kell Construction 01. That's Eli Mayhew. And lining up on the outside from the tenth position, out of Port Hope in the Duramax, signs flooring 89, Austin King. Starting in the 11th position, scored as the number 112 tonight from Trenton in the Lots and Line Traffic Markings Goodies Pizzeria, number 112. That will be Kyle Sopaz. And going from the 12th position, number 12 on the field, number uh, from Trenton, Ontario, the C.H. DeMille, Whaley Mechanical, number 12 will be Adam Whaley. Going from 13th out of Gravenhurst, the Muskoka Aircraft Center, Muskoka Custom Cottage, Reynolds Double Zero of Ryan Gowdy. And from 14th spot, it'll be car number 91 from Shannonville, the Tri Canadian Energy, Steve Veenstra Plumbing and Heating. Number 91 will be Craig Hanley. Going from 15th in the 38th, that's Mike Gowdy out of Muskoka. And lining up to his outside, starting in the 16th position from Caring Place, a green grass oasis. Ark Homes Oasis Fuels, 22 of Sean Gregory. And going from that 17th and final position from Brighton, the Vander Bros Construction, 33 of David Vandertorn. That's the lineup for this late model feature event. 30 laps the scheduled distance. Quality field. It could be anybody out here. Probably in the top 12 or so, which pretty much the whole darn field, Greg. Yeah, that's a tight, competitive field here. Every Saturday night at Brighton Speedway, if you've never been, check it out. Season winding down, but mark it on your calendars for 2022 as well. As we get set to go with Steve Baldwin and Andrew Hennessy. On that front row, Andrew has made the move from the Canadian Modifieds to running regularly with the late models as well, and... He is just good in anything he drives. As we get ready to come to the green, Steve Baldwin slow on the start, but we get things even and green. Trouble in turn number three. One car spun around, did not make it to the green flag, sits backwards at the entrance of turn three. 
And that car snapped around in a big old hurry. Trying to see who that is. Is that Eli? It's 22. Eli? Oh, okay. It's uh, the Gregory machine. Sean Gregory goes around. So we'll stack him back up and try it again. 30 laps the distance. Always impresses me how quickly they were able to get back in order. And, and it shouldn't be difficult because it's the same order they were in last time. But it's amazing how long it can take on some nights. White flag out. We'll go back at it next time around. And I think maybe it's time for another Quick Wick fired up. Our friends at Quick Wick Fire Starter bringing you the sights and sounds of racing all across this great province this year. So we're going to let our viewers at home. Turn up the volume, look and listen. The Quick Wick, fire it up. Steve Baldwin holds on to the lead, but Andrew Hennessy flanking him from the outside line. He throws it off a of corner number four, using that high side up near the wall. And Andrew Hennessy's got it hooked up, but Baldwin solid on the bottom. Yeah, Baldwin doing what he has to do on the bottom of the racetrack. Andrew Hennessy just pitches that car beautifully up on the high side, runs a beautiful arc around the corner. They have pulled away from that side-by-side -side battle for third between Adam Turner in the 92 and Brandon Mowat in the 46. This time by will complete lap number five of 30 on the board for the Vanderland building product late model division here at Brighton Speedway. Steve Baldwin out in front for Andrew Hennessy, then it's Adam Turner, Brandon Mowat, and Charlie Sandercock sitting back there in fifth. Seems weird to not have Charlie Sandercock being so dominant like we're used to seeing. No, he, he looks fairly ordinary this season, but wait, this is a long race. There's still yep. 24 laps to go, so that could change. I'm having a blast watching Kaylee Weeks in the 77 battle with Phil Potts. That's been a side-by-side -side battle for the seventh spot basically since the race began. Seven laps on the board now for Steve Baldwin as he works that inside line. Plenty of bite, I would imagine, down to the inside line right now, down close to those implement tires. And he clicks off the laps as he's been able to pull away from Andrew Hennessy. Meanwhile, Brandon Mowat and Adam Turner now go at it side by side up for the third position. This track is wide and smooth for this late model division. Out in front, Baldwin leading the way. They're still side by side deeper in the field. Kaylee Weiss now doing battle with the 89 of Austin King. But King has gotten around Kaylee Weiss. Yeah. Kaylee caught the implement tire down there in corner number one, and that allowed King to slip by. She pushed up the track, and now she's fallen into the clutches of Kyle Sopaz. Sopaz to the inside of the 77 of Kaylee Weiss as they battle off a of turn number four down the front straightaway. He'll continue to mount that challenge as Weiss goes way up the racetrack. Sopaz takes over the spot, so move. Kyle Sopaz up into the ninth spot. Steve Baldwin, meanwhile, gets around David Vandertorn, and now Andrew Hennessy does the same. Two drivers running two completely different lines right now, staying pretty close to one another as the lap traffic now will begin to be a bit more of a factor for leader Steve Baldwin. Charlie Sandercock working the outside of Adam Turner as they run just a couple car lengths behind the 46 of Brandon Mowat. Meanwhile, at the front, Baldwin working around some of the slower traffic. Works into corner number three. Now the caution flag is out as David Vandertorn takes a 33 around. I believe that's who it is down to the inside of corner number two. 
And puts us under the caution flag with 17 laps left to go. Yep, the 33 down there. You had remarked how it's amazing that two so distinctly different lines can lead drivers to run just a car length apart, lap after lap. That's the fun part about watching dirt races, but you don't see that very often on pavement races. There's generally a preferred line. They find it, and that's where they run. On dirt, it can change from one lap to the next. And I was thinking under that green flag run, that rain shower we had, probably the best thing that could have happened because we've seen a lot of bite, and it, the speeds have picked up, like you mentioned, when we got into that first race with the Thunderstocks. And I... I don't think we'd be seeing what we're seeing right now without that moisture on the track earlier on. No, I don't think we would. And, and I enjoy it when it does slick off. There's a lot of finesse involved, but there's just something spectacular about watching cars attack the corners the way they do when there's some bite in the racetrack. So Andrew Hennessy is going to have a chance to line up to the outside of Steve Baldwin. On this restart with 17 laps left to go. We'll still take a couple of more laps around as they set the field. Hennessy in the second spot. And got the backstretch wall, sees David Vandertorn just go around. Lazy spin in corner two, and that's what put us under the caution flag. Do we do we call that a wall cam or do we call that the the crick cam? The river, yeah. The old crick cam. So not quite halfway through this late model feature event. Baldwin gonna restart on the inside here when we fire off out of turn number four. Alongside him will be Andrew Hennessy, Brandon Mowat in the 46 will restart third. Charlie Sandercock in the 57 gonna restart fourth and then rounding out the top five is that 92 of Adam Turner. Here we go, back to the green flag. Baldwin, Hennessy, Mowat, Sandercock, Turner all up there in the top five. Brad Rainer's in the mix as well. Hennessy sailed it around the extreme outside of one and two. Got the advantage off of turn two. Baldwin had to bite the brakes there off the corner. Hennessy, your new race leader. Wow, that was a good power move by Andrew Hennessy. He'll pick up the lead. Baldwin continues to stay on the bottom. And now Andrew Hennessy's teammate, Charlie Sandercock, is back into the thick of it. Running there in that third spot, trying to use the same line to get around Steve Baldwin as his teammate did. He heard what you said about him, and he wasn't <laughs> impressed, but he's turned up the wick. Sandercock up the outside and then uses that, backs it up to the cushion and drives it down the racetrack towards corner exit. I've always found Sandercock, it's pretty to watch him drive yeah. a late model. The things he can do with that race car are unbelievable. And wow. at the same time, makes it look easy. Baldwin just drove back around the race leader on the inside. So Steve Baldwin, he's not ready to throw in the towel just yet. Running the bottom line to perfection as he closes back in on Andrew Hennessy. He noses ahead through the center of the corner. And then Hennessy powers ahead on corner exit down the straightaway. Brandon Mowat now drawing closer to the top three as well. He finds himself in the fourth spot just ahead of Adam Turner. The top three continue to duke it out this time by. It'll be 11 laps left to go for Andrew Hennessy. You watch those two different lines, Baldwin on the inside, Hennessy on the outside, and you wonder which one's going to go away quicker. So as one goes away, the other driver is going to succeed. I don't see them changing up their lines between now and the end of the race, Craig. Baldwin still strong in the bottom lane, not giving up any ground to Andrew Hennessy. Charlie Sandercock has actually drifted back from these two drivers as they work it off the corner. This time by nine laps left to go for the driver out of Picton, Ontario, Andrew Hennessy. The leads over Steve Baldwin, Charlie Sandercock, Brandon Mowat, and Adam Turner. Hennessy and Baldwin setting a torrid pace. They are going to get to slower traffic before this one's over as long as we don't get a yellow flag. So who can navigate the traffic the best? as Baldwin is right there, nipping at the heels of our race leader, Andrew Hennessy. Live traffic again, a factor for these leaders as they catch the back of the Gaudi number 38 and the 33 of David Vandertorn. And these drivers are going to have to make some decisions, especially for Steve Baldwin, because that 38 machine's right in his path. He is, but really, 
Vandertorn in the 33 is running the high side, and he's not having a lot of success there. So who's going to be the aggressor? Who's going to find the way and force the issue here, Greg? Andrew Hennessy to the outside of Gowdy as they go down the back stretch. He'll thread the needle, get to the inside of Vandertorn, and that kind of boxes in Steve Baldwin so much that here comes Charlie Sandercock to the outside. You did it again. You poked Charlie Sandercock, and away he goes up here to take over the second spot. Let's see if he's got anything for Andrew Hennessy, but laps are winding down. Just four laps to go this time. He hit the nitro button, and now he's into that second spot and tracking down Andrew Hennessy. Still some lap traffic ahead. Whether or not they're catch it, not sure, with four laps left to go. Hennessy pitches it into the corner, drives right down to the bottom of the racetrack. Charlie Sandercock sort of seeing right around the middle. He goes in on the outside, doesn't really carve back to the bottom. In one and two, it's very similar lines, and three and four a little bit different. Hennessy exits the corner lower in turn number four than Sandercock. Two laps left to go now for Andrew Hennessy. One lap car directly in front as Baldwin is drawn up closer to Sandercock, trying to get that second spot back. Baldwin drives it to the bottom of the racetrack. White flag in the air for Andrew Hennessy. The Gowdy double zero is one that Hennessy is going to have to deal with on this final lap. Baldwin to the inside of Sandercock for second. Final time at a quarter number three for Andrew Hennessy. Slow and steady around the bottom this time. He'll work it off a of four and take the win. And at the line, Charlie Sandercock second over Steve Baldwin. Brandon Moen, Adam Turner. And it'll be Austin King across the line in sixth. Brad Rayner seventh. Kaylee Wees eighth, ninth. Phil Potts in tenth will go to Kyle Sopaz. Solid showing for this late model division. An impressive victory for Andrew Hennessy in that 87. Charlie Sandercock coming home second. Steve Baldwin third. Brandon Moe at fourth. Adam Turner fifth. That was a fun one to watch. Winning races doesn't just take passing cars you're battling with. It takes passing lead lap cars as well. And Andrew Hennessy threaded the needle, and that's what sealed the deal for him tonight. And there you see the finish on the screen there. Andrew Hennessy with the win over Charlie Sandercock. Steve Baldwin third. Brandon Mowat fourth. Adam Turner. Austin King. Brad Rayner. Key Luis eighth. Phil Potts ninth. Kyle Sopaz tenth. Eleventh was Craig Hanley. 12th, Eli Mayhew, 13th, Adam Whaley, 14th, Ryan Gowdy. Mike Gowdy back there in the 15th spot. David Vandertorn in 16th and 17th to go to Sean Gregory. Here comes the Pinty's Knights of Thunder sprint cars, but before they get fired up, Clinton Jeffrey is about to chat with Andrew Hennessy after an impressive victory. Hennessy starting to climb out that number 87 once he gets that safety gear off. Yeah, Adam Hill dropped the helmet, quickly make his way out here for us to have a talk with him. Great, solid drive here for Hennessy, untouched through the entire distance. Baldwin and him having a good run. You know, get the safety belts off and make his way out here to grab that VP Fuels checkered flag and the trophy for tonight's feature win. And we'll get a quick word with Andrew as he makes his way out of the car. How about it, ladies and gentlemen, Brighton, here he comes. Late model feature winner tonight, Andrew Hennessy gets it done. Andrew, come on around to the front. We'll get a word with you so the fans can get a look at you. How about it, fans? How about for Andrew Hennessy tonight? Andrew, what a great drive. You know what? Uh, you and Baldwin had a good battle there in the beginning, but in the end, you just blasted around the outside, made it work. Talk about using the top line here tonight. Well, um, we were hoping they'd watered in intermission, and uh, that rain really helped out. Uh, that that was a lot more probably than they were going to put in in, in uh, sorry onto it. Um, so it definitely gave it two good lanes. Um, Baldwin had a really good run going. The uh, the car was a little loose getting in, so that caution I actually switched to my four wheel brakes to try and straighten it up getting in and it drove really good tonight so uh i'm out of breath <laughs> the last few laps there, i was getting a little worried because uh i felt like i was missing my marks just a little bit and then obviously uh 
Charlie right behind me there. You never know when uh, he just likes to show up the last lap or two sometimes. So <laughs> steal one from you. Great job, Andrew Hennessy gets it done, ladies and gentlemen. How about it for the 87 here tonight? And we'll turn it up to Adam and Greg to get ready for the Knights of Thunder 360 series here at Bright. You got to like it when they, you see clearly that they've worked hard for it. And Andrew Hennessy clearly worked hard for that one. I don't remember he, him being a man of many words. That was a good interview, well-spoken. Good victory for Hennessy behind the wheel of that number 87 as we see the cars being staged all the way around Brighton Speedway. They space them out all the way around the track and the reason they do it is as they push off one vehicle, they can veer off and grab the next sprint car waiting to be started. Clinton Jeffrey gonna come over, I think, and feature the boss man. Well, not the boss man here, but the boss man at our Friday night home, Ashwick and Speedway. Glenn Steyer's the driver of that Ashwick and Speedway number zero. I was actually doing a track for it, but we can talk to Glenn. Glenn, back behind the wheel. How's it going, big guy? So far, so good. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but we're getting there. Good luck, Glenn. He'll go at it. And what we want to talk about here is a quick Case IH track report, guys. If you can see, down here, Ryan's still very light brown, and it's still lots of movement in there. You can, you can write your name in it, as I like to do. We move up here. It's a lot blacker. And as you get up to the outside, you got a bit of crumble. And the guys who can really race it up here, there's tons of bite right up on the wall, but you really got to have that fortitude to take it up to the outside because as you've got this great bit of uh, clay here, but what you've also got is a four-foot wall here that will ruin your day really fast, guys. Yeah, the concrete does not give. There is not a lot of give in that concrete wall. As the Andrew Hennessy crew has dispersed, Andrew climbing back into that number 87 to drive it back to the pit area, and it will be time to push off these 360 cubic inch sprint car beasts, the Pinties Knights of Thunder sprint cars, Clinton. I will get clear and get ready to go to push off these 360 cars. Great field of them here tonight. And last night for the Labor Day Classic weekend here at Brighton. I know a lot of them were super happy to just come out, camp, have a two-day race. Uh, I saw a lot of them here last night when I got here after the races at Flamborough. And they were all enjoying the evening. And a lot of campers here. So great turnout of both fans and teams here this weekend. Starting lineup for tonight's A main event going from the pole at a Caster Center, the Charlie B. Honey Mudcat Entertainment Center. Number 11 will be Jamie Turner. Going from second out of Fenwick in the Oshwekin Speedway Racehorse NRM Dynamics 14H, the Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen. Starting in third out of St. Pete, Quebec in the Benoit Fleur Transport Castrol Edge, number 88, Elaine Bergeron. And going from fourth out of Tilsonburg, the Petro Plus Travel Stop, Burger Barn 13, that'll be Corey Turner. Starting in fifth out of Dunville, the Kingpin Farms, Burger Barn number 91, that's Ryan Turner. And going from sixth, out of Niagara Falls in the Signal 88 Security EMS towing number 70, Bailey Hurd. Starting in seventh out of Beachville, the Castro Edge to Groot Hill Chevrolet, number five, DJ Christie. And rolling off from eighth out of Scotland, Ontario, the Insta Panel Styes Tree Service 87X, Sean Evans. Starting in ninth out of St. Matthew de Belleville, Quebec, in the OSR Oshwikin Speedway 0FM, the Fireball, Steve Poyer. And alongside him, his nephew, also to St. Matthew de Belleville, Quebec, in the four season forming, mega pumping 28, Jordan Poyer. Starting 11th out of Picton in the Jones Automotive Car Quest 11J, it's Chris Jones. And going from 12th in the Charlie B. Honey Mudcat Entertainment Center, number 19, Nathan Jackson. Going from 13th out of Grand Prairie, Alberta, the Maverick Real Estate, Dow Auto 5D, this is Ben Siliker. And from 14th out of St. Pete, Quebec, in the Total Lubricants Polaris 3G, Dale Goslin. Going from 15th out of Mississauga, the Carstar Brantford Pinewood Horticulture Services, number 17X, it's the highlight man, Mac DeMann. And alongside him from 16th out of Dorchester, the Malcolm Mills Mill Riding Oshrican Speedway, car number one, Holly Porter. Going from 17th out of Binbrook in the Nitro 54 variety, Creative Edge Signs and Graphics, number nine, Youngster Liam Martin, and to his outside, 50 sprint car wins in his career. Out of Oshweekin, 
in the Oshwikin Speedway Racehorse, Oshwikin Speedway number zero, the Oshwikin Flyer, Glenn Styers. Going from 19th out of Beamsville in the JNE Recovery, Julie Swayze Remax 88H. That will be Josh Hansen. And from the 20th spot out of Oshwik in the Nitro 54 variety, Creative Edge Signs and Graphics, number 15, Hodge, Dan Nanako. Starting in the 21st, 21st position out of Grimsby, the Bowens Automotive Image Factor, car number 90, it's Travis Cunningham. And rolling off 22nd out of Brockville, the JC Satellite 98, Paul Pekonen. And from the final starting spot after the infraction in his qualifying heat out of Picton, the Terry Taxi, Elbrook excavating 84, Tyler Rand. 23 cars make up tonight's main event for the Pinties. Knights of Thunder, 360 sprint cars, 25 laps will be the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, it can happen in a hurry. 25 laps. We've seen them do it caution free. We've seen them do it with a few delays in the middle, but either way, it is spectacular to watch and we're about to be treated to 23 of the finest dirt racers this province has to offer. In fact, three provinces have to offer tonight, Ontario, Quebec, and Alberta all represented here this evening. Three from Quebec, one from Alberta, and everyone else Ontario based. Good point, Greg. So Jamie Turner heading down into three and four. A couple of white and blue cars going to make up the front row. Jamie Turner in the 11. Jim Hoopin in the 14 on the outside. Talked about Jamie Turner and the solid season he's been having behind the wheel of that number 11. Great to see. Of course, his boys, Corey Turner and Ryan Turner, both in this race. Corey starting on the outside of row number two. Ryan Turner starting on the inside of row three. Steve Poirier wiggling that zero FM machine back and forth as he comes off a of Turner before getting acclimated to the cockpit of a different race car than he's used to driving. We've seen that man do some spectacular things behind the wheel. Seven races completed so far. Four wins for Jordan Poye, two for DJ Christie, one for Jim Hoopin, and will we add another name tonight? Could very well happen. I think this time by we may see the white flag displayed as the drivers clear out the motors and flag man ready to grab the white flag, I believe, and send them. Oh, nope, we're going to do a four wide salute. Wasn't sure. We haven't done one yet this year, I don't believe. So next time around, folks, we're going to ask you to get on your feet and wave these drivers on, grab a hat, your program, whatever you got, and send these drivers on. 23 of the best. They're going to be four abreast. Get your cell phones, your lights flashing as they come by. They are four wide and fancy for you, the fans. This is the Pinty's Knights of Thunder 360 Sprint Car Series. Now they'll clear them out down the back stretch, get in line, and get ready for the start of this one. Round number nine of the 2021 season. They'll come to the white flag this time by and go green for 25 laps. Jamie Turner, he's got one career sprint car win at Oshwikin Speedway a few years back. And he would love to have another one here at Brighton. White flag is out, Brighton Speedway. We're going to go green flag racing next time around. Jamie Turner, Jim Hoopinen, 
as we got one slow Ben Silliker down to the inside of quarter number four. That may keep us under the caution flag, and it will. Silliker comes to rest. Clinton Jeffrey heading over to check out the situation. Silliker driving the Dykes to racing 5D. Was trying earlier in the year to find a, a ride that he could come and compete with the Pinty's Knights of Thunder. Finally hooked up with the Dykes to race team and been here for the first time. Labor Day weekend, Clinton Jeffries down there trying to help him get that car out of gear, I believe, and probably ready to push off again. Hopefully he's able to fire. That'd be a shame if he can't start this A main. Competed last night. A long way to go to not be able to compete. We'll see if they're able to push that car and get it to fire. Now ben is from out west, but he competes primarily in the United States, does a lot of racing, uh, wingless sprints down in Texas and, and other locations as well. But of course, with the border closings, it's been tough for him. So he is going to get a push into the infield. Looks like he will not be able to make the start. So this time by, we may see the white flag come out. And we'll get this one underway with 25 laps the distance. Yes, white flag comes out. Brighton Speedway next time around. We're going to go to the green flag. Race number eight about to kick off. Jamie Turner, Jim Hoopinen on the front row. Green flag in the hand of the starter. As we get set to bring you feature racing action. Ladies and gentlemen, you came looking for a show. Well, here you go. Let's end all the anticipation as we bring to you our feature presentation. Jamie Turner. One off the banking in corner number one. That'll put us under the caution. I believe it's Nathan Jackson goes around. And we are under the caution. Jamie Turner quickly onto the throttle there. Now how did that happen? Ben Silliker was able to get the f car fired in the infield and join the tail, so he will not lose a lap. Well, if he didn't take the original green, he wouldn't have been able to get out there, and they got him going just in time. What was the issue, Clint? Okay, so if you're familiar with these cars, though, I know a lot of folks at home aren't. You've got a throttle pedal, but you've also got a bar on top, so it's almost like a perfect square that you put your foot into, the bar on the bottom is the throttle that you pull down. If you have a stuck throttle, you can lift it up with the bar that goes across the top. Ben said, my foot slipped out, it's under the pedal, and I cannot get it back in that box. So I said, what do you want us to do? He said, just push me in the infield, I guess I'm done. So we pushed him in, his dad come over, I assume it is, and got him back going. And just as they were getting ready to come off, the push truck pushed him off, he got back in, and I would say that's about as close to sneaking back in as you'll ever get away with here but they did it, and I don't have an issue with it. I think they got it done. <laughs> Sometimes you have to avert your eyes. If they ask your permission, you probably couldn't let them, but if they beg your forgiveness. Well, I, I gotta be honest. I had to turn my back on the situation a little bit because the car was in the infield, the crew was upset. But when your driver says, push me and I'm done, that's what we're gonna do. And uh, they got it resurrected. They got him back out. And now he's pulling back into the infield off the back straight away. And this may be it for him here. Watching this replay where Nathan Jackson just fires it off the banking in corner number one, and that put us under the caution flag, and it's it's worked well for Ben Silliker, giving him an extra chance here to try and work on the situation, but obviously having issues still in that 5D. Yeah, that's got to be a frustrating situation. And I'm wondering what crew he has on the infield, because I thought all the crews were back in the pits. But. Clinton Jeffrey heading over in that general direction. And I don't, are they calling for a push vehicle there, Clint? You're done. Yeah. So he is getting pushed there oh, through no, the infield. No. All right.
right. I think this time by will see you the You only get to push off twice, guys, and you're done. And that's his two push off, so he is done. Okay. For an out. It's an interesting. Only get to push off twice, but they took the green flag. So if you're involved in the yellow. Yeah, could he stay? We've seen cars go to the work area before. You know, the other thing, guys, is all our sprint car guys are trained. If you pull to the infield, that's considered conceding and calling it off. So when you pull the infield twice, you're done. Green flag underway. Jamie Turner and Jim Hooper in side by side through the corner as they all rumble, bumble, stumble through. Turns one and two. Here comes Hooper and he was going to dive it in deep and thought better of it. Opening right to the inside, wedges himself between Jamie Turner and that inside tires around the inside at three and four. He'll take the lead and try to pull away off of turn number two, which he is pretty successful in doing right now. That was the politest way I've ever seen someone muscle by to take the lead, and I think it's probably because it's Jamie Turner. Who doesn't love Jamie? And he, he cleanly made an aggressive pass off of corner four. Watson battles deep in the field. Travis Cunningham just made an aggressive move to the inside of Glenn's tires. Look at that black and silver number 90 of Cunningham. He has gained three spots in the last lap. Yeah, continuing to move up through the field. Uh, works on the back end of the number one of Holly Porter. As we work down the back stretch, the leader, Jim Hoopin, and pulling away from Elaine Bergeron and the 13 of Corey Turner. Jordan Poirier just muscled his way to the inside of Jamie Turner, moved Poirier up into the top five. Corey Turner looking to find a way around Elaine Bergeron for that second spot. Corey in the Petro Plus, number 13. Jim Hoopin in it. In the corner, number three has the race leader. Bergeron feels the pressure now as Corey Turner is down to the inside of him. They'll work it off a corner four. Bergeron holds the spot. Now Turner looks to the outside off of the front stretch. Now down to the inside, corner number two. Further back, Travis Cunningham in a heated battle with Chris Jones in the number 11 and Mac DeMann in that number 17. DeMann trying to make things happen on the outside group. The fight right now is for a fourth spot as we've got the 91 of Ryan Turner and Jordan Poyer. Poyer trying to run that outside rim. He'll get by Ryan Turner, set his sights on older brother Corey. A big gap between the fifth place car of Ryan Turner back to the sixth place machine of Steve Corey in the zero. Corey in a battle with the 11 of Jamie Turner right behind him is Bailey Hurd in that yellow number 70. Just a tight battle from sixth all the way back to about 15. Leader Jim Hoopin in heavy traffic right now trying to get by Tyler Rand as he comes across the stripe and makes it 15 laps left to go, 10 on the board. He'll get around Tyler Rand. Next up is his boss, Glenn Styers in the car number zero as well as the 19 of Nathan Jackson. Nathan Jackson staying right down at the bottom of the racetrack where the bite is. Just ahead of him is Liam Martin in that number nine to his outside, Glenn Styers, and Jim Hooper and just has them three wide directly in front of our race leaders. Three fastest cars on the track right now, Hooper and Jordan and Steve Poyer. As Jordan Poyer trying to work his way to the outside of Elaine Bergeron for the runner-up spot. Oh, trouble in turn number three. Nathan Jackson goes around right in front of the race leader. That puts us under the caution flag for the second time. 13 laps left to go. Nathan Jackson goes around. And now all that advantage that Jim Hoopinen had will go away. See the number 19 will get a push. Down in corner number three. Elaine Bergeron second. And here we're going to see the spin by Nathan Jackson. Nathan Jackson on the inside of Liam Martin drove it deep down into the turn. And the back end just got away from him. Jim Hoopinen with some pretty slick reactions there in the 14 to avoid that. Because if Hoopinen had committed already to the inside lane, I don't know how he would have avoided that mix-up. 
Williams, Hoopinen, Bergeron, and Jordan Poyer in the top three. When we go back to the green flag, then the Turner brothers, the elder Corey in the fourth spot. Ryan running in fifth. Steve Poyer has worked his way up to the sixth spot. And Sean Evans, who's just had a fantastic night here, although he did slide it over near the creek and hot laps. One is heat, if I'm not mistaken, and is running right now in the seventh spot. Yeah, it didn't start out all that successfully this evening. And man, oh man, watching that replay, look how close this was for the race leader, hooping and driving into three, and he, wow. he had sort of pointed that car to the inside and then quickly thought, I think I'm going to go to the high side. Travis Cunningham, that black and silver number 90. Where did he start this feature race, Greg? Sorry, I didn't. 21st. He's up to 13th now. And I was just watching Mac DeMann as well. He started back in 15th. He's worked his way into the top 10. He's up into 9th. Pole center Jamie Turner not faring as well. He's slipped back to the 8th spot. And McDeman has really turned it up because just a few laps ago we were watching him in a battle with Travis Cunningham and Chris Jones. He's put about five cars between himself and that duo. So 12 laps on the board, 13 to go in this one. And heading into tonight, Jordan Poye, with the strength of his four wins, comes in as the point leader by 38 markers over. The guy that's leading this race right now. And for Jim Hoopin, and I'm sure he'd like Jordan Poye to be a little bit further back. It's hard to make up ground when the guy you're chasing is slowly coming closer to you here in the running order. Ryan Turner, third in points. Fourth, Aaron Turkey not here tonight. I was surprised to see him not in the finishing lineup last night either. Yeah, I, that's, that's... I heard he was under the weather, guys. Not sure what's up, but uh, we did hear... Aaron wasn't feeling well and took the weekend off. Josh Hansen, fifth in the points, and Travis Cunningham, who you mentioned, he's having a great year, up in sixth in the yep. standings and had some very solid runs this year. I he, was watching that, Adam. He was very aggressive on the bottom. But but he didn't, he didn't rough anybody up. He just drives it deep down into the turn. Fortunately, so far, everybody he's driven to the inside of has had the wherewithal to not make any contact. There's not a mark on the right side of those tires. You know, Travis, uh, he's, he loves this place. He was the one guy last night when I seen them in the campground and he said, talking to Mark, he said, don't worry. If it's wet in the pits, we'll make it work. He was petitioning right from last night to get this whole program in. So getting set to go. Here we go one more time, guys. 13 to go. Single file pass restart cone. The Red Rocket will bring us back out of the green flag, and he is being flanked by a pair of Quebec natives. And Elaine Bergeron and Jordan Poyer. Here comes Poyer to the outside of Bergeron into corner number three. Close quarters action down into the third turn between Bergeron and Poirier. Poirier picks up that second spot. Halfway home in this one. Poirier now sets his sights on leader Jim Hoopinen. And these two have had a handful of battles here in 2021. And now Jim Hoopinen can see that Jordan Poirier's there. Poirier running that outside line where you don't slow down quite as much, you don't speed up quite as much, you maintain a lot of speed. Jim Hooper and having to drag those brakes to maintain the line on the bottom of the racetrack. But now that he's seen Corey, let's see if Hoopinen has another gear. Meanwhile, Corey Turner has just picked up the third spot from Bergeron. Ten laps left to go. Poye inches ahead of Hoopinen down in corner number three. But that bottom side works for Hoopinen. He'll drag race to the line. And at the line that time, Poye leads the lap. Hoopinen has adjusted his line on quarter exit. He's running even lower on the racetrack. So he gets the car turned a little bit more in four to really get the tacky clay on the front straight away. Hooping and going to lead this lap. They're heading into heavy traffic here momentarily. The top two duking it out. Corey Turner, Ryan Turner running in the third and fourth positions. And Elaine Bergeron's drifted back to fifth and holding on. Hooping and starting to drive away a little from Corey. You look at that brake rotor at the back of the number 14. It is cherry red on that race car as he is dragging the brakes to get some traction in the bottom groove. Here comes Jordan Poye now working that inside line, just narrowly misses oh. the implement tire. 
Hampton keeps his sight set on the leader who drifts up a little in corner one. That closes the gap as they're trying to get by Liam Martin in the nine. Next time by, it's going to be five laps to go. Five laps remaining in this Pinty's Knights of Thunder feature event. Hoopinen looking pretty in the bottom groove, but Jordan Quarry is an R8 and they're trying to match him lap for lap here in the bottom. Hoopinen down the inside of Glenn Styers, and he's got Jordan Poye in tow. This time by four laps left to go. And you know what? Corey Turner is catching the top two in a hurry as they are right in the thick of heavy traffic. Hoopinen loses ground to Poye that time with two cars driving directly in front of him. Corey Turner closing it in about eight car lengths behind. The 28 of Jordan Poirier is hooping and having to slow down for Dan Nanakoke in the 15 and Dale Goslin in the three. Hooping and overshot turn number one. Poirier's right there and he pounces off a of corner number two as right now hooping and boxed in behind Dale Goslin and Corey Turner is there. He's right behind Jordan Poirier with two laps left to go. Time is not in the favor of Corey Turner. Hooperton cannot keep that car on the bottom in one and two. He's going to venture up the racetrack to get around Goslin. Thinks better of it. He'll try the bottom. White flag is at one more trip around. Poirier throws it around the outside, trying to make something work. Can he launch it off of two? One more opportunity. Hooperton into the inside. Poirier to the outside. They battle to the checkered flag. Who is it going to be? Hooperton. Poirier. Corey Turner comes home third. What a race here at Brighton Speedway. Difference, 0.3 seconds, three tenths of a second between winner Jim Hoopin and Jordan Poirier. Corey Turner third, Ryan Turner fourth, and Elaine Bergeron crosses the line in the fifth spot. Wow. Ooh. Three tenths of a second at the line. Jim Hoopinen had to be thinking about all the times this season he has been a contender up against Jordan Poirier and things just went bad. Let's have a look at this replay. We're gonna look at the final lap. Hoopinen got around Dale Goslin. That was a huge move to get to the inside there. Yeah, that uh, sealed the deal as Poirier tried around the outside and here he came off a of corner number four. Gave it all he had, but at the line, Jim Hoopinen gets his second win of the year. Second win at Brighton Speedway on the year as well at a three events. And here comes the Red Rocket down to victory lane. Top three we will hear from tonight. Sir Hoopinen does it again. Whew. A wild finish. Top two in the points, but in reverse order, Jordan Poye came in as the point leader. Jim Hoopinen chasing. He'll chisel away a little bit at that for this victory here tonight. As you see Jim unbuckling, getting the helmet off, and we're going to send it down to Pinty's victory. Lane Clinton Jeffries got the sword in hand. What a prize to get as a victor. Yeah, Jim Hoopinen down here, going to climb out to the Brighton fans and let him know you appreciate that amazing racing you saw here tonight and all weekend Brighton. We got one more feature win to go, but our Knights of Thunder 360 feature winner, Red Rocket, Jim Hoopinen. Kevin Lovey's in, along with the rest of the crew to get it done, and Jim picks up his second sword of the season. Come on around, Jimmy, let's talk about your drive. What a battle there with Hoopinen, uh, sorry, with uh, Poirier and yourself. What a drive there. You guys were going at it. Did you know where he was most that race, Jim? Yeah, I, I seen him get beside me there a couple of times. I'm like, oh, I better step it up here and uh, start hitting my marks a little better. And uh, yeah, I don't know. He was, I, I figured the track would roll the middle pretty good, but I had good grip on the bottom. So I, I stuck to the game plan just like last time when we won here. Last night we did the same thing. We just had a lot of traffic to get through. And uh, But yeah, this is awesome. Getting there. I just got my first sword today, so now I got a second one. That's pretty cool. My little guy wants to have a sword fight later, so. But, uh, yeah, awesome. Wicked job, Jimmy. Congrats on the win. He gets it done here for the crew. We'll get over here and talk to Jordan Poirier as well. Jordan, come on out front. Jordan, what a drive for you. I mean, you were dominated this series to start, but Hoopin' is making you sharpen your pencil and go at it. Let's talk about that drive. You took a lot of shots at him. Lap traffic might have given you a shot, but in the end, the 14 got you. Yeah, we gave everything we had. I think we had a solid car on the inside. The outside was getting away more. The race was going on. I, I thought when we were catching lap traffic, they were was going to be all on the bottom, but they were 
uh, blocking my lane on the top. I couldn't catch a break. Hoop was really good. He was protecting the inside. I, I tried, but uh, I, I couldn't sneak my nose enough inside him to pass him. Yeah. Second, still really good. We, we start the bolt night uh, this weekend, so we're pretty happy to finish with a two and four. Thanks, Jordan. Safe travels back to Quebec. Thank you. Jordan Poirier, ladies and gentlemen, get over here and talk to Corey Turner. Corey, can you be happy with the third? I mean, these guys have been lighting this series up. You were catching them at the end, though. I think another five and a bit more traffic. You might have had something for them. Tell us about your drive tonight. Yeah, it wasn't real good early. Just kind of bide my time. Jimmy had a good half a lap on us. And then, yeah, late. I don't know if they got held up or their car went away. Ours stayed the same. But they were definitely getting closer. I missed the bottom once. And I think... Had I hit that a little better, we would have been a different story. But either way, thanks to you guys for televising this on G Force. Tons of people back in Tilsonburg and Caster Center, especially my uh, my grandparents and my wife's parents and my grandmother. So got to say hi to all of them. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a big weekend next weekend. We got to thank uh, Jay and Celeste and Mobile One, uh, Petro Plus, Pesky Penguin, Burger Barn. Um, you know, really good run for our team, and uh, I think we're going to get one here before the end of the year. Corey Turner finishes third, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan Poirier is second, and your winner tonight in the Knights of Thunder 360 Series presented by Pinty's. Jim Hoopin in the Red Rocket picks up his second feature win in Sword of the Year. Now we got more sprint cars coming up. We brought 35 of them here. The top 24 are going to go at it for their 25-lap feature event with one more race to go after that. And we'll be right back with a full field rundown to the booth, and then we'll jump to a quick commercial break. Guys, tell us where the finishing was for everybody else. You've got the top three on the front straightaway. Finishing fourth was Ryan Turner. Alain Bergeron fell back to the fifth spot, but then held strong to maintain a top five finish. Steve Poirier, sixth. Sean Evans, seventh. Mac DeMann, eighth. Travis Cunningham, a great drive up to the ninth spot. He and Mac DeMann both passed a lot of cars and really put on a show tonight. Bailey Hurd rounded out the top ten in that number 70. 11th through 20th, Josh Hansen, Holly Porter, DJ Christie. Last night's winner could only muster a 13th place run tonight. Jamie Turner finishes 14th, Chris Jones 15th, Dale Goslin 16th, Dan Danicoke 17th, and it's Glenn Styers, Liam Martin, and Tyler Rand. Rounding out the field, 21st on back, it's Paul Piconin. Finishing 22nd was Nathan Jackson, and rounding out the field was Ben Siliker in that 5D. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, the Action Sprint Tour are going to light things up here at Brighton Speedway. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Ribs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. Early man discovered Whoa. fire, but Quick Quick perfected fire. Quick Quick is the only fire starter that guarantees to start your campfire, wood stove, or fireplace without the need for kindling or paper. Find your nearest Quick Quick retailer at quickquick.com. What makes a trailer a misca? Is it the heavy duty Canadian steel they are made from? Or is it the exceptional finish that will last year after year? How about knowing that these are the best back trailers in the industry? But these are the reasons you buy Miska. So what makes these trailers Miska? It's the hard work and Canadians who craft them. We are Miska. We are Canadian power. This GeForce TV broadcast is brought to you by WeatherTech Custom Cut Floor Mats and Vehicle Accessories. Visit them online at weathertech.ca. Pinties, making great food fun. Welcome back to Brighton Speedway in the Labor Day Classic. I'm Adam Ross, the official sidekick of GeForce TV, along with Greg Cowlin up in the booth, Clinton Jeffrey trackside chasing down everything that happens on the racetrack around the racetrack while well, we sit up here in our ivory tower and call the action from the <laughs> from the cheap seats the ivory tower you couldn't pay me enough to smell that booth <laughs> it's well, been a rough night last night you offered to lick toilets and if <laughs> In exchange for not having to race direct. So. I was going to say, you better finish that story, Adam. <laughs> Don't just leave it <laughs> hanging. Uh, oh, dear. 
It's all right. Worse rumors have been started about me in my long years. I don't know. That, that would be kind of up there. <laughs> all right. We're ready to go with a feature event for the Action Sprint Tour. 25 laps for them as well. Starting lineup looks like this going from the pole at Amosley, Ontario. The car star Branford, Bobcat Branford, number 3S. Austin Rose to his outside from St. Thomas, the Oakwood Transport. Wells Foundry, 4 of Jesse Costa. Going from third out of Bowmanville, the 31 is Dale Kern. And to his outside, the point leader and most dominant driver of the Crate Sprints here in Ontario to Port Colburn, the Maverick Real Estate. Dow Auto 5D, Jacob Dykstra. Going from fifth out of Hamilton, the MS Road Solutions, DJD Graphics, car number 12, DD, Darren Dryden. And to his outside, the only other driver to pick up a win this year in this division of Mount Bridges in the Vibrant Farms Pride Seeds, number 45, Nick Sheridan. Starting seventh at a Kitchener in the 50 LS, it's Adrian Staley. And to his outside, going from the eighth spot from Waterloo, the Velocity Mechanics ILA Sports, number 19D, Alan Downey. Rolling off ninth at a Wayne Fleet, the Sundance Pressure Washing. Pressure Washing, car number BS39, that's Brett Stratford. And starting in tenth at a Bushweekend, car number 99, that is Josh Hill. Starting in eleventh out of Hamilton, the Petro Plus Travel Stop, Burger Barn 56 of Derek Lemaire. And starting in the 12th spot from Thamesford, the Oakwood Transport Fast Track Performance, number seven of Eric Gledhill. Starting in 13th out of Oshuiken, the Kanata Fuels Nitro 54 Variety, number nine C of Brian Nanako. And his outside going from 14th out of Thamesford, the Vipon number 45L of Curtis Gartley. Starting 15th from Ancaster, the Seven Star Express Line 26X of Terry Baker. And on his outside from Brockville, the Gananaque Shevels, number 52 of Matt Billings. Starting at 17th at Thamesford, the Oakwood Transport number 14. That is Larry Gledhill. And alongside in 18th at Brantford, the Burger Barn East 1 Construction 48 is Lance Erskine. 19th starting spot is where we find John Verney from Salmon Arm, British Columbia in the Seven Star Express Line 26. And at his outside starting 20th from Six Nations, the True North Dot Bat number 38 of Derek Miller. Starting at 21st at Port Perry, the Town Line MFG number 4B of Daryl Peltier. And from the 22nd spot, from Rockwood, the Radio Shuttle Neely Auto, number 74 of Rob Neely. Starting in the back row, 23rd out of Sydney, Ontario, in the Draper Doors, Penny Blake home team, number 9 of Luke Stewart. And going from 24th out of Brantford, the National Building Group, JDL Distributing, 49L, will be Lucas Smith. So that's how they'll line up. 24 cars strong, 25 laps the distance. Twelve rows of two make up our starting lineup. Austin Rose in that black and white number three. Jesse Costa in the number four. <laughs> oh, it's, the, past, it's past that hour, Adam. No, it's not yet. It's not. It's not <laughs> nearly time. But it's the things that we do to pass the time. So while you were introducing that starting lineup, I was busy doing my research. Is that what you call it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Action Sprint Tour will do the four-wide salute again, so you'll get double duty here tonight. A chance to wave these drivers on. Get your cell phone out. The camera light glowing. Wave these 24 drivers on and salute them. The Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinties. They put on some fantastic racing all across the province of Ontario. So ladies and gentlemen, on your feet, get ready to salute these 24 drivers. Once again, they are four wide and fancy for you, the fans. This is the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinties. Just to qualify for these races, Greg, we talked about it earlier on. That is a feat in and of itself. So mission one for these drivers accomplished. Now it is time to perform. This is when the points are on the line. This is when the money's on the line. And a trip to victory lane for one lucky driver. Trip to the podium for second and third. Seven races so far on the tour. Jacob Dykstra, 
Has won six. One win for Nick Sheridan. Can someone else pick up a win here tonight? We'll find out. Austin Rose and Jesse Costa will bring us to the green flag. 25 laps of distance for the Action Sprint Tour presented by Pinty's. Austin Rose got a little bit sideways coming to the green. Jesse Costa with a smoother run on the outside. They'll battle side by side into three and four. Who's going to lead lap number one? It'll be Jesse Costa and the Oakland Transport number four. Austin Rose hanging on to that second spot. Dale Curran side by side with Jacob Dykstra. The point leader. Oh, close call there with Dale Curran as they come down to complete lap number two. Jacob Dykstra with Nick Sheridan right behind him in that red and black number 45. Sheridan working a higher groove on the racetrack. Out in front, Jesse Costa has extended his lead to about 10 car lengths over Austin Rose, trying to drive away from the field. Costa, Rose, Dykstra, Sheridan, and Dale Curran slips up a little bit. That opens the door for Alan Downey to grab that fifth position as he heads down the back stretch. Good battle behind them with Darren Dryden and Brett Strafford as Dryden will pull away from the 39. Lucas Smith started dead last in that 49L. He's picked up a few spots here in the early going of this one, but being a 25 lap race, you've got to go and you've got to go in a hurry, especially when you're starting 12 rows deep in the field. Jesse Costa, veteran now, this great sprint car division, multi-time winner. And the driver behind him is a raw rookie, Austin Rose, turned many a lap in the micro sprint and now doing a great job wheeling one of these great sprint cars running in the second spot against the hottest driver in the province. Once they do get to some slower traffic, it's going to be tough sledding for these lead cars. They are running every groove on the racetrack out there deep in the field as Jacob Dykstra drives to the inside of Rose. The battle for second is on. They're side by side down the back stretch. Across the stripe this time by eight laps will go on the scoreboard. 17 to go. Jacob Dykstra has taken over the second spot. And leader Jesse Costa can see a whole slew of traffic right in front. Jacob Dykstra sees it too and is probably licking his chops. Being in the second spot is not a disadvantage when you're coming up on traffic. And Jacob Dykstra closing the gap quickly on Jesse Costa in that number four as Costa approaches the tail end of the field. He approaches with a little bit of caution, trying to run the bottom of the racetrack to get around Terry Baker. 10 laps on the board, 15 to go here for the Action Sprint Tour. Brighton Speedway, race number two on the weekend. Jacob Dykstra looking to do double duty in victory lane. My apologies to John Fernie. It's Fernie behind the wheel, of course, of the 26th. Not Terry Baker. It's Jesse Costa now. Oh! Gets into it with his teammate trying to put him a lap down. And Jesse Costa with a wild flip in turn number three. Trying to get around teammate Larry Gledhill and climbed over that car and flipped him. Car number four. The leader is out. And he unbuckles and climbs from the Oakwood Transport. Number four, he is A-OK. -okay. Quentin Jeffrey is headed to the scene. Well, I got his wheel, guys, so you know what that means. <laughs> He's wow. slow to get out of the car, and if you recall, Jesse Costa had a bad back injury a couple years ago. And we'll see, make sure he's all right here. We're just watching the replay here, Clinton. Man, he sails it over that left rear, Larry Gledhill. And obviously, no, I mean, they're teammates. Obviously, there's no intent, but that's the nature of sprint car racing. And, and I've got to wonder if, you know, Jesse Costa, knowing Jacob Dykstra has won so many of these races, you know you've got to be aggressive. You, go, you know you've got to make your moves where you can. And Jesse Costa taking a minute to gather himself there. Track owner Mark Rinaldi is on the scene to offer some assistance. As Clinton mess mentioned, Jesse Costa did suffer a back injury. And a race at Humberstone a few years back. And well, he's walking away on his own power a bit gingerly. A lot of swear words coming out of Jesse Costa. You can imagine he felt he probably had this one in hand here. 
tonight, but he's leaning up against the push car here and getting ready to go. Driver of the Bar Motorsports Stable, Darren Barr, putting together a fine fleet of race cars. And uh, solid night. It was up to, upside down very quickly. Yeah, it, it sure can. And as we say, Jesse Costa was just uh, aggressively working his way through traffic. It's what you've got to do in these race cars. And I mean, if you're Gledhill, the driver of the 14, who, who the contact was made with, I mean, I don't know that he made much of a mistake either, but I'm sure he feels terrible inside that race car right now. We're going to have another look at it all the way from turn number two. So Costa gets that run to the inside, and it's not until he's almost into turn three that Gledhill would really know that he was on the inside. It happens so fast. Yeah. As soon as they touch wheels, you're just along for the ride. Sometimes it's a simple whoops, and they separate. And other times it can be as nasty as that. And Good to see Jesse get out, uh, obviously, after we said he'd had that incident a few years back. Here's the look from the corner four camera. Man. There was so little contact there. Right? Like the, he just down into turn number three, just wrong spot, wrong way to make contact, and around he goes. And it may sound silly, but it, it's almost when they come down and land on all four wheels, it's probably the one that hurts the most because it goes all the way up your spine. Rather than tipping over on your side or on the wing, and that might be a little more uncomfortable, but uh, to land square down on the wheels like Jesse did, that's that's a rough shot. Well, guys, it doesn't look really bad. Obviously, he's out of this race. He's got a flat right rear and probably some other uh, torsion bar issues. But, uh, you know, his dad, Oscar, over here, they're, they're a little concerned. As you know, Jesse had that bad back accident, uh, bad <clears throat> injury a couple years ago. He is going to take a ride back in the ambulance. The paramedics do want to give a cursory check, but how about it for Jesse Cost, ladies and gentlemen? He's putting on a show here, and now he's going to have a long ride back to Western Ontario tonight. But, uh, you know, guys, when that happens and they're so angry, it kind of makes you think they're all right. You know, Jesse's definitely going to be sore, and I'm sure the back's going to be tight, but he was more frustrated than he was hurt, and that's a good sign if it makes sense. Oh, absolutely, and, and probably if you asked him, he's not mad at anybody. He's just mad. And, you know, kudos to his dad, Oscar. They did a great job. He came up to the side track and said, hey, can I come see him? And that's the proper thing to do, you know, let the officials do their deal. And, uh, of course, we want to get the family in there. And, and, and Oscar came up and said, hey, remember about his back? And it's part of the reason I ran over there, too, just from well, let them know he, he, he had issues in the past. Watching that replay, Greg, it's the final landing. Yeah. Everything I watched in that crash, yeah, it might make you a little bit uncomfortable. It's that final landing, like you say, where the car squats down and, and bottoms out. Yeah. It, it, like, my dad had the same problem in a dirt sportsman car. Got sent up in the air, and when you slam down, it just compresses all your so, vertebrae, and there's no, you know, you have a, a bit of suspension but nothing that can handle that kind of whack so we're watching it in slow motion right now so these impacts are unfortunate that's the one right yeah. there that final down on the left hand side and you can actually see the whole car shudder as it lands so we'll hope for the best for jesse costa i'm sure he's in pretty good hands back there and all of that i i noticed on the last replay how close jacob dykstra came to being caught up in that as well. I, I'm sure he felt the breeze going by his arm because that cockpit's open on the left-hand side, and it was a close call for Jacob Dykstra. But uh, good to see Jesse walking away. And, and you're right, Clint. If, if he's got that emotion to be angry, that means the other emotions are a little farther down on the chart on how he's feeling right now. Tomorrow it might be different. Then again, you know, regret's an awful thing as well. So it... Uh, it's going to be a rough week for Jesse physically and I'm sure mentally over that one. Yeah, th th that's the kind of 
the sort of one that you'll beat yourself up over and racing is hard that's all there is to it it's a difficult sport it's a difficult venture we look again bounces off that right rear tire spins around backwards pivots off the left side of the car and that final landing again these containment seats the cars even though they protect the driver all the way around there is more protection on the right side of the driver Cars begin being pushed away from the scene here and should be able to fire them up and get them going here shortly with 14 laps left to go of 25 here for the Action Sprint Tour. Alan Downey getting some last moment instructions there on the front straightaway. <laughs> you can't sneak around with bright pink like that. I don't know if that was adjust the top wing or steal second. <laughs> <laughs> you're not winning we're not in the front <laughs> go faster you're walking home that was a good shot there too of the landing so many angles of that man everyone hurts just yeah, as much exactly. as the last exactly There's still another race after this, folks. Don't forget one more coming up, and that is the Comp 4 feature event after the Action Sprint Tour. We're going to bring the yellow back out, I believe. Cars are being pushed off. What they may do is start to stage the cars just so there's an open lane down there and four. They're kind of bunched together. They want to make sure there's safe space for everybody to get through. Yeah, that's the issue here. On the back stretch. they're three and four wide, so... They're moving a couple around to make a lane on the bottom. We're going to fire them up and get ready to roll. So once again, don't forget to tune in next Friday night. Humberstone Speedway, live on GeForce TV. The 360 Sprints, Crate Sprints, Street Stocks, and Dirt Sportsman. Then the following night, the APC Series heads into round seven of eight at Sunset Speedway up in Innisville, Ontario. We'll be there live for that event as we cover all the APC Series events here on GeForce TV. Friday, September the 17th, a newly added date. Should mention that at Merrittville Speedway. On Friday, September the 17th, again, it's the 360 Sprints, Crate Sprints, Hoosier Stocks, and Mini Stocks. A typical Friday night at Oshweken, but just uh, over in Thorold for the night. All brought to you by Burger Barn. Want to thank Jay Hill and the folks at Burger Barn for presenting that event. And then it's championship weekend for both the Quick Wick Firestarter Super Stock Series and the APC Series at Delaware Speedway, Friday, September the 24th, Saturday, September the 25th from Delaware, all live here on GeForce TV. So make sure you tune in. Join us on YouTube. Uh, look us up, GeForce TV. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the ringer for the notifications. You can also follow us on Facebook where we broadcast live as well. GeForceTV.net is where you'll find us free all the time. Can't beat that price. No, that's right in my budget. We could pay you, but Adam's not made of money. He's, he's, he's investing all of his money into Corner 3 at Flamborough. That's right. That's right. I'm supporting the motorsports industry. Motorsport has different corners and One. areas that are named after people we're going to call... Corner three at Flamborough, Daddy's Money. <laughs> Daddy's Money Chicane. <laughs> Daddy's Money Pit. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's all right. We're I having hope a Connor's not watching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a good time. And, and he's doing a fine job. He's learning, right? You, you learn from every, every misstep, every opportunity. I got to send a shout out to Darren West, who said, LOL, you guys are hilarious. Great commentary tonight. So thanks. Glad you're enjoying the show. Yeah, he thinks it's funny. He hasn't been in the booth here to <laughs> catch all the fumes. You're awful hard on me. <laughs> really? Whose eyes were watering earlier on tonight? <laughs> I, we were both laughing pretty hard. I, I think Adam's, there were tears. When, when you, you're laughing at him and Greg goes silent, Ryan and I know exactly what's <laughs> happening up there. No, the last time it was something different. I'm not sure if I sent it to you. You might have to check your phone. <laughs> I don't think I got it. <laughs> Random meme. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> it wasn't a me licking toilets, was it? No, <laughs> no, no, no. I similar think but different. Similar. <laughs> uh, I encourage you to become a blood donor. <laughs> oh my. Oh, I was just about to say something serious, Adam. Isn't that a fantastic shot? That I is love, serious. I love <laughs> Yes, it is, but not the way you're speaking of it. Anyways, this shot down the front stretch of Brighton, I love that look. It shows you really how wide this track is. We, we call it a tight bull ring, but there's plenty of racing room here. There right? really is. You know, it's, um, it's tight in the terms that you really don't open these engines up that much. You've got to get really slowed down at each end. I love Brighton Speedway. I mean, I've, I've made that no secret whatsoever. I love this place. Whenever we come down here, the racing is fantastic. Even though you think it's in the middle of nowhere, it's, it is, it's a it's great in, place. It's in the middle of nowhere. If, you, if you've ever driven to Brighton not knowing where it was, it feels like you, you drive forever and then go two more exits and you get there. <laughs> See, just when Angie starts to like him, this is, this is what gets well, him in I, trouble again. I set him up for that one. Well, we set him up this, to get in trouble is, all the time. This is actually just the beginning of something great. When you get to Brighton... Then you're moving on to, you know, the bigger city in Belleville. Then you get into Kingston, which is a big metropolis. I love, I love Kingston. I, I Rockville, love Prince, Prince Edward County. Yes, and the, then you go along the St. Lawrence Seaway, and there's nowhere more beautiful in the province than that. So, really, it's Brighton is the gateway to something special. And I, I'm, look at I'm, you I'm, kissing Angie's butt. Well, I'm a homer. <laughs> I, I'm born and bred from this area, so I'm a county boy. I like it here so much, I just might spend the night, Greg. <laughs> I've had my 24-hour fill. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> but I do love it here, man. We and, and we all joke, in the past three years before COVID, we all took shares of the announcing duties here. We've all done this drive quite a bit. Always awesome racing. I love how early we were going home on most Saturday nights. It's just a good deal. Tonight was my second trip of the year here. And I was thinking back to 2017 when I did it every Saturday night. Oh. And I thought, oh, my, this place has gotten further away. How did I do it? Every I love being here. I just wish it was a lot closer to, to Brantford, that's for sure, because it's, it's, it is coming home. And for I, the Brighton fans, Adam managed to bring the rain tonight, yeah. as he always did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I don't disappoint. The nice thing now that Connor drives, I mean, no place is all that far because I can close my eyes. I can lean back. I'm quite often startled awake by the lurching and jerking of the truck. Say, but does that mean we're going to find both of you asleep at a red light in the middle of the night like we used to find you, Adam? That is alleged. Brett Stratford. Yeah, well, Brett Stratford alleges. made it, so I believe Brett Stratford. I, I have dopey eyes. It's nothing to think that, that I, my eyes are actually open and they look closed, but I wouldn't put anything past me. He said your head was back on the seat, your eyes were back in your head, and you were at a green light passed out at 2 in the morning. And it wasn't a drinking thing, it was a sleeping thing, even, even still. Hey, at least you made it to the light. There was probably cheeseburger dribble down <laughs> the front of his shirt. Man, I was I was driving the, the one time I've driven the G-Force trailer home from Sobble, and I swear to you, I woke up in a roundabout. All these FBHs <laughs> got me sleepy tonight. <laughs> oh, my. It's punching hour. That's what it means. We're ready to go. That's Let's right. punch the clock. Green is out on the Action Sprint Tour, powered by Pinty's. Let's go. Jacob Dykstra in a familiar spot out in front over Austin Rose and Allen Downey's into the thick of it. He got his first win one year ago. 14 laps to go to settle a distance. It'll be 13 now as they cross the stripe. Next time by, it'll be halfway through this action sprint tour feature event. Allen Downey with a big run up at turn number two. He'll pick up that second spot in three and four and set his sights on Jacob Dykstra. Whatever signals he got, it worked. Just got him into the second spot. He's trying to close the gap now on Jacob Dykstra. Put Austin Rose back to third. Nick Sheridan hanging in the fourth spot. Dale Curran having a fantastic run in fifth. Yeah, Curran hanging on to that top five spot. A little bit of daylight between himself and Brett Stratford. Back in six, Stratford has Darren Dryden hot on his heels. Off of corner number four, this time by it'll be 10 laps left to go for Jacob Dykstra as he looks for win number seven on the season. Allen Downey trying to close the gap, 1.784 seconds back. 
They're running similar lap times right now on the racetrack. Jacob Dykstra and Alan Downey. The big equalizer is going to be the lap traffic that they're closing in on. Just nine laps to go, but they're going to close in on traffic in about a lap and a half from now, Greg. Downey closed the gap just a little bit, but like you said, this traffic is going to be the major factor maybe in deciding this as we've got eight laps left to go. The leader, Jacob Dykstra, sees John Verney in front. Alan Downey picked up four tenths of a second that lap. Downey is coming in that 19 machine. Laps are winding down. They've arrived at the back end of the field. Here goes Dykstra to the inside. Larry Gladhill now sets his sights on John Verney. Alan Downey following suit, but now two lap cars between the top two. Down the front straightaway, Dykstra's put a couple of cars between himself and Downey after a couple of laps where Downey was closing the distance. Downey has now lost the handle on that 19 machine, not nearly as quick as he was. Five laps left to go for Jacob Dykstra as he's been able to slice through this lap traffic. Allen Downey now just getting by Leary Gledhill as Dykstra now works around Brian Anico. Dykstra having to get up off the bottom of the racetrack to go around Brian Manicook in the nine. You can see the car not quite as fast up off the bottom as it was when he was able to dig right at the inside of the track. Off a of corner four, works the leader, Jacob Dykstra. Another time by Downey in the second spot, but he's got three lap traffic, uh, three lap cars rather between he and the leader, Jacob Dykstra, Austin Rose having a battle now with Nick Sheridan for third. Things are not going the way of Jacob Dykstra. He is really trying to work hard through this slower traffic. Contact almost with that slower car. Down in one and two for a race leader. Yeah, a little bump there with Luke Stewart, but moves on by. Allen Downey now trying to get by John Verney. Oh, I thought he was going to lose the car there for a minute. Gathers it back up. The white flag on the field. Jacob Dykstra. One more lap around the racetrack. He's got to work into three and four. His nearly perfect season continues. Dykes are going to take the checkered flag here at Brighton Speedway and sweep the weekend. Allen Downey comes home second. Austin Rose with an impressive third. Nick Sheridan and Dale Curran round out the top five. Oh, Allen Downey all over the back end to the 26 of John Verney there and nearly went over. He hopped over the left rear as they were settling down there. Woo. So Jacob Dykstra picks up yet another win with the Action Sprint Tour. Second place, Alan Downey, and an impressive, impressive run for Austin Rose. Coming home with a podium finish. As John Verney goes up to have a little talk with Alan Downey there before he pulls off into the pit area. We'll get a chance to hear from Downey in a minute as we see Jacob Dykstra heading around here and trying to find his way to victory lane down track side. He's going to do some donuts up in corner number four. Now the trick is you got to keep it going. Don't stall it. And he does it. This kid's been talented from the second he stepped foot in a sprint car. Great run, a great drive, a, a well-deserved victory. That was not easy for Jacob Dykstra, but he does make it look easy. Jacob Dykstra with his seventh win on the year, getting ready to climb out of the 5D here and pick up the trophy and the spoils and the whole crew in here to congratulate him. Two for two on the weekend. Costa was running good, but after that incident, it was all Dykstra. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. How about it for Jacob Dykstra? One more feature event to come to close off the program right after Victory Lane here. Jacob, what a great run again. You know, Jesse Costa had you up on your game, then he got tangled with the lap car. It was pretty much all she wrote from there. 
Uh, yeah, I was just kind of following him, kind of seeing what he was running. Um, I was able to roll the middle pretty good and roll the bottom, and I was able to catch up to him. Um, I just kind of waited for these lap traps to come and uh, see what happened from there. Uh, I know I'm pretty good around that, so uh, uh, sucks what happened to him. Hopefully he's okay, but uh, it was a good night. It's all the weekend for your team, Jake. Yeah, man, I got to thank everyone here, like my crew, my dad, my mom, uh, Seth, Owen, Troy, Tyler. Uh, and all my sponsors too, Mavericks, A to Z Expedition, Dow Auto, Simplistic Linens. Uh, man, this is an awesome weekend and you guys are great. Thanks for all the things. There you have it, Jacob Dykstra gets it done, ladies and gentlemen. Alan, looked like you had something for Jacob a little bit on. He was gone and then it just kind of went away on you. Got pinched up with some lap traffic in the end. Uh, still second is nothing to shake a stick at here, bud. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, definitely found something. I wish the lap cars wouldn't race the leaders like they're going for a win, um, but I guess it is what it is. He had to deal with it. I had to deal with it. Um, just short end of the stick tonight. That's all right. Solid drive, Alan Down. We get over here and talk to our first time talking to Austin Rose. Austin, uh, you know, you come out of the micro sprints and you're looking really good in this crate in a very tough division. Welcome to Victory Lane. Not quite where you want to be, but third's nothing to shake a stick at here, man. It's a tough class to race with. Tonight was really good. Uh, I, it took me a while to find my rhythm there. Like we got passed by uh, Jacob and by Alan on the bottom. Alan really showed me how to roll the bottom really good. I hate it for Jesse though. Like that sucks, man. He's a really good guy. He deserves a win. Um, but man, for my team, this is awesome. I want to thank Nathan Acklin. I want to thank my dad. I got Mac Devan down there. He's been wrenching with me. Uh, I want to thank my sponsors, Elgin Roofing. Uh, Carstar Brantford, Bobcat of Brantford, Best Way Auto Supply, Nathan Ackland Insurance. And uh, man, it's awesome to race in front of a crowd tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate it. It's an awesome weekend. We did really good. So, man, we're uh, definitely heading in the right direction. Say hi to my mom back home. Hope she's still watching. We'll go to Humberstone next week and try to do better. Your mom better be watching. You did great. Austin Rose, one of the up-and-coming stars here in the Action Sprint Tour. How about it for Alan Downey and Jacob Dykstra continuing to dominate the year? We'll send it up to Greg and Adam for a field rundown. We'll be right back on GeForce TV. As Jacob Dykstra picks up the win. Alan Downey in second. Austin Rose third. Fourth was the 45 of Nick Sheridan. The 31 of Dale Kern in fifth. Sixth will go to Brett Stratford in the BS 39. Eric Ledhill crosses the line in car number seven. Seventh. Eighth goes to the 56 of Derek Lemaire. Ninth, Darren Dryden. Tenth, Josh Hill. Eleventh through 15th, Adrian Staley, Matt Billings, Rob Neely, Terry Baker, and Curtis Gartley. 16 through 20, Derek Miller, Lance Erskine, Daryl Peltier, Lucas Smith, and Brian Nanakoke. And then completing the field, Luke Stewart, 21st, Larry Gledhill, 22nd, John Verney, 23rd, and Jesse Costa, 24th, after leading the first uh, six laps of the event. And uh, when we return, it'll be the Bills Johns Comp for the final feature of the night here on GeForce TV. Hey guys, Jose here at Queenston Chevrolet Buick GMC in our service department. Welcome back to our car care series. If you are looking for quick, efficient, and quality maintenance for your vehicle's essential needs, our certified express service is here to help. Please follow me. Okay, so we're inside of our express service bay. You don't need an appointment to get your vehicle serviced here. It's an under 30 minute lube, oil, and filter change all done by our GM certified technicians that know your vehicle inside and out. You can also get a complimentary car wash at the end of your service and get an alignment check done here in our express service bay. Okay guys, that's a wrap for episode number two of our car care series. Please visit our express service. Again, no appointments necessary for here, so we'll be waiting for you. Thanks. A guy like this, who relies on his truck for work, knows that his truck will take care of him, and he takes care of his truck. And WeatherTech has always been the ultimate protection. From floor liners, to no drill mud flaps, to tech liner for your truck bed, to bump step, to the handy under seat storage system. And Cup Phone keeps phones secure in any cup holder. Order your ultimate protection today at weathertech.ca. 
Back live, Brighton Speedway, final feature on the track. It's the Bills Johns Comp 4 going from the pole, and this one will be the 24 of Travis Connor Fox to his outside, the 33. That'll be Adam Milton. Starting in the third position, car number 19, and that is Jordan Baldwin. Jordan Baldwin in the 19 to the outside, the 44 of Tommy Bailey. Fifth starting spot is where we find the 55. That's Zach Humphrey and Aiden Fletcher to the outside going from six in the 42 junior. Seventh starting spot, the 08 machine, and that is Josh French. And to his outside, Devin Kippen in the 43. Row number five will be the 20 of Cody Sager and the 17 of Mark Superna. Back there in row number six, car number five is Eric Conlon to his outside, number 12, Caleb Severin. The double zero is Ken Evans. The 22 is Keith Dunk. And then we have the 35 of Taja Farrell Sonnenberg. And her outside the 97 of Kyle Gregory. That's the starting grid for the Bills Johns Comp 4 final feature of the night. And it will be for 15 laps. And again, we do have a few mini stocks competing here with the Bills Johns Comp 4. Those drivers and all things shake out will be removed from the running order for points only. But we're invited to compete here this evening. So the Brighton regulars will know who's who. I can assure you, Greg, that I do not. <laughs> I think it's clear we don't. 15 laps. Final feature of a fantastic weekend here at Brighton Speedway. Sad we weren't able to be here last night, but man, a fun night tonight. Mother Nature helped the racing, I think. Did a great job at the racetrack, and we're going to wind it up one more time. The Bills Johns Comp Fours. Green flag is out. Adam Milton with a little bit of a jump on that start. He fired fairly early, got the advantage through one and two. He'll lead the way down into three and four, but... On the charge is the 44, Tommy Bailey. Yeah, Bailey trying to reel in Milton in that 33. Had one car joined late. That was the double zero of Ken Evans right up in front of the leader. So if you see that car on screen, that will be a car about to go a lap down. Wow. Just missing the rear bumper of the race leader, Adam Milton, was Tommy Bailey with that move and down into three and four. Now he'll run the inside through one and two, but what a launch. Adam Milton gets off the turn. Full car in the infield. That's Keith Dunk coming to a stop on the back stretch. Not sure that might bring out a caution flag. Nope, he's going to join the tail of the field. So we stay under the green as Milton's out in front, but it's a good battle for that second position. Bailey and Kippen, they did that in the qualifying heats. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Looks like the top three have broken out just a little bit. A bit of daylight back to the fourth spot to a three-car battle now that Kippen has joined that lead duo up at the front. Here comes Kippen, wound up on the outside line. Try to get by 44 of Tommy Bailey. Tucks in behind the 33 of Milton. Now looks to the outside of him to go for the lead. Milton having a hard time keeping that car on the bottom. Goes into the corner, slides up the racetrack. Oh, oh ow, that's going to hurt. Ow, and even more. Wow. Those were some solid, solid hits there. Two hard licks for the 33 of Adam Milton. Man, oh man, hard hit to the outside wall, coming off a of turn number four, then comes across the track, and I think it was Josh French, wasn't it? Let's have a look at the replay here, coming off a of turn number four, directly into the outside wall, able to oh, save yeah. it a little bit. So he didn't hit the wall head on, look at this view. Oh. Just nowhere to go right in front of Josh French. Mark Supernant gets caught up in it as well. Zach Humphrey caught a piece of it and then gets hit late. Man, oh man. How about our camera crew and Spencer, our producer? We caught that. If we now just seen four different angles yep. of that same accident. And everyone, like you said earlier, hurt the same. 
Adam Milton down here getting a toe back and you get a look at some of the damage here Ryan's providing with our roving camera. And they tore a bunch of the front end. You can see fluid dripping down on the strut. So that means they've got a bunch of the engine problems as well. And we'll watch as they clean this one up a bit. That's gonna take some TLC. Oh. Yeah, it is so. What a shame, Adam Milton out in front for much of the opening laps of this one. Five complete, 10 to go. Just the nature of the way these cars drive. Going up the track while someone else is coming down the track. Normally they miss each other. In this case, they were not able. Let's take a quick break on GeForce TV. We'll be back with the conclusion of the Bill Johns Comp 4 feature event. Hey guys, Jose here at Queenston Chevrolet Buick GMC in our parts department. Welcome back to our car care series. So here at Queenston Chev, we offer genuine GM parts and accessories with the best parts warranty in the industry. We are fully stocked with brakes, tires, filters, wipers, and everything you will need for your vehicle. Our parts staff has years of experience that is here to help you get the parts you need. So this is the end of our third episode of our car care series. Please feel free to visit our dealership at any time. You can also give us a call at 905-528-7001 or visit us online at queenstonchev.com. Thank you. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Chicken Wings. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. This GeForce TV broadcast is brought to you by RS1, 99.9% .9 pure top grade methanol, the official fuel of the Action Sprint Tour. Bestwaybetting.com, where the dreaming is easy. Back live, Brighton Speedway, final race of the night. The Bills Johns Comp Force finishing up this First caution on lap number five, and it was a doozy. The heavy impact there for Adam Milton as he gets the toe back to the pit area. You see him at the top of the screen getting the toe. Watch this one if you haven't seen it yet. Ouch. One of the worst places you can get hit right behind the driver's door. Oh, we even got one from that corner. Wow. Oh, watching it from corner number four, the wall cam. Thankfully, Adam Milton, like it looked like he might hit that wall head on. He was able yeah. to get the car turned a bit to the left to slap the wall sideways. Uh, you know, and I'm not sure if that's a better way to hit the wall, but. And for those of you watching here in person, don't forget, you can go back to YouTube when you get home or on your cell phone and watch all these replays our live events uh, broadcast on YouTube and as soon as the broadcast is over it's uh, available shortly after that to go back and watch if you want to catch some of the shenanigans you missed throughout the night so right now they're trying to get Josh French in that 08 to line up at the back of the field he went into the pits for service so he's got to go back through the running order now he's getting the idea. They'll come to a stop at the outside of turn number two. The field goes on by. I believe he'll be able to rejoin the tail end of the field. They're just trying to explain some of the procedures there. We double them up and we're gonna go green. Kippen and Bailey make up the front row. Seems like hours ago we watched them battle it out in their heat race, Greg. I think it was. Might have been. Zach Humphrey was solid here tonight in the Lime Green 55, but that car not uh, able to make it back after that impact on the front stretch. I didn't think it was too hard for him, but uh, obviously more than it looked from this vantage point. So a bad break for Zach Humphrey who had a yeah. good run. 
quite often it's how you hit is as important as what you hit. Kiffin and Bailey. Slow snail space to bring us back to the green, and we are on it. Kiffin on the inside, Bailey up on the outside, and Bailey did not get as good a restart. Fletcher jumps up into that second spot. Yeah, Fletcher's a veteran here at this racetrack as well as we got one spun around at corner number one. Taja goes around. I won't do it again, but it was fun. You don't know what I'm talking about. What you said at the start of the night? Yeah. 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 I know what you're talking about. All right. I am your father. You said you wouldn't do it. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> then I thought, I don't like it when people use inside jokes on broadcast, so I thought I have to let people in. <laughs> you know, maybe they weren't watching earlier on or for some reason unable to listen or choosing to turn the volume down, which I would not blame anybody for. Especially after tonight. <laughs> we, our closed captioning may go through the roof for the next broadcast. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Do you ever? Oh, man. Some of it is fantastic. <laughs> the words they think you're saying. I don't think I want to read our closed captioning. I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. <laughs> Kippen and Bailey will try it again. Fletcher and Baldwin back there in row number two. Five laps in, ten laps remain here in this Comp 4 feature event. Still getting the lineup straight here. It looks like... Yep, lineup's good now, so we'll see the white flag come back to it next time around with 10 laps left to go. Final race of Labor Day weekend. Don't forget, final points night next week for some of the divisions here at Brighton Speedway. Saturday, September the 11th, and a week off before Apple Fest weekend. 24th and 25th. Brian's Auction Services. Yes. Apple Fest weekend. That's a nice way to travel, isn't it, Greg, as we look at that RV? Now, is that a motorhome or a toter home? It's kind of a combination from the looks. Either, <laughs> either way, it's whatever it is, it's better than, than my what house. You, I was going to say better than anything you and I have. <laughs> my house has been overrun by squirrels, if you saw my Facebook. Yes. Green flag is out. We're back underway. Kippen with a good start once again. Bailey. Being challenged by Fletcher to the inside, but Bailey with a big run to the outside of one and two. Kippen and yellow flag. Try it again. What's the, what's the story with all the squirrels anyways? So our dog, I've got a golden retriever and, I, and we got a golden retriever because they're so chill. Not ours, he is wired tight. Like, just explosive. And he's ruined the furniture in our living room because he thinks he's a cat. So he jumps up on the back of the couch. In the last number of months, at, at, at night, he goes crazy, barking and yelping and wagging his tail. We're like, Decker, settle down. I'm going to start slipping something into your food at night. <laughs> so this morning... I thought it was cute. He was up on the back of the couch barking at a squirrel that was on the outside wall, sort of taunting him, poking his head around the window. I like, get him, Decker, get him. And I opened the door to go outside, and there's four squirrels on the outside wall of the house <laughs> taunting my poor golden retriever, <laughs> who is going ballistic on the back of the couch. So I go out, and I how exactly did I word this? You can see it in my video on Facebook. Get the hell off my house. <laughs> <laughs> the squirrels wouldn't budge. They were all being tough guys. So I walked a little closer and started hissing at them. A couple of them took off. One of them 
jumped. And it had to be 15 feet through the air where he landed on the driveway and darted <laughs> under one of the vehicles. <laughs> but Connor comes out of the house as I'm filming this, and one of the squirrels had stopped by the front door. So Connor comes out, and he's nose to nose with one of these squirrels. It was like a scene from National Lampoon's <laughs> Christmas Vacation. <laughs> Squirrel! Big tough guy, six foot four, picking on a six inch f- squirrel. Yeah, th- these were mean looking though. Oh, okay. I, that that makes I'll it worse. Then. <laughs> I pre- I like uh, Rob Twitchett's comment. <laughs> they think it's the nut house. I was gonna say exactly. <laughs> I was guarding my nut. They saw you and they're like, "That's the biggest nut we've ever seen." Yeah, something like that. So Decker's a little bit vindicated now. We've got to pay attention when he starts barking. He's <laughs> taunting squirrels. <sighs> All right, back to the green flag. Single file. <laughs> Josh French on the outside. Taking the express lane. He's on it. Josh French up to that fourth spot on the restart. The top three have darted away. Kippen out in front. Bailey giving chase in second, third to Fletcher, and Josh French way up on the outside. One and two they go. Down the back stretch another time. Devin Kippen over Tommy Bailey and Aiden Fletcher. Across the stripes. It is now six complete, nine to go. The top two have pulled away just like we saw earlier on, but now it's Kippen out in front and Bailey giving chase. Bailey sticks his nose to the inside of the race leader. No move there through three and four. Kippen pulls away down the straightaway and then Bailey seems to drive it deeper into the turns. And caution comes out again. We've got one up towards the wall in corner number four. Car number five, I believe it is. One on the back stretch as well. Yeah, one on the inside of the track, one on the outside of the track. So we had just reached the halfway mark of this feature event. Eight laps have been complete. Is that George Martin? No. I believe you're. I believe you are correct. Yeah, 19 in the infield, five up over the Bermans, four. Much like us, the Comp Four division just doesn't want the night to end, Greg. And shouldn't. It? Make a correction. We've been saying Taj has been in the 35, but it's actually Jerry Kimmerly. Well, that's a big difference. Your joke no longer works. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Apologies here. I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. Seven laps left. Kippen Bailey and Fletcher. Josh French, what a restart he had using that HOV lane on the outside of corners three and four. We'll see if he can use that again here to get the top three. I love the number of that, five kids. Safety crew up there on the high side of three, maybe picking up some debris. Beautiful pronunciation on that. Where's Clint? Where do you think he is? At the bar. I've lost. 
That's why I was so sure the five was up on the outside of turn four. Oh, no. no. Uh -oh. Insult to injury. Ouch. I'm on the back stretch. We're going to see a replay of this. Uh, off goes the bumper. Whoop. Oh. They're going to they're going to green. There's a car off the end of the front straightaway missing a front bumper. Green flag is out. Seven laps to go in the top four feature event. Comes Fletcher to the outside of Bailey, and Josh French gets a good run. He'll try and make it three wide for corner number two. Down the back stretch they go. Josh running a lot lower on the racetrack than we saw him earlier on, running the bottom through three and four. He'll point that car to the inside of Fletcher. Couldn't make it work that time off of turn four. He'll set up and try again in one and two. So it's Kippen, Bailey, Fletcher French right now. With Sager back there in the fifth position. And it'll be five laps to go this time by. We got a spin in turn number four. Hung up on that tractor tire is the number 35. Jerry Kimberly, the 35 tonight. Puts us back under the caution flag another time. Five more circuits around, and there's no getting away from that implement tire down there in the infield. Just got a note from the pits. I understand uh, Jesse Costa is headed for some further evaluation. We wish him the best. I mean, it's always wise to err on the yeah. side of caution, for sure. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes you might feel okay and uh, think maybe it's all right, but uh, definitely. I'm going to take extra care there with that previous history for Jesse Costa, so we wish him the best. And it's going to be an extra long night for them now. <laughs> Look at the wheels turning on the 35. <laughs> Not for a lack of effort. Got it. Tow truck on okay. the way down across turn four. Now, turn your wheel the other way. Help is on the way. <laughs> Ryan's standing there looking and... Safety officials down there. See, Ryan's there with the camera. Clint's nowhere to be found. Clint, pay your tab and get out to turn four. <laughs> FYI, Clint hates it when we... Well, I, say, I say we as though you're a participant. <laughs> Clint hates when I do that. Actually, I started... I asked, where, where do you think Clint is? So this was my fault. There's no way they're still making chicken fingers in the pit. Jack. Okay, while you guys sit up there and fart in the booth all night, I'm down here working, all right? Leave me alone. <laughs> down here working? He's standing all alone in the middle of the infield. He just left hey, his cooler hey, hey, hey. behind. When I said I was on the backstretch, I was cleaning up backstretch speed shot, a big battery I carried, the transmitter. I'm working. Yeah, yeah the cooler of Coors Light is on the other <laughs> no, side. No, that's coming up. In five laps. Oh. <laughs> Ryan worked hard. He deserves a cold one. I would agree with that. I mean, our crew has done phenomenal work this season and, and getting better and better as the year goes on. I've been really impressed. Ryan, Jay, Jeremy, Daniel, Spencer, Jack. Who am I forgetting? That, that's why I don't start naming names, because I'll forget them. Well, we've had Victor, Matt. They've all played some good roles with us this year. But I, I'm a big fan of the crew we got. They are hardworking. They're not afraid to jump in, get dirty when we need to. And uh, that's what we need. The people that are afraid to get dirty are up in the tower right now. <laughs> the filthiest of them all. <laughs> Ten laps complete, five laps to go. Kippen leads the way over Bailey, Fletcher, French, and Cody Sager in the 20. Here they go down the front straightaway. <laughs> Look at French again. French hits the gas as though it's a top fuel dragster. <laughs> I don't know, the car looks so fast. 
Trying to get that third spot away from Aiden Fletcher as they work it down. Four laps left to go for Devin Kippen. Nody in front over Tommy Bailey. Kippen with some great bite off off the turns. It's going to be challenging for Bailey to make a move. French trying to close that gap. It'll be four laps to go this time. French, oh, almost oh. contact off of turn four. Yeah, Fletcher let up or he was going to door slam the 08. Keeps us green flag racing. The battle for the lead is a hot one as well as the one for third right now. Looks like French has made that pass and he'll pitch the car down into three and four. Let's see if he can close in on the leaders. As I say that, Fletcher mounts a challenge back to try to retake the third spot. Kippen holds about a two car advantage over Bailey. This time by, it will be the white flag. Final lap of Labor Day Classic weekend here at Brighton Speedway. Kippen, Bailey, and Josh French is now broken free of Aiden Fletcher. Devin Kippen leads down the back straightaway, opens up to about a six car length advantage for the final time through three and four. Devin Kippen gonna take the comp four feature. Tommy Bailey second, Josh French third, Aiden Fletcher fourth. And fifth, I believe, will be the 24 of Travis Fox Connor. That's the final running order for the Bills Johns Comp 4. Great night of racing here at Brighton Speedway. Mother Nature tried to interfere partway through, and all she did was give us a better playground to duke it out in those feature events. Fantastic track surface. Hats off to the Rinaldi family for hosting an amazing event. Clinton Jeffrey is making his way over to Victory Lane where he will be greeted by Devin Kippen in the winning car, number 43. It's a great night of racing action here at Brighton Speedway. I want to thank the Rinaldi family for having us. Thank you to everyone for tuning in here tonight. And another great show here on GeForce TV. Again, don't forget to watch next Friday night as we will be at Humberstone Speedway with the Sprint Cars, Street Stocks, and Sportsman. Well, Devin Kippen in here to Victory Lane, our final victor of the night. Gets out, how about it, Brighton? Make some noise for Devin Kippen. He will get it done. Devin, solid drive there. The track looked really good at the end of the night after these Sprint Cars, making fun times for you guys. Yeah, honestly, I was worried about it being a little slick. It was slick, but it is nice once I start to lay some rubber down, it actually kinds to come back, so, I mean, it got fast, everything felt good, made a couple changes to the car after the qualifier, and I think that they worked. So, overall, very happy with it and very happy with the night. Great job, man. Devin Kippen gets it done. That'll wrap things up from Victory Lane. Hey, Greg, take us home. Thanks, Clint. Great weekend of racing overall. Flamborough Speedway last night, Brighton Speedway here tonight. And uh, like you said, it was a uh, great racetrack that Mother Nature ended up giving us here this evening at Brighton Speedway. S saw some great action. And uh, not a ton of cautions. We had a few problems here in that last feature, but a lot of quick features. Entertaining racing, lots of racing room for these drivers, aggressive action. We got a little bit of everything tonight, Greg, and it was a good time. So that will wrap things up on behalf of all of our crew here, all of our camera operators, our production guys down in the truck, and on behalf of Clinton, Jeffrey, and Adam Ross, my name's Greg Kelman saying so long. Thanks for tuning in tonight on GeForce TV. broadcast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of GeForce TV. GeForce TV would like to thank you for your support and for watching today's broadcast.